will be your first viewer. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Is it on YouTube or Twitch? On YouTube. Okay, I'm okay. done with Twitch. Did gotcha. I just say that on the stream? I did. Because we're already <laughs> live. Why does it say yeah, chat is disabled uh... for this live stream? What the heck? That's not true. Oh, there we go. Chat should be up. And boom, popping it out. Uh, that makes no sense. Why would chat be disabled for this stream? I didn't do that. I didn't Come do on, that. Come on, Rich. The people need to be heard. I didn't disable chat. Yeah, enable live chat. Even says it's enabled. It says it's enabled. Guys, I don't know why it's saying chat disabled for, for this live stream. What is happening? What the? Um, yeah, hold on. Let me hit the button that says restore chat because what? Isn't there like a, wasn't there a thing that said restore chat? Come on. Come on. Come on. Where is the, why is the chat disabled? That's crazy. I have never pl pressed a button that says disable chat. What is going on? I've never Yo. streamed on YouTube, so I'm of no help. <laughs> Time chat is closed. Am I live? I don't see a stream. It says I'm live. Let me reload my live dashboard. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Slayton. For some reason... Did my... Why am I not seeing my stream is up? This is crazy. Hold on. Please hold, everybody. Are restarting it? Oh, it says I'm live. 25 people are watching. <clears throat> Maybe they're chatting, and I'm the one who's all bunked right now. <laughs> oh, there you go. I see it now. You see Let it see now? see if I can chat. Can you chat? Yeah, I can chat. Well, for some reason, my live dashboard does not like this. Maybe that's, maybe that's on the old... Hold on, everybody. Please hold. And if you are sitting here going, Rich, you ding-dong, well, stop calling me a ding-dong. Seriously. <laughs> What's wrong with you guys? View and live dashboard. Here we go. Let me try this one more time. It says we're live. Ah, here we are. There What's happening? Guys, what's up? This is day two of the CWA Cup. I'm Rich Slate, and joining me on voice, some of you have already said it in the chat. That's Chachi. That's right. Woo That's Chachi. Who's Chachi? Well, a man with a perfect smile and an even better <laughs> gameplay, formerly of Complexity Esports, uh, now a man of the world. Uh, Chachi, thank you so much for joining me today. I talked for five hours straight by myself. I got tired of it. My voice broke. The people were good about it, but I'm really happy to have you here today, man. Yeah, I'm glad to be on. I'm excited for some awesome matches. Yeah, it's going to be fire. So for those of you who don't know what the CWA Cup is, which would be weird that you're here right now, but hey, look, I support you. I support you entirely. The CWA Cup is a part invitational, part open tournament where around 50 professional Clash Royale players were invited to compete. Some names you might recognize are on the screen right now on both sides. And on the other side, there were, I believe, 14 open qualifiers held with a 1,000-person in-game tournament. From that, the top eight went to a bracket. From that, the number one from each of those brackets went and qualified for this event. This is all for a $1,000 prize pool. That's right, $1,000. No group stage. Ooh. We are purely in bracket, double elimination bracket. Today, we're going to finish up the round of 64 and move into our round of 32. Oh my gosh, Becky, look at this bracket. It's going to be so much fun. And uh, of course, joining me today for some of it, maybe all of it, who knows, my buddy Chachi, I'll be here. And of course, every time you subscribe, you will help a child learn a part of the alphabet. Which child? My child. What letter is he on? He has just finished the letter N and is now just starting the top of the O. So if you subscribe right now, you might get him from here on the O to about here on the O which would be absolutely amazing guys there's a sub link right in there and uh while we're waiting for these matches to start let's go ahead and ch take a look at the chat see who's hanging out a lot of familiar faces from yesterday guess who's back tofik welcome filet mignon says i am your daddy well i won't admit it because i don't want to pay child support but absolutely man uh killer quad saying first didn't get it sorry buddy matthew's venter yeah i totally remember you dude 100 um let's see who else is in here cactus cactus you know, if you, if you have one cactus, might as well have two. Johnny in the building. Hunter in the building. Leonardo da Vinci saying, hey, I'm not Revel. I had no idea, and thank you for telling me. For a minute there, I thought that I was Revel. Uh, Mateja from uh, TM Posebro. Yay, what's up, dude? Jorgen in the building. Let's see. Darren. 
Chachi just hit a hit a chat in there. Oh yeah, he's chatting with me and with you. What's up, son? Case yeah. of Diaz, Array, Darren, Arthov. I am very well. Vince, Bag versus Igor. Heck yeah. Uh, love from India. Thank you, Carthy. Um, Damar, wonder what she's gonna do when his kid learns the whole alphabet. Start with numbers, bro, or another language. What's up? And let's see. Consent was here yesterday. Well, I'm glad that you asked me first. Chech, or Czech potentially. Ricardo. Uh, Ido and Adarsha, what's happening? Let's get it. Matthew, it's rich. Hell yeah, it is. Ooh, and guess what it is? It's time for our first match of the day. OP Sam, Dark Angel. Chachi, you've run into both these players. What do you think of OP Sam and our buddy Dark? Oh, man. I mean, OP Sam is a giant. He is a tank, and he's going to be running all over the place because he's so tall he can see the entire arena and Dark Angel's elixir storage, I think. <laughs> That's true. He is exceptionally tall, uh, and one of the things that people might know about is he repeatedly requested for a chair during CRL. He hated having to stand during CRL West and uh, and EU, or and NA, because he played in TSM. Uh, yeah, he probably had to get the cord or something. He had a hold it above, and he's probably going to break it. He's so tall. <laughs> So here we go. It's going to be Minor Muscaloon for OP Sam. Alper coming in with two dollars, or sorry, not two dollars, two euros, which I believe are worth more than dollars if I know the exchange rate right now. So thank you very much. The title reads 64. I changed it to 32. Maybe, Francisco, uh, refresh your screen and it might change that. Um, why did I not see some of these players in the last stream of CWA Cup? Jorgen, uh, that's because we didn't finish the round of 64. Notice the, the, thumb, the overlay still says 64. We're going to wrap up the round of 64 today, and then guess what? Move on to the round of 32, continuing as we move through the day. So don't you worry. We're going to see everybody. Everybody, that's right. Minor to the back. Balloon does connect. Ooh. Dark Angel gives up the lead in this moment, and that's a huge one. Chachi looking at this graveyard with the new Spear Goblins coming out of that new yeah. hut up against uh, OP Sam, Minor Muscaloon. How do you feel about this matchup? Well, I, I mean, since the Goblin Hunt just got changed, we got to see it a little bit with that death damage. The three Spear Goblins came out and supported that graveyard a little bit. So it could be a little scary. Um, definitely the fast cycle of the balloon is going to be a little hard for Dark Angel, but he does have quite a few answers with the Archers, Mega Minion, and the Goblin Hut to pull. Um, but yeah. Uh, to answer your question, Vince, I do believe that Morton is the taller one, but both of them are tall enough that if they can't dunk, they should be ashamed. Here we go. Final <laughs> minute of regulation double elixir time. Graveyard down, supported by that ice golem, but bomb tower torn or bomb tower log musky in the back doing a good job of cleaning up a lot of that damage. Still gonna get under a thousand HP here. Courtesy of that tick, tick, tick from the poison, and that's four. Count them, four spear goblins, all murdered by one bomb from a bomb tower. Here we go. Balloon in. Miner should go to the archers. No, Miner to the back instead of to the archers. So I'm going to use that, uh, the law to clear those out a little bit. Does not quite tick onto the, uh, spe the, the goblin hut, but does get death damage. Hey, Rich, who's the other guy from Zane? The other guy is, oh, my God, it's Chachi, formerly of Complexity this is Sports. Yeah. Uh, now one of the most fit men in all the Clash Royale community. Uh, a, a steady worker outer. I don't know if that's the appropriate term for it, but I'm going to go with it right there. And that's all the Spear Goblins Oh my once. goodness, those Spear Goblins. Coming in like crazy off one. Oh my god, another wave coming in from the back. There's but look at that log timing. Them. Oh, does wow. not quite get all of them. Has to get the snowball out as well. So here we go. Under 700 HP. Under 500 HP. Wow, that's going to tick to under 400. OP Sam in trouble. One minute and 42 seconds remaining in sudden death overtime. And now Dark Angel is trying to press the action. Knows he can get just a little bit more damage and put this thing out of reach for OP Sam. The question is, will this get it into poison range? It will, but can Dark Angel stop this in time? There, we there go. you go. There's the oh. tick. Oh, and Dark Angel with the, with the, uh, the hut. The Goblin Hut and the Graveyard takes care of business. And here you go. You know what's coming. Those stats, courtesy of our friends at Stats Royale. If you want to know what your next chest is, go to Stats Royale. They will tell you. Chachi, thoughts on what we just saw? I think uh, not having a uh, big spell really hurt against those huts uh, with the new change on the hut. You want to kind of, instead of spelling it at the beginning like most people would right when they see it, it's kind of a strategy if you have like a poison to poison it after. The Goblin Hut is like about to die, so that way you can hit those final three Spear Goblins because they're coming out like crazy. 
Yeah. Uh, but not having a big spell really hurt. Not having arrows to take care of the archers really hurt him. There was no way to really get that balloon to the tower, except in single elixir when he caught him without any elixir. And that's what you saw. So here we go. One down, and that's going in favor of Ledoc Angel. And the ban is Graveyard from OP Sam saying, I want none of that there, boy. We're about to go ahead and set a tweet out to the world of Twitter. So if you are here, you're watching, uh, there's my Twitter link. I'm about to send out a tweet about this. If you want to go ahead and give a little love to that tweet and help get more people to come here and join, that would be super much appreciated both for me, for Chachi, and, of course, for the stream overall. Yeah, I just sent out a tweet myself as well. So you got two tweets to handle. Live with the CWA right. Cup. Uh, round of 64 and 32. Uh, let's do... So it looks like we're going to see some eagle on from Sam, I would assume. Dark Angel may be running that uh, graveyard deck, the giant miner graveyard. Thank you very much for covering all that while I post this post this link. I gotcha. And it is looking like it is going to be the giant graveyard deck. Bats. It's going to get a King Tower activation there with the NATO onto the Miner. But there's mini P.E.K.K.A. Musketeer and the Bats. All clavering on that tower. And this could be a lot of damage. No elixir for Sam. Uh-oh. And that is going to be an early tower down? No. 135 HP left on that tower. And this is a little at Chachi joining on voice because he is. And look at that. Lucifer coming in with uh, a dono. Let's go ahead and check that out in one second. I'll see exactly how much you gave and uh, how what you what effect you've had on the world. Joining on voice. Boom. All right. So if I was Sam in this situation, I would kind of ignore that giant. Uh, so, I mean, that tower is basically dead. He's got to get a, somehow a tower trade here. Oh, it looks like Dark Angel going to ignore it and go for the three crown. This could be really risky or very worth it. We'll see here in a moment. That yep. mini pack are doing a lot of damage. And Let's Alper, show back. some love. Children should join the alphabet. Another two euros in from Alper, and you're absolutely right, dude. Everyone, every, first of all, not just children, everyone should learn the alphabet, but right now, OP Sam should learn the defense because he is getting housed at the moment. Miner way into the back there. What was that Miner doing? Not really sure. I'm assuming you try to predict something, but I don't know what he would try to predict there, but I may have just been a misclick. Maybe he was picking a hut behind on that side, but interesting question. Filet Mignon, I will not acknowledge that because, again, I don't want to pay child support, but... We do look similar, I have to admit. Here we go, Eagle on left-hand side and directly into the Eagle is gonna be a giant with a musketeer behind bar barrel protected by the skeletons, but now Eagle in the pocket. Interesting question here. Can Dark Angel get enough damage down before these Eagle and start wrecking shop? A nicely timed fireball clears that up and gives a, a little bit of extra elixir, but the mini P.E.K.K.A. Oh, does get back, and here we go. Mini P.E.K.K.A. opposite direction now, minor to the back. I don't know if Sam can stop this mini P.E.K.K.A. It gets one shot in, does not get a second. 11.52, right-hand side, going to be under 1,000 HP. No, 10.40. Giant down now on the left-hand side, and Hut now from Sam, trying to play some defense here. Bats all over. Baby Dragon not being worried about it all by Dark Angel, and NATO just to reset that Giant here for one second. Benjamin Hoffman, hey, what's up, Rich and Chachi? What's up, Benjamin? I can cast and say hi to you at the exact same time. What a professional I am. 729 on the King Tower, 839 on the Princess Tower. Other side, Dark Angel in a lot better position as we move into the final 90 seconds of Sudden Death Overtime. Minor to the outside, opposite side, away from the Giant, getting a ton of chip damage right now, and this is going Ooh, to be giant close. Gets the hit. 91 HP, I don't know. Chachi, is there any way for this to go Sam's direction? If he nados away, no he cannot, and that is gonna do it. Oh my goodness, Dark Angel. Dark Stop Angel. There. Had me like worried for a while when he went in for that three crown push and lost his tower, because then he was in a bad situation with the Eagle on deck, but got it low enough that he had to worry about both towers there. And you see the the EQ in there, and you understand why with the recent buff to, to Goblin Hut, having just seen that come out from Dark Angel, but not used this time around. Uh, so there we go. Benjamin Hoffman saying, it's me, Try by the way. I'm on the wrong YouTube account. Well, now we all know your name is Benjamin Hoffman. So there you go. Congratulations, <laughs> Benjamin Hoffman. How are you? And there we go. That's going to be it. OP Sam falling to Dark Angel, the one-time Team Queso player. 
uh, who was released at the end of this last season. We'll see if Dark Angel ends up somewhere else, but we're moving on to our next matchup, and this one is going to be fire. It's a big-time battle of Serge TS from Brazil and Michifu of Spain. Chachi, first thoughts on this matchup. Who would you go if you were a betting man? And if I was a betting man, I think I would have to go with Michifu. I'm really bad at pronouncing names, by the way, so don't hold me against that. I'm not as good as the commentator as the man, Rich Slayton. But it looks like we're going to be seeing a lot of huts today. This is the third game in a row with a hut. Oh, it's, my goodness. Yeah, these balance changes are going to be interesting. Certainly. I'm curious to see if we see if we get uh, any looks at a new and exciting version of uh, any sort of skeleton barrel deck. That will be... You know, today, yeah. uh, if you were on Twitter, you might have seen Seth, the, the head of Balance Changes, talking about how he thinks that there's going to be some big time shifts. He believes that that people are sleeping on Skeleton Barrel, bro, that Skeleton Barrel buff. Yeah, actually, speaking of Seth, he said that Skelly Barrel had zero percent usage rate. I felt kind of attacked. I that is one of my favorite cards. It is my favorite card. I'm actually a little upset they made the speed go faster. I kind of used it as like a slow roll, kind of like a golem, in a sense. You put it in the back, let it go up. Well, I haven't been able to test it out yet. I'm looking forward to it. I've been trying out the heal spear instead, but um, I'm still really, really excited to see how Skelly Barrel works out, especially with wall breakers like Seth was saying. It's going to add a new element of bait, hopefully, to the game. And Chet saying, love your casting. Bring Andrew to next time. We'll try to get Andrew in one of these days. And uh, Andrew and I, of course, will be casting together again once we hit into May in the return of Clash Royale League West. So. We won't have to, 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 to wait that long. Mini P.E.K.K.A. does not connect. Surge TS, though, in the lead. 16.40 as we reach the midway point of regulation time. Hammer asking, do you think Golem Goblin Hut Flying Machine could make a comeback? What do you think, Chach? Aw, uh, man. If I was a betting man, I would say it could appear, but I'd be more worried about the, uh, the old P.E.K.K.A. Flying Machine Goblin Hut deck. That deck back in the day, the first 21 CRL challenge, or the second one. Uh, that was the most popular deck at the time, and since Goblin Hut kind of got nerfed um, because of the... Uh, I forget exactly what the nerf was, but I feel like it's going to make a comeback. So there you have it. Away. And so, Hog yeah. EQ gets a lot of damage here on the left-hand side to answer the questions. Yes, you can ban once you've lost a game. So there are no bans to open up, and then you ban on lose. So uh, whoever loses this game will get to add a ban, and if we go to game three, there will be bans from each player's. Betting waterproof bread on Surge TS. Book it, Rich Tofik. All right, well, uh, if you can find some waterproof bread for it for me, I will hold it as collateral. 218 left-hand side, not quite EQ range, but EQ log. We'll be ready to finish, so you see Surge TS going ahead and just getting the cycle on that left-hand side. Does have to be careful. He's down on Elixir now, and they have to defend against this graveyard push, so he can't necessarily go log right now. Bats are down. Poison will take those off. And there we go. This could be a tower down. Log does come out defensively. Very close. Not quite and that's going to be it. it. Surge TS getting job done in game number one. Hog yes, EQ, sir. and this deck has been popular since January, and it looks like it's making a comeback. Uh, what do you think about that Hog EQ deck? It's, it's been up and down for a little while there, Josh. Yeah, it's, uh, it really depends on how like useful you think the Firecracker is. Some players love the Firecracker. Some players hate the Firecracker. You run the risk of activating the King Tower really early on, but if you're able to, you know, if your opponent doesn't have a great spell for it, like arrows to be able to kill it right away, or if they miss with a fireball, then it can become one of the most annoying cards in the game. And you saw it there. He had to over defend with archers and an ice golem at the bridge to stop it, as well as skeletons in the middle to prevent that last shot from the firecracker. Coach Try saying, hey, what's up, Chachi? My brother went on my account. And shame, 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 hey. shame. Well, there you go. And Michifu bringing a ban of the Skelly Barrow. So very interesting that that's going to be the ban, despite the fact that uh, it was not played. But maybe he knows something about what Surge TS is doing that we don't. And, guys, I will do my best to answer the chat as much as possible. Um, but if I miss something, please don't be upset. I'm just producing this slash also hosting this. So a lot of different moving parts at once. Uh, but if I don't get to your thing, I'll try to get to it when I can. And uh, overall, just hang out, have a good time. You know, crack yourself open a, a nice iced tea and uh, sit back and watch some Clash Royale as myself and uh, the number one orange fitness instructor in the Clash Royale community uh, <laughs> leads you through some, some great CRL, or not CRL, some cl great Clash Royale esports action. Oh, yeah. This is not a name steal, Stoney. Uh, CWA is the sponsor. He provided the prize pool for this. So the $1,000 prize comes straight from 
our friend Clash with Ash, who will probably make an appearance in the chat at some point over the four-ish hours that we will be here today. Uh, do I think Giant Skeleton Clone with Cannon Cart and Skelly Barrel, or do we think Giant Skeleton Clone with uh, Skelly Barrel in general will come back? What do you think about that one, Josh? Uh, you know, some people always specialize in those weird kind of decks. I've actually been seeing a lot of uh, Cannon Cart with Clone uh, with that Heal Spirit now, because you can get if you can get a Clone on the Heal Spirit plus Cannon Cart at all at the bridge with the Mini Horde, it is very scary, because those Heal Spirits actually heal quite a bit. I've actually been really surprised how much it heals after playing it for one Elixir. And check it out. You asked, and it has been delivered. Clash with Ash in the chat here watching some great Clash Royale action. And uh, my, my, my Nama Jeff saying, how, do we feel, how does he feel about us stealing his name? Well, can't do much about it now, can he? Uh, <laughs> here we go. What the bug was the entry free? The entry is always – there was no entry fee. What the bug? There is never an entry fee on Clash Royale tournaments. If someone charges you an entry fee, they are actually violating the Clash Royale terms of service. So, no, there was no entry fee for this. Uh, most of the players were invited pros. The others qualified through a free series of open qualifiers. So, never pay an entry fee for a Clash Royale event. Don't do it, guys. Just don't do it. Um, and Filet Mignon saying Morton is my daddy. Well, you can't have, we can't both be your daddies unless there's some genetic splicing occurring. Here we go, Surge to yes. Fall, fallen far behind here in game number two in this battle of graveyards is essential almost mirror match, of course, the Musketeer versus the Archers. Uh, would you rather be the Archers player in this matchup, Chachi? I think I would definitely rather be the Archers in this matchup. It's way better against the graveyard on defense. Forces them to poison, that means they can never poison your hut. Hamza, yes, I'm aware the title says round of 32. We are finishing up the last few matches of the round of 64 and then moving on to the round of 32. So uh, I didn't want to make the title really clunky and have both in there. But yes, this is going to be the round of 64, the last few matches, and then we continue on. The majority of today's stream will be round of 32. I guess I could like make it say round of 64 for now. Um, uh, and then, then move on to... Uh, round of 64 continued to round of 32. That's going to be a clunky title, but you know what? Go ahead. And here we go. Left-hand side, three, <laughs> under 200 HP. And, yeah, and that's going to be it. Poison log, and that's going to do it. Well, some miracle of a graveyard comes out. There's no way. All right. And like there that, you one, go. One. There you have it. Now we're going to go to a game number three, and here you go. And I am loving this new system by Stats Royale because these stats fly in so quickly, no delay whatsoever. Huzzah, huzzah. And you can see that, uh, I mean, I. what do you think? Was Were the archers the big difference here? I think they were because he could not poison on offense because and archers are just such a good graveyard counter because if he poisons on offense, he can't poison the graveyard on defense. And the musketeer is just like, Pretty clunky, and you can take it out with the log cycle as well as if he wants to throw on a poison on offense, which they didn't in that game, but they could. It gives more poison value than archers. It's a four for four instead of a three for four. Fair enough. Here we go. Game number three. And uh, let's see. Rich, just want to say you're a great caster for Clash, and I'm really glad you're still around. Thank you, Darren. I'm glad I'm still around, too. I was worried that uh, maybe I would disappear into the mist, but no, I haven't, and that's because magic doesn't exist. Did meet you guys. Baby Slayton didn't take you away from us. No, yeah, baby boy Slayton. He and I were going for a walk today. It was very nice. He's not, he's not he's a to he's toddler Slayton now. He's almost two years old. He'll be two in August. Dang. It's bananas. Here we go. Lava Hound for Surge TS. Michifu could be going. I whenever I see Musky Miner and Musk, I assume it's Balloon, but it could also be Wall Breakers. Yep. Don't really know until the last couple cards, and looks like Lava Loon from Surge. Bombs Lava down. Loon's been making a comeback these last few weeks. You really didn't see it for a long time, and then some, some, sometime mid-March started seeing a whole lot more Lava Loon. Do you have any thoughts on why? I, I'm just as clueless as you are right now. I, I mean, personally, I'd rather play Balloon Cycle or just Lava Hound Miner, but I would assume it has something to do with the Miner nerf if I had to take a shot, but... Still, not a, there's not a lot of eye tower around, so I, that was one of Lava Loon's worst matchups is with anything with eye tower, so. And uh, just to give an update to everybody here, it is Chachi of CRL Ooh. North America Season 1 joining me on voice. And uh, we're talking about all of 
the action today. He'll be here for, for a significant portion of it. And yes, it is Balloon with Bomb Tower. Balloon, will it get a connection? Not quite, but death damage will Ooh. sneak in. 1457 right hand side. And with that, Michifu will extend the lead here. As we go on to the final minute, Mike Woolsey with a solid 399 Canadian. That's almost four full loonies. Thank you very much there, Mike Woolsey, for throwing that in. And look at that. Lava in the back and immediately Michifu throwing seven elixir opposite direction. And that's going to be a whole lot of damage. Might even be towered down here. So happy She's to make that trade that with the advantage on the right-hand side. It looks like we got a Lava Hound push coming in on that right-hand side with the Balloon Fireball. Zap going to take care of that Musketeer. And if I had to be a guessing man, that right-hand tower is good as dead with the Baby Dragon and the Lava Hound both on it. And it's definitely going to be a two-tower game or a three-crown base race. We'll have to see here in a moment. Balloon going to go right in the pocket, going to get popped by that Tombstone. And that Balloon is getting dangerously close to the tower, and it's going to get the hit. And that's already tower number two down with the death damage and... Surge has to do something real crazy here if he wants to come back. He does have Lava Hound, Mega Minion, Baby Dragon, and Balloon all on coming on the field here. Good Bomb Tower pull back and a stall out that Balloon. Try to get it as long as he can to survive here for these last couple seconds. Oh, Eight seconds oh, oh. Look this at that snowball. That was crazy. Stalled out the Balloon even longer, and that's going to be GG's. And that, peace out, Girl yeah, Scout. Peace out, Girl Scout, indeed. That was a beautiful sequence there at the end, the bomb tower opposite side of the board, and then going with the with the snowball just to give himself a bit more breathing room for that second bomb tower. So there you have it, two different balloon decks, uh, one fast, one slow, and in this case, speed beats strength. Michifu taking out Surge TS and moving on to our next round. And uh, let's see, let me go to the chat here for a minute. GG's indeed there, my friend Ash. Hi, everybody. How are you? How's my hair? I'm very, I need a haircut so bad. The number one thing I'm going to do as soon as I can go out into the world and as soon as Supercuts is open again, because, yeah, I go to Supercuts. I'm not spending 55 bucks on a haircut, uh, is get my haircut because it's so long and it's so uncomfortable. It's so hot. Need this really well. DG Thunderer says, Rich, how's your son doing on the alphabet? Um, well, if you subscribe right now, you can help my son. He, he's about to hear on this here. This is the letter O, right? He's about here. If you subscribe right now, you get him to here. That's important. So if you can get him from here to here with a subscribe, that would be super duper awesome. Otherwise, I don't know. Maybe he'll be illiterate for his entire life. Uh, Tofik says, Rich, thoughts on Russian pro Krangus McBasketball. Um, I prefer Trangus McHockey myself, but, you know, to each his own. Here we go. On to our next game. It's Lince facing off against Mini Minter. And Mini Minter is certainly a very talented player. Lince does have more experience on the CRL level, obviously. But Mini Minter, uh, without question, a high-level player as well. Matt Rutledge in the building, the mobile Matt organizer mobile of Matt. Clash Contender Series. Uh, former manager slash teammate, I guess, however you want to put it, of my friend Chachi from Complexity. Uh, and uh, a good buddy of mine, Matt, welcome very much to the chat. Good to see you. And everybody, if you're looking for more opportunities in the semi-pro uh, re arena, Matt is one of those guys who creates those opportunities. So uh, there's ways to do things like this by open qualifiers. Matt creates some great opportunities as well. So thank you very much to Matt for all that he does. And there's that kind of poison timing I was talking about, hitting that Goblin Hut as it's going to expire. So that way you kill the three Spear Goblins that come out instead of right away like people are used to. That's going to be a change people are going to get, have to get used to over time here. Mark Littlewood with a huge three or five pound donation uh, coming through. Thank you very much, Mark, with a big question here. Chachi, let's take some time on this one. I mentioned that Lava Loon is back. Any other cards or combos you've been surprised to see or not see in the CWA Cup? I've been surprised that we have seen three Musketeers. We saw that yesterday. 3M making a slight comeback right now, and I would, did not expect to see it, though, here on the competitive level. We saw it yesterday. Chachi, what do you think? I mean, you haven't watched much CWA Cup, but uh, overall, are there any combinations that have been making a comeback that you've been surprised by? I've been seeing a lot of Goblin Hut today. I haven't seen a game without a Hut, so I guess Hut spam is back. I'm surprised. We haven't seen a Sim City deck yet. Maybe we'll get to see it in a little bit. I know in uh, CRL East, we had a triple uh, draft challenge, it seemed like, from uh, one of the players in there. I had a good chuckle about that about their deck choice. He had Expo Rocket and like a whole bunch of other stuff. Well, you it was know, really crazy. Well, you know in CRL East, Triple Draft for this season has replaced 2v2. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy. It's been like, ugh. <laughs> it's kind of mind-blowing to me. <laughs> uh, who's talking with Rich? I guess that, that is Chachi again. And... Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. 
Something goes under us in this stage. CWA Cup is one of the day. Uh, th oh, today is the start of a new meta. Absolutely. So we'll be very, very curious to see how that one goes. Flame and Yan just throwing, throwing love at everybody. Do we think Magic Archer are made popular despite the nerf? Chachi, I have my opinion on this one. What do you think about Magic Archer uh, in the in the nerfed universe? Um, I still think he'll find a spot in the meta. Um, he just needs a little bit of time to adjust. Everybody needs to figure out, hey, uh, is he still good? Right now, you're probably not going to see a lot of him in today's cup just because people haven't had the time to really play test him. But I played him a little bit yesterday, and it, it's, it's like a... It's a unique change, but if you're going to throw him at the bridge, it's not going to change a whole lot. Uh, he's going to be able to activate King Tower a little bit, but I still see him being viable after a couple uh, weeks or so. Yeah, I think people, people misunderstood it. what the change was. They thought it was an actual range nerf, where it's just a targeting range nerf. Yeah, so he's still he'll still shoot the full, I believe, nine tiles um, with his arrow, but his like actual sight range is a little shorter at six instead of seven. Let's see, genuine question from Tofik. Favorite golem player? Royal's my favorite golem player. That's an easy answer. I, I agree with that. I like Royal a lot. Uh, I'm going to miss him this season. But uh, I got to hang out with him both in in, in Tokyo and in Xi'an, China. And I am generally a big fan of Royal, both as a guy and as a golden player. Here we go. Graveyard Poison right-hand side. Mini Minter putting the heat on Lince in this battle of GYs. It almost feels like it's going to start being like a GY counter today because uh, yeah. counter meta because it seems like we have seen an insane amount of graveyard already. Yeah, it's either going to be balloon cycle or graveyard. It feels like after somebody bans graveyard or goblin hut or something, it's just going to be balloons. So <laughs> we'll have to see what goes down today. Here we go. Final 45 seconds of regulation and both guys going hard with the graveyard poisons. Can Lince hold off it. enough? It's not going to happen. Mini Minter gets game number one. GG. Well played, and that is Mini Minter getting a big time first win of this event. Remember, we still are in the round of 64 for the moment. Round of 32 will come later today. Are Heal Spirit and Delivery allowed, Mark Littlewood? Absolutely, they are. Um, he's a firecracker, but worse and costs more. We'll see. People are a little bit confused. I, I don't, th I, I agree with Chachi. I don't think that the nerf, I think the West overreacts to nerfs, but. You know, we'll be let to, we'll, we'll see as time goes on. Magic Archer forgot his contact lenses this season. Yi Chen with an early candidate for comment of the day. We'll see. Yesterday it was Mayo, um, which was wonderful in its timing. Uh, do I prefer 2v2 or triple draft for pro gameplay? I like triple draft the most, but Tofik says uh, that Alper, this is Chachi with me, and Chachi's going to answer that question first. Uh, Chachi, how do you feel? about uh about 2v2 versus triple draft from a competitive standpoint uh i would just as my personal opinion i guess i'm a little biased because that's why i specialized in crl um but i personally like 2v2 more than triple draft just because there's a little more skill behind it uh there's no randomness hey i i didn't get any win conditions or anything like that i know triple draft is a little safer being able to give everybody what they want but um i, I do think triple draft is really unique um, it'd be kind of cool for like a kind of like a home team or an away team, kind of like a coin flip. You do a triple draft in some way, incorporate that. But I don't know how they would do that right now. But I would stick with 2v2 if, it, if I was in charge. Yeah, I mean, th currently there's go they're doing triple draft given the special season. Not every player in the same house. But, you know, we'll, mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see. I, I've, I've made my, my piece that I think the triple draft, if it's going to be in competitive, we have to be able to spectate the uh the draft portion of it in order to give it context but agreed i also prefer 2v2 it's interesting a lot of people who don't play 2v2 competitively and have only played it as a casual mode but they have played triple draft challenges and things like that they believe triple draft is more skilled but if you talk to most pros who have played 2v2 at a high level not randomly on the 2v2 uh, in game, but have played competitive 2v2, practiced, and played against other professional players, it seems like a significant proportion, if not most, say it is the most high skill version of Clash Royale. Yeah, I would, I would definitely agree with that. There's a lot of communication aspects that go into it. It's not just, hey, let's just make a huge push and clone it at the bridge like you do in 2v2 casual. I play with a couple friends um, when we're sitting in like a pool or a hot tub and we're just playing. We'll just make quick cycle firecracker decks and clone them and we'll have like a hundred firecrackers on the field and it's just like madness. Obviously that's not a lot of skill, but when you're getting down to it, every interaction, 2v2, you gotta decide who's gonna play what, who's gonna save the elixir, who's gonna keep it, and all that other cool stuff. 
Here we go. Minor Musk Loon for Mini Minter. Lince looking like it's going to be Graveyard most likely. And mm -hmm. nice King Tower activation from Lince. That should help out against those minor placements, at least here in the early going. First minute away, and Mini Minter does have the advantage on damage, but that should change the, the math here at least a, a decent little bit. I really hit the T's on that little pretty hard. <laughs> um, Spectrum saying, do I think Baby Dragon or Firecracker is better for a P.E.K.K.A. Control deck? Uh, I honestly don't play P minor P.E.K.K.A. Control, uh, so I wouldn't be able to really answer that question in, in depth. Chachi, do you have experience? With, uh, um, with I would Right now, I prefer Baby Dragon just because how strong it is. It's so versatile, and there's really no great counter to it. It's a splash range tank. Um, so it can do a lot of stuff if your opponent throws in a minion horde or anything. It's obviously going to shred that. Bats are really popular right now as well from all these graveyard decks, the giant miner. So it's just it's a very, very versatile card, and I would prefer it right now. Plus, you don't have to worry about King Tower activations as much. Here we go. Right hand lane. Balloon coming in. Ice Wiz to stop. On the one hand, Man, easy, guess... easy way to stop oh. that damage. On the other hand, that's six for five. Yeah, I was going to say, they banned Goblin Head again, and now we're seeing more Balloon Cycles. <laughs> it's just crazy how much of Balloon Cycle Graveyard we're going to see today. And here we go. GY opposite lane. Baby Dragon and Knight going to easily take that tower. But Balloon Ooh. does not connect on the right-hand side. That Mini Minter maybe a slight uh, 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 miscalculation in what was going on mathematically here. And this Balloon's not going to get anywhere near that tower attempting to get in there with the Miner, but Miner does not go to the Ice Wiz, so that's going to be GG, well played, Mini Minter getting the knees cut out from him here in the final seconds. And that's Yeah, that was a really, up. really tough matchup for Mini Minter, having NATO, Ice Wiz, Bomb Tower, and there's just no way that that Balloon Miner is ever really going to get any significant damage unless he had a really bad cycle and he just went Balloon at the bridge first play. Yeah, need to create some more positive trades there. Unfortunately, not able to get them all done for Mini Minter. So here we go, heading into a game number three. Getting those stats queued up for you. I guess the the server is out of sync with me for one second. Kabingo Bango, there we go. And game number three coming. I'll get you your bans in just a moment. Oh, looks like Tornado for, is the ban by Mini Minter. Uh, let me go and take a look at the chat here for just a moment while I wait for game number three to start. Chata, um, Chahat, you have not mixed very much. Welcome, and thanks for joining us. Do we think Surf, um, Seth will ever nerf Baby Dragon? I believe he said um, it was on it was on the viewing block this time around, or did he did he say it was? I know he said uh, Mini Pekka and something. I thought it might have been Baby Dragon, but Mini we'll Pekka Bomb Tower. A Mini Pekka Bomb Tower. Uh, Rich and Chachi, do you think Golem will actually be viable in this meta? It was trash last meta. I think GY will be huge in this meta. Um, I guess it depends on where you're talking about. In competitive, Golem is really not much. But on ladder, mm -hmm. uh, if you if you have not lost a frustrating matchup to Golem on ladder, then I don't think you're playing ladder. That's my feeling. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think Golem will be okay. I don't think it's going to be meta by any means. I think you'll see like here and there, probably like 15 to 20% usage rate. Nothing crazy. Maybe even less than that. But I think... This meta is definitely going to be graveyard, quick cycle balloon decks, and then peck of control. Um, maybe not as much as Magic Archer, but once people get settled in the meta, then you'll probably see that peck of Magic Archer E was deck start to come back. Here we go, bomb tower to counter the miner. We are all tied up, one in one. Bands, Goblin Hut, and Tornado, and Lince may be going in the balloon direction. We'll see what happens. Oh yeah, Josh White saying, uh, making a good point, is that um, Baby, Baby Dragon was recently nerfed a little bit. Maybe not nerfed to the level that you guys wanted to, but did take a little bit of a nerf fairly recently. So, What was that nerf again? I forget. I believe it was a small HP nerf, but I could be wrong. Okay. It might have been like a 4% or like something really low, really low at that point. Gotcha. Lots coming down the lane towards Lince. Not a lot of Elixir to deal with it, but does so competently. He's going to avoid almost all of this damage. We'll take one swipe from the Mega Minion and a couple shots from that Barbarian. But overall, could have been a lot worse. Damage. Let's see. Any uh, interesting notes from the chat here? T-Clap saying 2v2 tech selections can be very repetitive. 
Uh, I think it was worse before we had bands back in 2v2, but uh, it's, been, it's been better since we had bands back in the, in the fall season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely think bands are a good thing for 2v2, because if not, everybody's just going to play NATO and every deck with Giant Skelly, and it's just madness who can get the best bomb value and stuff. Here we and go. Spell cycle. Balloon right hand side, Miner in front, Mega Minion and e is both meet the Balloon high, so Balloon shouldn't do too much here. Might get in death damage range, and it does, so that's a bit unfortunate to spend that much and still give up death damage, but there you have it. Knight going opposite direction, Musketeer protected by that Ice Golem long enough. Here comes Graveyard opposite lane. Baby Dragon does get into tank, Bomb Tower doing some job to clean up, but needs the Bar Barrel and Snowball as well, so a lot spent by Lince on the left hand side. and. Not much done defensively, 242, so not within poison range quite yet, but getting fairly close as the left-hand tower, and Mini Mint are now content just to not allow that Musketeer to create any sort of real pressure on the right-hand side. Yeah, and poisoning that Musketeer basically denied that area of deployment for that balloon, making him go and reset with another balloon in the back, but I really see no way is going to be able to get that connection right now with the Ewiz Bomb Tower and the rest of those troops coming in. Only a couple seconds left. I should do it right here, unless he's got rage. <laughs> but we all know he does. Here we go, big time win for, Minty, for Mini Minter, taking game number three and moving on on the upper part of the bracket. GG, well played, and here you go, take a look at the stats. Courtesy of Stats Royale. Uh, I'll come back to the chat here in just a minute. Uh, one question was, is it fair to have some of the round of 64 before and some of it after the balance changes. Well, everyone playing after is playing with those balance changes, so they're all on an equal footing. Um, and because of scheduling issues, this had to be done the way it, with the schedule it was it was given. So, you know, not much you can do about it, but still, all players are playing under the same conditions within their actual matches. So, is what it is. Let's move along. Um, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna pop back out here. Do I look a little less tired than yesterday, guys? What do you think? Do I? I feel less tired. I'm still tired, but less tired than yesterday. Um, but how do I look? Do I look less tired? I don't know. I'm not sure. I want to give you guys the view. Where is it? Right over here. The view right over here of your results thus far today. Uh, we've been going through this fairly quickly. Dark Angel taking down OP Sam. A 2-1 for Michifu over Surge TS. And as you just saw, Mini Mentor beating Lince. And coming up next, Azilis and Framcito. So I'm excited about this one. Azilis, uh, I think has had, I think Azilis had one of the, uh, best turnarounds we've seen what he when he went from 2018 to 2019 uh, really back in high level form and then Framcito is one of those players I believe he qualified for the event rather than an invitational player um, but obviously with his performance at WCG and overall in semi pro and amateur competitions has been impressive so this is a big spot for him in the round of 64 against Fram C against uh, Azilis. Uh, what any your thoughts, Chachi? You got a chance to see Azilia's a lot in season one. Obviously, in a different you're you in NA, he was in EU, and uh, yeah, it seems like a totally different player in 2018 versus 2019. Yeah, I feel like he honestly is like one of those uh, players. He's either really really hot or he's really really cold. Like I remember back in the Kings Cup two days, um, I met him there at Kings Cup two, and he was destroying it. And then he comes to CRL, and he was on fire. And then he wasn't, and then now he's back on fire. And he's just all over the place, but he's just always really good. Um, I feel like he's one of those players that uh, has to have a really good meta. Like he, like I specialize in Pekka Bridge spam, so if Pekka Bridge spam's meta, I'm going to do really well. I feel like he's one of those players. Uh, so he has his kind of niche decks, and if they're on fire or like meta, then he's going to be really, really good in that. All right, here we go. Jumping into our first game, Azili's top bottom of your screen for Amcito at the top. Uh, Matthew, it's going to be a probably. Um, I have to actually cut it off at four hours. I can't go five hours today, so uh, we are still in the first hour. But I'm not going to be able to go the full five hours to or go if it goes pa past four hours. So hopefully it goes quickly this time around. Uh, but you know, Mrs. Slayton and I are taking care of uh, now toddler boy Slayton and she needs to be relieved at the four hour mark. So not five hours today, but you will be here for a while. Uh, let's see, there's a loser's bracket unless there's, yeah, there is a loser's bracket. We are not there yet. Oh, you know what? I should link, is that the bracket right there? No, that's just, that's my streaming link. Ooh, Let me go and get the bracket. Liking the stack, Azilis. Rocking the Skelly Barrel wall breaker. Seth would be so happy right now. Yeah, there's our first Skelly Barrel of the day. So pretty pumped to see that one getting mixed in. We'll see how it fares. Throughout see this matchup. Activation? No. 
Okay. I'm going to go ahead and throw the bracket. The bracket is in the show notes, guys, but I'll go ahead and throw it in the chat right now just so that you guys get it this way as well. Um, if I missed some questions, sorry, the chat uh, has been moving on a little bit. But uh, let's see. Ruzian, hi, shot my name. Oh, there we go. Dr. Teddy just subscribed. And because Dr. Teddy subscribed, uh, baby boy Slayton, toddler boy Slayton, excuse me, I should give him his proper age. That's, he's still a baby boy to me. Right. He's now learned half an O, and Demon Chocolate just finished off the O. My son can now read the letter O. Thank you so much, guys. That's next level one has completely changed the universe because the letter O is one of the most important letters in the game. Arthur Genie coming in hot, now starting on the curve of the P. So O P. Those two letters go next to each other in so many ways, both alphabetically and of course in gaming. Look at that. Wall breakers. Oh, skelly barrel flying in. Wall breakers and skelly barrel EQ there to try to clean it up, but right now Azili's putting the heat down. Lascar Viorelli, was that what it was? Thank you very much for the sub, man. That's a nice little string of subs. Uh, you know, I'm gonna give a full OP. Baby Boy Slayton now can say O, not just read OP, but say OP. How about that? Wild. All right. And Shafiq coming in with a hot sub as well, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, this is, if, if because of that, if you see right now, E Golem is gonna lose this game because of that sub. And I know everyone wants to see E Golem lose a game. I can't pronounce. I don't read Chinese, but thank you for that sub. Um, I'm gonna guess that that means that that in Chinese means super awesome guy who supports Rich Slayton's stream. It's only two characters, that's but that's accurate. how Chinese works. There you go, right Did hand you notice, side. I think they uh, they changed the Skelly Barrel the drop animation. So it used to be a little delayed, like it would sit in the air for a second while it popped, and now it just instantly pops. I don't know if you saw that or not. But. I was I was so busy dealing with uh, all things at once, I didn't see it, but I believe you. That's what I'll say. Is I don't know. I don't think that all you're right. lying. Here we go, stats courtesy of our friends at Stats Royale. Game number one goes to Azili's. So having now seen uh, Skelly Barrel in competitive, what do you think? I think it is it is so much faster than I thought it was gonna be. Like, <laughs> it reminds me of like a lumberjack or something going at the ridge. Like, it seems like super ultra fast. That's how fast it's flying to the tower. Um, I don't really see the HP nerf on it. When it was going to the tower, it has more HP getting to the tower than it did before. So. I'm, I'm really excited for it. I'm going to be playing it right after this. <laughs> uh, Tafik saying, thank you, Rich and Chachi, for these late-night streams. Honestly, keeping me sane during quarantine. Thanks to Ash for sponsoring. Hope you continue the stream in your free time. Yeah, man, we'll be... We, I, there's, a, there's a lot of fun stuff coming soon, so don't you worry. I'm very excited about the things that we're bringing as time goes along. Josh White saying that Skelly Barrel is so underrated. Thinks it needs a slight buff to death damage, so uh, getting on the same board as you. Harik saying, hi, Rich from India. Seth said Fisherman's getting a buff. Yeah, all these things might be happening. We'll see, but right now what is happening is Azili's is up one game to zero against Framcito, and uh, interesting that Skelly Barrel's been on the Azili's side because he won, but, you know, is what it is. I'm sure they'll get that corrected here in just a moment. Uh, Goblin Giant Sparky, and I'm going to say this, at least it's not the Rage version. <laughs> that is true. That rage version is very, very toxic. <laughs> and we saw that during qualifiers like crazy. Zap comes in, and Miner has to come in as Force well to stop that from getting on tower, but well played by Azili's. The number one piece of advice I can give players who are new to playing minor based decks is get used to playing, get okay with playing Miner on defense when that's your defensive option. A lot of people mm -hmm. are just unwilling to do it. They want to save it for, for offense only. But you can see top-level players, uh, they're they're willing to play minor on defense when necessary. So we got another balloon cycle deck from the Zillies. Thank you, Justin. Of the day, but we, we're not seeing any uh, Goblin Hunt Graveyard from this match, these two players. So that's something fresh. <laughs> Thank you, Justin, for your subscription. Uh, you might not know this, but because you subscribed, uh -oh. a fish just learned how to breathe above water and will soon what? be walking on land. So thank you very much. Are that you subscription kidding me, Rich? has helped evolution occur. Wow. I know, right? That I just, we need more fish. Come on, guys. Don't you want to see land fish sub up right now? There you go. Oh, man, that balloon. Loon going to connect and going to get two shots plus death damage. That's going to be a whole lot of trouble on the left-hand side. 
Azili's does. That Dark Prince. Ooh, the Dark Prince does Ooh. not connect. 30 seconds left. It's going to be tower down, but tower's going to go down on both sides, most likely. Corona with the LMA. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Would you eat a fish with feet? Uh, absolutely. I'd do it right now. Bring me a fish with feet. I'll eat it in front of you. <laughs> 22 seconds left, left-hand side, so that's going to be, or 22 damage, so that's going to be down easy. Here we go. It's going to be a single lane battle. In this single lane, same side battle, Chachi, who do you give the advantage to? Goblin Giant Sparky or Minor Loon Cycle? I would have to give it to the Goblin Giant Loon Sparky, just because he can kind of deny by just throwing a Sparky in the back. Uh, you want to put it behind the King Tower, though, not in the other corner, so if he goes with an Ice Golem Balloon Pocket push, um, then you're not, you know, caught with your pants down or anything like that yeah right in there kind of maybe even a little farther back than that uh the sparky you just played but definitely the goblin giant sparky would be the player i want to be right now two muskies this balloon's gonna connect and yes, it sir. does two and there we go musky gets a couple the shots in here. here framcito giving a little bit of bm and eating a ton of damage for it maybe a little bit early there Good Goblin Giant right there. Beautiful. Ooh. High Bomb Tower with the EQ. Nice use of the Miner by Azili's, the Frenchman. Putting on a clinic right now. Even on Elixirs, that means most likely you'll see the Ice Golem Balloon push. Here we go. And Snowball on it. the Muskie. No, he doesn't. Beautiful. Oh. This is good. Jeez, Azili. 2-0. France OP, and there you go. Stats courtesy of Stats Royale. If you want to know your next chess, go to Stats Royale. They'll tell you. And uh, that snowball, a lot of people would go snowball to the bats in that situation. You see the snowball to the musky, making sure you don't get that extra DPS, and a huge connection there. And Framcito maybe a little bit early there with the emotes. And you take a look at the, uh, at the stats here. A lot of minor work from Azili's, and a lot of that was defensive. Worked out I wasn't afraid well. to use that Miner on defense. Miner got a nerf to tower HP, or tower damage only, not on uh, his regular damage, so it's pretty interesting. He's a very versatile card, one of the most versatile cards in the game, for sure. Uh, and let's see, let's go ahead and, I'm going to throw some scores up here. Coming up next, I believe, is going to be Luke Dubs and Tommy. So waiting to see if that is what we what we go with. Uh, be there in just a moment. Hi, guys. How are you? I'm Rich Slate, and if you haven't, go ahead and sub to my channel right now. Also, uh, jump on the Twitter and retweet the tweet about this so more people come and join, because the more hanging out, the better it is for all of us, man. Um, let's see. Let's go to the chat here for a second. Harik wants me to answer a question about how about ladder. I have nothing to do with how ladder works, and um, yeah, I mean, the issue is uh, a level 13 versus a level 11, um, and you're at 5,800. Well, if a level 13's at 5,800, they have to face other players who are at 5,800. So that's just, I mean, I don't know how you stop that from happening. Um, if you have a great idea of how to stop a level 13 from dropping down to 5,800, then there you go. But, you know, ladder rating is based on your wins and losses. And if you're a bad max player, a bad level 13, and you drop way down, or you're a really great level 1, and you push way up, you're going to have mismatches of levels. That's just kind of how it works. It just means you're a really good player yeah. if you're versing people that are way higher than you. Yeah, you're a level 11 at 5,800. How about you be proud of that rather than angry about people who are level 13s who are down at 5,800? How about that? Just be happy for yourself about how good you are. That's my advice, Arik. And I'm sticking to it. Uh, let's go ahead and see. Here we go. Oh, so it's not going to be... We're going to come back to Tommy Luke Dubs because I think one of them is missing. Instead, we are going to be moving on to, uh, I believe... Let me just double-check Boof this. Mac Flash and Boof Mac. Ooh, boy. Let's do this. This is going to be a fun Let's one. Let's go Boof Mac. Beef. <laughs> beef in the building. Up against <laughs> up against Flash, who may or may not be on uh, Dignitas again this season. Nothing confirmed yet, officially. We'll see what happens. Here we go. Waiting for Boof Mac to, ups to accept, not upset. Uh, you so saying hope Richie's my 12 win GC with E Barb Rage Sparky. How dare you, sir? I, I hope that. I don't see it. I saw that deck. That looks very interesting. <laughs> it looks very rage inducing. Here we go. Buff Mac, top of your screen. Flash at the bottom. Buff Mac, of course, uh, with just watched his teammate go take the dub. And Buff Mac and Azili's, as both players can put in either 1v1 or 
into your king, uh, uh, and both into King of the Hill, looks real nasty in the addition of having TNT and Jupiter King, who I expect, if 2v2s in CRL West, will be the primary 2v2 duo for Tribe Gaming, but who are also both absolute fire in head-to-head -head play. Fuel Spirit, oh my. Look, is that not ridiculous that Musk's here almost went back to full HP? That's wow. It's wild. It is so wild. <laughs> I think, I, I, I'm going to say this right now, I think the Heal Spirit is the most interesting addition to this game in a, vi in a, in a long time. Uh, oh, yeah. It, it's, it has the potential to really change things in an exciting and fun way. We saw yesterday a lot of Heal Spirit uh, minion horde combination. And that mm -hmm. worked out, re that was really fun to watch. Um, and guys, I'm not always going to be able to answer chat. Uh, if I miss something, I'm sorry. I will try to get to chat as much as I possibly can. But we do have games to cast, a lot of moving pieces, a lot of people chatting at once. So uh, if I don't see your question or don't answer it immediately or don't get to it, apologies, nothing personal meant by it whatsoever. I do have a question. Could I explain what Orange League is about? Why aren't they separate? Why are they separate from? Why aren't they separate from CRL? They are. Orange Crown League is uh, is the successor to Super League of Orange. It's a league. It's a competitive Clash Royale league run by a Spanish production company, and it's just not CRL. There, it's sort of like, hey, there's. Uh, if you watch hockey, there's the NHL, and then there's like a bunch of other hockey leagues, right? Same thing. Um, you know, there isn't like, there isn't a national. Oh, there you go. Tower down, right hand side. Buffmac eats that balloon. And look at this. I actually considered running this earlier this morning, um, and now that I've seen it, I'm excited because I've I ran minor musk. Or I ran minor musk loon cycle back in February, uh, but I ran it with the ice spirit. Seeing it work here with heal spirit is super exciting. Yeah, definitely would be really frustrating with your opponent having your balloon all of a sudden just gain like 300 HP and it's like, what? I, I just snowballed this. It's like, what? I, now I gotta commit even more elixir for one elixir from a heal spirit and we'll see it right here, it looks like. Uh, Harik, I don't think that your suggestion is a viable one by matchmaking on the average level of all cards. In particular, because then you would, match, you would not be matching players based on skill level necessarily. So then you'd like you'd have someone who's like a six thousand, like a fifty eight k player like you, up against four k players, and I think that's actually worse than the current situation. So, um, yeah, I think there's all, there's there's also certainly some technical challenges there as well, but I don't think that's actually a good solution from a competitive standpoint. Um, I would just keep trying to grind that deck up, bro. That's my best advice for you. Here we go. Taking a look at that one, Flash getting the early tower down and. Taking care of business. Let's go take a look at our stats, courtesy of Stats Royale. Let me go ahead and check at the uh, at this chat here from update teams of CRL West. Team. Please, there will be some updates on that pretty soon. Uh, I'll get I'll get that in there for you. Uh, hopefully this week. Who's with me? It is Chachi, formerly of Complexity Chachi. Esports, and now here on the chat. Rich, do you use Instagram? Yes, on all social media. I am at Rich Slayton. R I C H S L A T O N. So on Twitter, on Instagram, I have a TikTok. I've never posted on. I don't expect to post on, but I keep the real estate. So if on any social media, search at Rich Slayton, and that's how you'll find me. Um, let's see. Uh, thanks for the answer, Rich. Happy to. Magic Archer is dead. I'm not sure I agree, but it's as yet to be seen. Um, yeah, level one players push to 5,300 and play all players with way lower level cards. So stop. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, everyone just be good. That's it. Right? That's a pretty solu <laughs> a pretty good solution. Everybody's just got to be like, you know, Boof Mac and Surgical Goblin, and there won't be any problems. Yeah, just be just be amazing at the game, and then there's no issues whatsoever. Uh, update teams of CRL West, please. From what the bug? I'll be doing a Clash Royale esports a Clash Royale esports news fairly soon um, that will include some more information updated, uh, both some official information and some rumors because I do enjoy my rumors. But, uh, yeah, we got it. Here we go. Game number two. Flash currently in the lead. Very, very exciting. And the ban is like going to be Balloon. Band. Buff Max says, no, thank you. So Skelly Barrel now one and one in our new meta. I like it. I mm. really do. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. Flash does have the request up. We'll be with the... Next game in a moment, and I'll, I'll pop back out here for a second and say, Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Here are your results over on this side of the screen, if you're just joining us. Who's done what so far today? And here we go, jumping into game number two of Flash and Beef Man. 
A.K.A. Boof, Boof Mac. Boof Mac. Boof a Mac. Boof a Mac though. And there you go, heal spirit for heal spirit. I was actually expecting heal spirit to do like no damage and you know just like have the heal. So I feel like if they do nerf it, they'll probably get rid of the damage or reduce the heal. I feel like either way, it'd be good. I, I think it's really strong right now. I think it's great. I actually like that it does some damage. It gives it more utility than purely the healing. Um, True. So I do enjoy that. And take a look at this. We are seeing minion the heal, heal spirit with the uh, with the minion horde, and definitely had an impact there. Mm -hmm. But the royal hogs from Flash getting on the the pump and both towers big time. Big time from Flash. Yeah, I ran this deck uh, for. Uh, what's it called? The Team Wars. I ran this exact deck that Flash is using. I, I really enjoy it. I The Hogs, anything with a lot of swarmy card troop decks, um, the Heal Spirit is just going to rock and roll with it. So you'll see a lot of synergies. Maybe with Three Musketeer, Royal Hogs, Minion Horde, anything like that, you're going to see a lot of Heal Spirits right. in those kind of decks. Oh, thank you, uh, newspaper. Oh, newspaper. Thank you, newspaper, for your <laughs> for both providing us with so many so much good information and for the sub. Just because of that, that subscription just saved the entire newspaper industry. So wow. uh, print is back, folks. And this is interesting. Thinking about 3M, uh, do you think Heal Spirit, with the support it can give to the two musketeers on one side, do you think that might be uh, enough to put 3M back in the meta? I think it will definitely help out a lot. Uh, as people are just going to have to get used to the heal spirit, like the radius that it gives off, because you just saw in that left hand lane flash and the heal spirit kind of as like a prediction for something, and it wasn't quite able to heal up the musketeers. But if it did, those musketeers would have been really, really scary. Tactical talent making a very good point. 3M pump versus no big spell. So that's huge. Icewing, welcome back. Good to oh, see you again. Heal spirit. And that's a lot of damage. Left hand lane going to drop way, way down to under 500 HP. No, 511, but still pretty darn close. 511, 200 away from a very popular band from the late 90s and early 2000s. Amber is the color of the heal spirit. Will it go all the way behind this three musketeers to the left hand side? You see no big spell, so Buff Mac happy to load up with all of those in the same lane, knowing he can support them a bit. And look at this, which way will the Heal Spirit go? Flash in a bit of a conundrum at this point, way ahead. Heal Spirit oh, goes Heal Spirit behind the minion That's horde. That's gonna be a huge Ooh. connection. He has to defend though. Oh my goodness. Oh my word, and oh. look at that, 105. Wow. If he would've put the goblins, the spear goblins to tank, just one tile higher, he would've had the game. Wow. Oh my God, I'm gonna come back out here so you can see my face, guys. And then we'll go to the stats. And that was crazy. That was wild. And you saw the heal spear on the right-hand side from Buff Mac and nearly taking that tower, uh, but did not have quite enough defensively to stop on the right-hand side. 105 HP, a split second separates these two. And that's what we were left with. What a crazy ending. And you can see oh. there's a, wow, there's, you might be able to hear it. Some uh, some pros throwing some, some fire at, at all into the chat right now. Here we go. So Buff Mac Falls coming up next. It's going to be Luke Dubs facing off against Tommy, the Nicaragua Ninja up against Luke Dubs, who now has officially been uh, moved back with his uh, Brazilian cohorts in Pain Gaming. But before we get into that game, Chachi, your thoughts on what we just saw? I just saw Three Musketeer making its first appearance today. I was really excited and was pretty impressed. I feel like right now, uh, the Graveyard deck would definitely beat the 3M. Uh, so you probably won't see it too much more unless you don't think your opponent's very good with Graveyard and won't use it. Like if you're versus me, I'm not using Graveyard, so you can go ahead and run 3M or whatever you want. But 3M is really scary with that Heal Spirit, especially with Minion Horde. You're going to see a lot of that bait with the pump and a lot of bait cards like Minion Horde, Goblin Gang, Three Musketeer, all that fun stuff to really support it. I'm uh, going to go ahead and throw a little sub link in the chat if you like that game subscribe so you can see more games like this because we'll be back again tomorrow some more very cool clash royale stuff coming your way fairly soon so uh sub so you never miss a moment of it and so you never miss a moment of things like this luke dubs up against tommy 
I believe we're still in the round of 64 at this point, right? Or have we moved on into the round of 32? Um, let me check. It looks like we're in the round of 32. Or no, this is the last game of the 64. Last game of 64. Cool. Then I will yes. switch over the overlays once we hit that spot. Winner of this will play Surgical Goblin. Whoa. I've heard of him. He plays Clash Royale, right? I think so. Dude, that's so cool. Not oh, everyone the does heel that. The Spirit's brother, the Ice Spirit, is going to be used instead of the Heel Spirit. This could be an interesting deck. Do you oh, think the time. Ice Spirit is going to be the biggest drop in use rate courtesy of the Heel Spirit? I think it will definitely take a pretty big fall. Um, the only deck that I see it will stick in would be uh, Expo because the heal won't affect buildings. Um, so if you see 2.9, you'll still see the Ice Spirit. But other than that, I think most people are going to switch over to Heal Spirit, at least for the first couple of days, just to see how good it is. But I think it is really, really good. So I, I will see it. I'm pretty sure we'll see a decline in the Ice Spirit. What do you think of um, what about like like Hog Rider decks? You think we'll still see Ice Spirit there? Um, I think that would be personal preference uh, right now just because Heal Spirit is new and exciting. I think we'll see a lot of it. So early on, you'll probably see a drop off. But later on, uh, people like Jack will probably still continue to use Ice Spirit because he's just so used to having Ice Spirit in there. Um, but yeah. Here we go. Miner with, uh, you see that? We're seeing Poison and Valkyrie and Log for Tommy. So... Definitely yeah, some I would assume this last card's right? Inferno Tower. It could be uh, B Rad's uh, 3.0 or uh, minor cycle with the Inferno Tower or Bomb Tower. You never know. Um, what the bug is saying? Put subscribe and like icon on new overlay. Uh, I don't know how to do that at this exact moment, but what the bug? Thank you for the thought. Um, Dynamo Kill. Thank you for the sub, man. Because of that subscription, man, and this one puts a lot of emotion in my heart. Uh, ice cream just got better because of that subscription. You thought it was good before, now it's even better. So thank you very much. You have brought joy to people around the world. Besides for lactose intolerant people because now they can't enjoy it even more. Feels bad. Um, well, good news for you there. Uh, also, sorbets just got oh. better. Yeah. Oh, all right, all right. I'm excited. Yeah, congratulations. Now you got me excited. Yep. So here we go, final 15 seconds of regulation time and Graveyard down, but Valkyrie right in the middle. This Skeleton's is a really interesting a matchup. I feel like Tommy definitely has the advantage because of how quick of a cycle is he has. He also has Valkyrie. Um, the Ewis does give a little bit of poison value, but he still has so much answers to it. And all he has to really do is just get this miner on the tower once and he'll be able to clutch this game up here. Ooh, 46 HP, all it takes is a log to take this victory. Tommy's just got to defend, he drops the poison, and there it is. GG's Tommy, taking game number one. Very well for Tommy. Nice shot, taking out game number one here against the Brazilian Bomber Loop Dubs. And there you have it, and it was the Inferno Tower. You are right, you can see that there was zero plays. Uh, Tofik asking, do I use OBS or OBS Streamlabs? I use, OB I use regular OBS because there's no slobs for Mac. So I just use regular yeah. old OBS here. And um, I'm the complete 180. I use Streamlabs as OBS because mm. <laughs> I'm not on Mac. Yeah, well, I uh, I like all my things to be one thing. So my laptop, my desktop, my phone, my tablet, my uh, eyesight is actually – I have eye eyes, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Eye eyes. Um, they did uh, – unfortunately, they do randomly have U2 logos pop up. But, <laughs> you know, you, you have to deal with it for high quality, you know? Yeah, for sure. Luke Dubs banning poison as we move into our second Ooh. game. Are we going to see a lot of graveyard or are we going to see some kind of spell bait that three musketeer? It'll be interesting. And for those of you who are uh, not looking at the, the brackets at the moment, game number one of Faust and God RF. Uh, RF taking game number one of that one. So there's a little update for you. And getting ready here for game number two request is up we'll be in there in just a moment here we go tommy versus loop dubs uh Iban saying imagine not subbing to rich dude seriously i can't even imagine it tafik said did you see the new eye wife uh no i can i can barely afford the regular one so an eye wife that's way out <laughs> out of my price range i'm waiting for the eye girlfriend to come out because you know i mean what's better than one girlfriend 
Or, yeah, yeah. What's better than a girlfriend, an eye girlfriend, and a girlfriend? You get best of both worlds. Mm. Well, don't tell either one of them that. Yeah. Don't want to tell either one that they exist. Otherwise, they'll get a little upset. You so don't want that. Minor Skelly Barrel Cycle here from Tommy against Hog Cycle from Luke Dubs. So this is a pretty traditional we'll Skeleton Barrel deck. We'll see how different it is now that you have that increased movement speed. Mm-hmm. His last card would probably be that Infernal Dragon, I would assume. From Tommy. And Luke Dubs. Probably having a spell or the Ice Spirit. Or Heal Spirit, you never know. You feel like, typically, with uh, with Hog Rider and Mini P.E.K.K.A., that there's Earthquake in there. That is true. That is true. This Bomb Tower meta has been all over the place, so... If you're using something that has to get to the tower on the ground, you're most likely using that Earthquake to help it get there. That Skelly Barrel zooming! Yeah, that thing moves so crazy fast. This is a So fast. I'm really glad that on day one of this new meta, we get to see pros play within that meta. This, this, is, this is kind mm -hmm. of a treat. We don't usually get something like this. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I, I would actually like to see something like this consistently where uh, the, the, the first week of a new meta we get to see pros compete and really showcase some of those pieces because this is fun. Yeah, because there's no real established decks right away after like day one or two. Uh, so you're not like, okay, I know this deck is 2.6. How like you can identify that in a heartbeat and be like, okay, it's Hog. Uh, right now you see Skelly Barrel, like, okay, well, it could be Skelly Barrel Wall Breakers, could be Skelly Barrel Bait, Skelly Barrel Miner. It's like, whoa, what is this? So it's really, really interesting to be able to see this kind of meta form and see it at such a high level. Pressuring with the Spear Goblin's left hand lane. Miner goes to the back. Mini Pekka does not get the pickups down to 515 right hand side. So far, it's been all Tommy here in both games. A good chunk of damage here from Luke Dubs. And you do see the Earthquake come out now, but what does Luke have for the pile this is a coming scary in? Push coming in. No log. And no snowball to Ooh. deal with that. And there you have it, tower down, and with mini with Mega Knight certainly back in cycle for for Tommy, going to be very hard to get that anywhere near. No, I guess Mega Knight not quite back around or deciding not to go with it. And there you go, clean Jeez. two zero sweep for the Nicaraguan Ninja Tommy, taking the last game of the round of sixty four. Let's go ahead and jump into Les Stats, courtesy of Stats Royale. And while that's happening, let me go ahead and change over the uh, the overlays into our round of 32 overlays. Let me go ahead and get those get those going. Boom, we've now changed into our new overlay situation. I am going to update the stream title to just round of 32. Woo woo. woo this is where the action comes into play. Woo woo, this is the big one. This is the big one, and here's the match a lot of you wanted to see. Ooh, I'm pumped about it. And uh, just so you know, uh, RF just won game. I believe that was game number two. So I believe RF just ousted Faust. Was that in the in the in the losers bracket? Um, was that in the down bracket? Let me check. RF. It looks like RF. You said he versed Frost. Versus Faust. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, Faust. No, that is in the uh, upper bracket. Oh, interesting. I guess not on just not on stream today. I guess not. All right, here we go. Round of thirty-two. Igor and Bag. This is gonna be a fun one. A lot of you really wanted to see this. Mr. Igor, one of the newest hot shots on the scene. Debut at CRL Worlds it was a beast. Straight. Got to see him in person. Yeah, that straight five-zero was complete insanity yeah that was nuts it was some of the best some of the some of the best play i've seen um beat dandelion when dandelion ran a counter to mortar specifically knowing that igor would probably play it in that game uh igor mm. played it perfectly got the win uh and then of course the 2-0 against javi Catorze to set up that brilliant brilliant king of the hill and with surge and Morton, which made the best Clash Royale game in the history of the game. Yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Crazy. <laughs> One HP. I would have really liked it taken out. Both of them had the same HP, and then it goes to the second tower. That would have been 
crazy. There would have, that stadium would have been even more insanely nuts. Yeah. It was it was pretty pretty wild. And here we go. Oh, yeah. So it's Mortar against Lava Hound. Both players taking some pretty good shots early on. And Eager's really got to sell out here. He cannot lose that right-hand tower. Otherwise, he's not going to really have a great answer to be able to get any damage on that right-hand tower. Even though Bag is using mostly air cards, he's still going to be able to plop anything right on top of the border and get it basically locked on. He's got to defend this, and it doesn't seem likely, so he is going to lose that tower. But he'll get that tower trade in exchange. But if I'm Bag, I am chilling right now. I'm super pumped on where this game has went and where it is right now. Here you go. Yes, Chachi is the one joining me on voice, for those of you guys asking. For those of you just joining us, this is the CWA Cup. Prize pool provided by your friend and mine, Clash with Ash, organized by our buddy Revel Amar, who uh, is streaming this thing in Espanol. If you decide you want to brush up on your Spanish, or you've been here and you're like, I don't speak English, um, Revel Amar is streaming in Spanish. So uh, you can go ahead and check that one out either way. Here we go. Final 25 seconds, and Igor putting pressure on. And look, Bag certainly has the advantage right now. No questions asked. If there's anyone who can win in this situation with this deck, though, uh, you're looking at it right now. <laughs> yeah. This is not looking good, though, right now. That Lava Hound is going to pop. Won't really get too much damage because that Poison. This Infernal Dragon, though, is looking really, really scary, especially with this Lumberjack about to pop. Activate some Rage. Brown Dragon just seemingly cannot get to the tower. He is lost. He has not found his destination. And now he connects onto the King Tower and missed Zap. Oh, that was a uh, Bag Zap, it looks like. And there you go. The counter does work out for Bag. Three crown down. And Igor falling in game number one. We'll see what he has in store for game number two. Maybe a Lava Ban. We'll see what happens. Uh, Rich, I'm trying to play, learn how to play GY controls. Any YouTubers to recommend? I don't know about who I would recommend on YouTube for GY control. Um, I'm sure CWA has done some recent videos with some top-level pros on Graveyard. Um, I played Graveyard this last season, and I really just focused on uh, not getting overly aggressive with Graveyard, trying to save it primarily for double and triple elixir. Um and but also knowing when to max like when being really careful about when to push graveyard in single but doing that very rarely that was my big thing to learn about playing gy and here we go minor to the outside to open things up for igor and you can see the ban in this case tornado gosh i was confused for a sec i was reading chat and they said ban bats i was like wait both players just ba played them <laughs> So that was for a different game, I guess, going on at the same time. But a defensive poison has to come out, and that is not ideal for Eager at all. And again, going with a mortar deck. And it seems like Bag's going to be playing that Bomb Tower, Musketeer, Wallbreaker Cycle with the Miner Eager. Maybe playing the exact same um, mortar deck that he just went with. Yeah, and Igor eating a I'm lot of sure damage early on. I'm not sure if that was lag or what, but that was a very delayed snowball. Now these bats are going to get some more damage chipping away. 500 HP and a King Tower wow. with the poison. And that is already GG's. Wow. I'm I'm honestly surprised. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe there's connection issues there. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, if you were paying attention, Bag uh, quite famously uh, or quite honorably when there was a connection issue for Cody Go in the last, like, three seconds of their game when it was pretty much even 200 200 on towers he let the replay happen i doubt he'll do the same thing here but we'll see bag maybe we'll give give igor a rematch we'll see very curious we'll find out in a moment um, i'm gonna go ahead and load up stats for that one just so that you can see what happened now if there is a rematch do they have to play the same decks mr rich um there's no rule about it because there, there's no rematches technically oh, in the gotcha. rules in the rules, um, Bag could say pound sand if he wanted to. Um, hmm. But if if Igor does say, hey, lag, Bag could say, Bag could agree to a rematch, and he could say rematch, same decks, and, you know, it's up to him, really, if there's Gosh. a rematch or not. Okay. Um, and Bag is saying in the chat, rematch, same deck. So there you go. And Igor's saying All okay. Right. So, again, two times in a row, Bag saying, I'm not going to take the easy win off you. 
If you say you have lag, I'll believe it. Let's go. And uh, bag, I if you're not if you're not getting becoming a fan of bag from this from from this tournament overall, then uh, I don't know what you're watching because he's been played well and played honorably. Now, Alan, everybody in the chat should be rooting for Bag because you don't want something to happen like it did with Thunderstruck out at uh, Red Bull MEO. He gave a rematch when he could have won 3-0, and all of a sudden his opponent came back tied at 2-2, and Thunderstruck won the last game. You don't want to have that kind of heart attack come in if you're Bag letting a rematch happen, and when you had the game sealed, and then get reverse swept. So we'll see if it happens here, but for now, I got to be rooting for Bag. Poison and Musketeer do take the Musketeer off of Bag side of the board. Mega Knight and Mini P.E.K.K.A. flying in on this tower. Yeah, Mega Knight and Mini P.E.K.K.A. together can be so frustrating. Yeah, and here we one go. One deals with the splash, and one deals the damage. Mortar, I believe. Is that high enough? Yes, it is. It is high so enough. It is. Gets on tower and... Big exchange there for the Russian. Two big time mortar shots, 1654. Bash, take care of that musketeer. Chat asking, is Bag going to join CRL? Uh, he did receive some offers for this season, uh, but his parents didn't let him. He's just 16 years old. They didn't want him to travel. Now that it's an online only season, there's a question of whether or not some team might pick him up, but. There's still the concern of if they pick him up for the for the year contract and then uh, he's not able to travel and we are back to being in person in the fall, whether that's a problem for a team. So undetermined yet, there are still a few rosters that are not official. I am I am unsure. I don't have any like, really clear information. But at this stage, just because of the investment issue and concerns that he wouldn't be able to play live in the fall, I think he might not end up playing CRL, even though this is an online season. Here we go. Mega Knight, Mini Pekka behind on that left-hand side. Mortar low here in defense this time. Yeah, and that Mortar can be really frustrating for a lot of players, just being like, oh my goodness, I can never get any damage. Got to go through this Mortar, but it seems like Bag is taking care of that Mortar very surgically right now, just going in. He knows what he has to hit what he has to hit to take out that mortar and really no damage coming out for either player right now yeah very mortar, good defense there go. by by igor yeah dealt with that negative or that elixir deficit that he had and had a pretty nice defense that beautiful prediction log there miner's gonna take care of that musketeer valkyrie's gonna die here Wahlberg is heading to the tower and a mortar is gonna have to come out on defense mini pekka still alive though heading Ooh. towards that tower is he gonna get a shot he does huge shot 12 36 left hand side minute 45 remaining in sudden death overtime igor just gave up the lead with one one shot mini pekka getting on tower and this seems to be the 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 rhythm here for Bag now. Mega Knight, Mini Pekka. Zap fails to get that last bat off. Musketeer will help out. Miner goes high. Log protects it just long enough. I think no, but the poison will finish things off. And look at that. Miner gets on tower 984, left hand side 1598, opposite direction. Mega Knight will pick up that aggro from the mortar for the moment. And look at the wall breaker placement there to get that second shot. Ooh, and they nothing be able to gets by. Oh, the snowball has to come out. And a minor bass push coming out here. Goblins gonna get taken out by the log poison in that. Oh, Ooh. the Mega Knight not gonna quite get onto the tower, but that miner just chipping away with the help of that poison. Oh, that was uh, Eager's poison. My bad. I was like, man, that miner's doing no damage. But <laughs> here we go. Monster push from Bag in this left hand lane. Valkyrie and a minor push coming out here. The Valkyrie. Not able to take care of that musketeer. The snowball does, though, on defense. Down to 424. Mega Knight, a leap here would be done. And that's going to be it. GG WP back with the clean 2-0 sweep over Igor. Chachi, thoughts on what we just saw? That was a, a fascinating battle, and it felt like it all turned when that mini P.E.K.K.A. hit. Yeah, that mini P.E.K.K.A. damaging it. Forced Igor to play for that sudden death tie uh, victory because before that mini P.E.K.K.A. hit, he did have the lead, so he could just play defense with a mortar and just spell cycle out, throw in a couple miners here and there. But because of that mini P.E.K.K.A., he had to play a little more aggressive, so he got more aggressive with mortars, 
which ended up letting Bag make monster pushes with those Mega Knights in the middle and a mini P.E.K.K.A. Musketeer all behind. So there you have it. Bag taking the 2-0 sweep over Igor. And now we're moving on to our next match in the round of 32, Thunderstruck against Hen and Kava. Let's jump right on in. The Scotsman, currently with Rambu in the Orange Crown League. A new pickup for this second part of the season. And then Hen and Kava re-signing with Pain Gaming for 2020 in CRL. And easy King Tower activation there for Hen and Kava. Beautiful. And it looks like we're gonna be seeing that Ice Wiz Bomber deck here versus possibly a Lava Loon, but since it has Miner in it, I would doubt that he has that balloon. But still, that Baby Dragon with one HP. Prediction Snowball comes down. Valkyrie there to tank the Lava Puffs here, and still quite a bit of damage for Thunderstruck. That Scally Barrel zooming by. He could be a NASCAR <laughs> driver. That's how fast he's going right now. They need to get a speeding ticket. We need a new card police officer, and that Scally Barrel doing work on that tower right now. Minor to the back, 414, and exactly as my friend Chachi just said, the speed there makes the minor Skelly Barrel combination so much harder to react to efficiently. And next thing you know, sliding all the way in. So very exciting Skelly Barrel plays so far. As we reach the midway point of regulation time, Henan Kava has taken the lead back on the Scotsman. 414 right-hand side for Thunderstruck. 1056 right-hand side for Henan Kava. Bomb Tower has to come out to get the counter on the Valkyrie. And as we get deeper into this one, Chachi, how do you view this matchup? Well, I think definitely if this turns into a defensive game with Kava playing on defense, he's got a pretty nice advantage. He's got the bomb tower to take care of that miner if it comes in first Ice Wiz. And as well as the Ice Wiz NATO push is just gonna be extremely devastating for him. And uh, looks like Thunderstruck's gonna have to just sack that right hand tower to build up that elixir lead. This is still going to be very scary. He has to get a good poison or a minor prediction onto that Ice Wizard. He wants to be able to take out this tower. Very, very smart play. Look at this all the way around from Hen and Kava, putting the pressure on the left-hand side, forcing the Elixir expenditure. Bomb Tower Valk placement with a perfect kite with damage on the Barbarians. Everything about this exchange seems like it was played correctly by Hen and Kava. Agreed with that. Barbarians at the bridge. That's when you know this is getting really desperate. But a NATO with a bomb tower, there's really going to be no way these Lava Pups or Barbarians are going to connect to that tower. And another zoom in Skelly Barrel over there on that left-hand tower. The help of the Miner. Going to get a little more chip damage there. Baby Dragon Mega Minion left-hand side. 15 seconds left. That's not going to be enough. You're going to have to go Miner to the right-hand side. And the Poison comes in to try to help out. But take a look at that. NATO. Pulls it away. Beautiful. <laughs> Hen and wow. Kava just played a gem of a game here. Very, very well done. And there you have it. Hen and Kava taking game number one. Let me go ahead. I forgot to queue up my statistics, but I'll go get those ready for you right now, everybody. Boom, boom. Stats looks like are Bomb up. Tower is going to be banned in this next game. There you go. Bomb Tower going to be off the board after that one. Thunderstruck going Lava. Uh, why do streams I watch on YouTube lag? I have zero problems on Twitch. I don't know, uh, UFG. I, uh, I am unsure. But maybe it's because YouTube's better. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Better you could quality. always try reducing the quality of the stream also in the bottom right-hand corner. Mm. If that'll help. Hey, guys, I will. Um, I haven't been looking at the chat because I've been focused on the games here for a minute, but I'll come back to the chat uh, once the pace slows down for a couple of seconds. If you liked that game, go ahead and give me a sub because every time you subscribe, and I mean every time you subscribe, a piece of pepperoni is placed on a pizza for someone to enjoy in the future. These skelly barrels are getting everywhere now. I can see why Zilly's wanted to ban it in that one game, even though no one really played it. We haven't seen a whole lot of graveyard since the first couple games here. It was all Hunts graveyard all day those game. first few games, but now yeah. suddenly, yeah, it's disappeared. I guess everybody's just like, huh, Skelly Barrel, I guess I'll give it a whirl, and then they're having pretty good success so far. What is it, 3-1 and one or 2-1? and one Something so like that. Yeah, pretty good win rate so far, not too bad. 
You can see Thunderstruck now going, hey, it's my turn to play it. And uh, <laughs> Sogikilis? Sogikili? G Sogs! Sogs, thank you very much for your subscription. And uh, not only did a piece of pizza just land, uh, get a new piece of pepperoni. Clash with Prosky, again, same thing. On top of that one, someone who uh, keeps kosher or halal just got beef pepperoni instead of pork pepperoni. So oh. you not you not only helped those, but obviously uh, if you keep kosher, you're not eating um, meat and cheese or meat and milk. So uh, you know, it depends on what your what your, your your level is, I guess. Naxo also jumping in. Thank you very much. And now imitation pepperoni, which is like a veggie version of pepperoni, has now been added to the pizza mix. So everybody's covered now. GGWP, thank you for those three subs. Thank you for supporting pizza throughout the world. This seems like a very, very quick cycle game here. The Goblin Hunt seems like a very, very new bait deck. Very excited to see these new decks that come out, especially with the help of the Goblin Hunt and the Skelly Barrel. Bringing it out versus Kava's more classic wall breaker minor cycle. We got Mega Knight and Mini Pekka, the famous duo. Some say is a little too strong. Sought up and via Tautas. Thank you guys both for your subscriptions. And uh, you know, again, I have to say this, and it's 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 so important. Support pizza, guys, and your subs help support make pizza and ice cream better every single time. DW27, thank you very much. Anchovies were just banned throughout the world. Despite, oh, thank God. You know what? If you watched Shiny, thank you very much as well. Uh, you know, if you watched any movie for in the 1980s and 90s, you would assume that the number one, that like pizzas automatically came with anchovies. I don't remember, I think someone made this, pointed this out to me the other day, and they were like, why does every single pizza like person in a movie go, no anchovies on the pizza, as if pizzas just automatically were like, there was an anchovy epidemic. And look at that, Thunderstruck takes the tower down, evening things up, one and one. I missed that last sub, so if you can tell me in the chat who that was, uh, please do so. Let me go hey, ahead. Hey, you? I think, hey, you? Oh, interesting. That did not reload correctly. Let's see if it'll reload correctly now. And there you go. Boom. There's the stats from that last one. And Hen and Kava are going to bring a ban. Um, you missed Buff Mag getting destroyed. Uh, yeah, Buff Mag didn't have a great one. Well, any pineapple be added only upon request by Nama Jeff. Um, are there any Muslim players in CRL? Uh, let me think. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think. Um, I think, I mean, the, the, the game overall has a pretty wide representation of, uh, of nationalities, ethnicities, religions, creeds, everything. Pretty much everybody plays Clash Royale. I don't know if, uh, what the, what the overall mix is in CRL, though. But I'm assuming between East and West, there's probably somebody. Who knows? All right! And that's another sub here from Gustavo Machado. Uh, is that a a Brazilian or Portuguese? Machado, I believe, is a Brazilian I love or Portuguese that name. last name. Yeah, it's a great one. Here we go. Game number three, Hen and Kava and Thunderstruck. Who do you got? Uh, man. You know what? Just out of solidarity, because my people hail from Scotland on my mother's side, I'm going to root for Thunderstruck here in my heart while my casting will be neutral. But out of solidarity, I will say, hey, Thunderstruck, because of uh, our, we, are, we both uh, have Scotland in our blood. All right. Then I will take the Brazilian Mysticava. Oh, Pino, Maybe. I will show the names after this game. Don't you worry. Uh, on Vesh Ready Bilardi saying, shout me out. Please have been subscribed. We'll be subscribed forever. Keep these streams going at Rich Slayton. Um, thank you very much. Just make sure you put the L in front of the A because Rich Salton is a an entirely different person. <laughs> he puts a lot of salt on his food. He put salt on his pizza as well, not pepperoni. Dude, I used to actually put salt on my pizzas. I'm not even joking. Really? I used to, I used to put salt on my My girlfriend's mom does that, so I guess it's not that weird, but... <laughs> here you go. Easy kite. And here's the question. Is Thunderstruck running a clone deck, potentially? Well, he is known to run those really, really wacky decks. So it would not shock me if he does. We see Giant Skeleton. We see Barbarians. If there's a Skelly now, the Barbarian here. I think it's not a clone deck, if I had to guess, but... I have been wrong before. Uh, I've never been wrong, so, you know, oh. step up your game. <laughs> Here we go, Royal Hog's right-hand side, and we are seeing, is this the first Magic Archer of the day? It is. And Earthquake gonna come out. King Tower activation not gonna quite get there, but still a pretty pretty beefy push coming out. Babe dragging a couple Spear Goms from that Goblin Hunt. 
Oh, looks like we're uh, someone's saying it's probably GY. Most likely not to say the G hut. That's definitely more likely than clone at this point, because you can't clone <laughs> a hut, unfortunately. Uh, here we go. Imagine. Um, <laughs> imagine the hut clones. That would be nasty. Who's the other commentator? I think I, think I would have to set the game down and not play it for about uh, four years, and then I'll come <laughs> back after that. Chachi is the other commentator. There's been a lot of prediction logs in this game so far. Been very interesting. Nobody's hit one yet, either. <laughs> well, one day. That's Someone all. will get it. And here we go. Magic Archer, you see, not picking up the, the Spear Goblin on that one. So you can see a little effect of the nerf on Magic Archer not targeting the Spear Goblin for that extra chip and the Barbarians getting down in time to pick up the aggro. So... So far, though, it is still Hen and Kava in the lead. And look at this loading up mini P.E.K.K.A. Hogs. Is the EQ going to come out? Yes, it does. There it is. And that's going to take care of most of the Spear Gobs. That mini P.E.K.K.A. may go to that tower. Oh, the... And that's... look at that. Wow. Brilliant use wow. of the Heal Spirit and the Ice Golem to get the kite going and keep that giant skeleton from going right to tower. Hen and Kava, Ooh. currently in the lead, has barely been touched. And there we go. Log does get the Dark Goblin off the board here. We are in the final two minutes, our sudden death overtime period. Hen and Kava currently in a commandy league. Uh, I'll come to ch back to chat in a minute, guys. But for the moment, just hanging out here in this very, very interesting game where we're seeing Magic Archer for the first time today. And this deck was the most popular deck when the Heal Spirit came out a few days ago. Mm -hmm. And looks like it continues to have at least some viability. Mini Pekka pulled over that giant skelly. Look at that Magic Archer chipping away that geometry. He went to school. He took geometry class. He actually majored in geometry, and that's what he did. Uh, in geometry, I got an A first semester and a C second semester, like I did in every math class, because the <laughs> first semester would be basically a review of the previous year, and the second semester would be the new stuff. Yeah. Yeah, geometry is definitely my worst uh, math class out of them all, so uh, I think I got like a B and a C. First and second semester, but my teacher also was gone for uh, about uh, three four And years. look at that Magic Archer through the baby dragon. Is Magic Archer dead? Magic Not if Archer's you ask Ken and baby. Kava. Woo! And just like that, Hen and Kava puts down the Scotsman. You say Magic Archer's dead? Well, look at what just happened. Still getting all over tower, and there you have it. Magic Archer, six of them down, getting it done. Let me go ahead and give us to the global view so you can see all the results here along this side of the screen. Hi, guys. I'm Rich Slate. If you haven't yet, smash that subscribe button. Why? Because subscribing is the only way to feed the children. That's true. It's the only way. If you don't subscribe, and that's really important, every child will go hungry. Every single one. Wow. Big time shock. Even Rich's child. Mm -hmm. You don't want that guy. Even mine. Here we go. Lopakati versus Titan. Round of 32. Will Lapo play Mortar in game number two? That's the big question. Can Chachi speak louder? Uh, you know, I can up Chachi's audio a bit here. Let me put the output for Chachi up a bit, and let's right. see how that fares. They want to hear the voice of the people. The voice of an angel, some would say. Right. <laughs> Mateo with the sub. Thank you very much, Mateo. Some children will now eat because of you. Beforehand, they would all go hungry. Now only some of them will go hungry, or still most of them probably, but fewer of them will go hungry than before. And uh, I can't read part of your name because of the way that my thing is set up. You can see on screen. But thank you, uh, whatever your mo possibly inappropriate name is, for your subscription. <laughs> You're changing the world one sub at a time. Graveyard for Lapakati and Firecracker all the way in the back. And this is interesting. Look at this. Minor... Royal Hogs, Firecracker Mini P.E.K.K.A. with Heal Spirit. Yeah, this is definitely a new deck. Very unique. Curious to see how it plays along here throughout the battle. But there are no, like, uh, big spell, no poison or anything like that for the hut. He does have Earthquake, but that means there's really going to be not a whole lot of answers for the graveyard besides the bats. And, man, I need to adjust how this thing... Maybe I'll just, you know, maybe I'll just move the alert... Um, slightly above, so it blocks the red player a little bit, so you can see. I can see the full alert. So I could not see that one as well. Uh, the nerf to Magic Archer on Vesh was the. Uh, it's a slight nerf to targeting range, 
So it doesn't see as far. It still shoots as far, but doesn't see as far. So All right. it's not the actual range because the arrows go just as far before. It's how far Ooh, it Look at that. Down. Tower goes down. That graveyard. Tower down, but tower down opposite direction as well. Tania Soto, that thank you very much for that sub. That King Tower is going to take a beating here. That mini Pekka. Oh, finally gets on that ice goal. 1446 right hand lane for Lapakati Titan at 1837. Titan, one of our qualifier players. And look at this push on the left hand side. This heal spirit going to heal up those hogs so much. That mini Pekka is about to get to the tower. He's going by the ice goal. What the heck? He's a madman. He was way closer to that King Tower. There is no way that he thought. The other one was farther away, but it is what it is. And this firecracker seems really, really annoying to Lapakati right now. That earthquake should be coming down. And that's going to be a lot of tower damage right there, and this King Tower is not looking very healthy at all. And a good hold off there by Titan not to go Heal Spirit in that exchange because really would have been kind of a wasted card in the moment. And instead, using Heal Spirit here at the back for a little bit of cycle, maybe trying to stick some stuff at the top. Mini Pekka does come out. Graveyard Poison going to do a lot of damage here on the right-hand lane. Look at this pocket pressure by Lapakati. All right, and a successful defense there. It does take a little bit of damage, but still has a 19 HP damage lead on that King Tower. If the game was to end right now, Titan would win. And there you go. Good job getting damage on, all, on both towers in that moment. 868 on the King Tower. Graveyard does come down. These Graveyard Poisons going to be really hard to deal with. For Titan, yeah, Snowball comes in. No bats are able to use in the poison. A mini pick. Ooh. Okay. And this time with the Heal Spirit. Heal Spirit comes out a little bit early. EQ coming down a little bit later this time. Hogs do go to the tower. Going to be down now to 508. Not much separating these two, but this push from Lapakati could be the one that wins the game here. Firecracker cycled him back. Gets down a little bit early. So now Firecracker. I think this ought to do it right here. Maybe Snowball. Not a lot he can use to defend this. Earthquake comes out on defense. 169 HP. It's in poison range. Can't he get are, the tower damage he needs. We are in triple, but poison going to come down. There is no way. Titan, GG, WP, but Igor. I mean, it's about Lapakati in the <laughs> end. Sometimes, hey, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell the two apart. Lapakati in true. the end does get it done. Game number one to Lapo. And uh, let me go ahead and get those. See, let's see if I have the correct. Do I have the correct account for Lapakati up? I do not. Let me go and see if this is the correct one. Maybe. Maybe. And let me paste that. Is this the correct one for Lapo? No, it is not. All right, let me go ahead and get Titan. I think I have Titan. No, I don't. Okay, I have no stats for this one. Cool. Well, that happens. Well, let's come back over here. Hi, everybody. Instead of getting stats, you'll get my face. Oof, that's even better. I know, isn't it? Um, let's go take a look at the chat for a moment since we are waiting for and Titans banning Musketeer. Not a lot of not a lot of uh, um, a lot of musky bans. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I feel like I haven't seen that in a while. Uh, let's yeah. see, guys. Here I'm looking at the chat right now. So if you have a question, um, get it in in the next seven seconds, and I'll try to answer it before we get into our next game. Um, oh, here we go. Next game. All your questions are gone forever. Rich, do you think spawner decks will be a thing again? Um, I, I don't know if they'll be a thing competitively, although it's possible with both Barb Hut and uh, uh, and Goblin Hut being a thing. Um, you'll probably run into them on ladder a bunch, but I don't know if they'll be anywhere in competitive. You won't see it unless CWA posts an impossible challenge, <laughs> and then you'll see it all over the place uh, for the rest of the season. Uh, let's see. Uh, KFC's dad says, Hey, Rich, I'm 1.5 behind because I just tuned in. Can you greet my son? Okay, hello KFC. How are you? It is good to see you. Um, we are Luke. Yes, we are at the level, the letter O. And look at this. It's going to be some Expo from Titan. And you do not want to see Earthquake if you're an Expo player. Avocati running Barb Hut and EQ. Yeah, we are halfway through the letter O, guys. Where is Morton? Um, Germany, from what I've been told. Yeah, Barb Hut is going to be annoying. EQ. Oi, Gaval. And Lapakati not running Mortar in game two. So the streak has ended, folks. 
What this counters very, this meta? Very, very scary for Titan in this game. And here we go. He's going to get an expo down. Yeah, E Drag's going to make some difficulty for that expo, but expo still going to get some a good damage. Decent chunk off, yeah. And Titan being patient here, not trying to defend the expo, not trying to spend a bunch of elixir. Nope. He knows once double elixir comes, he can defend it pretty easily with the EQ, and he'll just have to really just throw down a barb hut, and he'll be fine. And the good King Tower activation there from Titan. Oh my god, you're right. I did forget. He did finish O and P. We're on Q. We're on Q, which he, 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 can, he can say Q, and it's really funny when he says it. He needs to actually learn how to recognize it. So guys, smash that sub button. And uh, you'll help my son learn how to read the letter Q. He'll go Q, Q, <laughs> like that. Q, Q. All right, here we go. Earthquake coming down. Eagle. Yeah, Earthquake's going to get double damage in there, both on the Tesla and on the Expo. But right now, Titan in the lead and really doing a good job of slowing this game down and taking advantage of... When that elixir comes in, look at the perfect timing there. As soon as that e golem got down, expo down to take advantage of those four those four elixirs. Mm -hmm. This should be seeing another earthquake come out any second now. There it comes. Going to hit the tower, the expo, and the Tesla. And that is very scary. A fireball Lop, and log. The tower. So Lapakati doing a good job also of keeping those fireballs off of his princess tower. We'll see if that can continue now. It might be Titan starting to switch up to a defensive stance and trying to maybe do some fireball cycle on that left-hand side. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's ever going to really be able to connect again with that Expo, that single elixir connection. This is his only hope. Is now in double elixir, you're going to have to worry about the barbs from the barb hut, the e golem, and the battle healer, and all he has to really do is just throw down an earthquake. So spell cycle seems to be his best bet. Ice golem does get death damage, 1,100 left-hand side. Yeah. And there you go. There's some fireball, fireball value. That is exactly what Titan wants. I'm a bit surprised with the e with the the e drag going that far back like that. Same here. Free value is not good value unless you're the person getting the free value. And there you go. Log takes it to 815. Titan had a pretty good chance here to even things up. Are we going to see four e golems down at once when we hit triple elixir? A little more fireball and log value down to under 600 HP on the left hand side. Titan I feel does like have he's to just cycling into here. another fireball here because there's really not a whole lot he can do. He's going for it all here. He's trying to get another fireball and log on the tower to seal this game. Is he going to be able to do a fireball? Log, log in. Uh -oh, Will he win it? Ooh. Ooh. Wow. And Crazy game. Yeah, there you go. Hey. Takes it up. Hi, guys. We don't have stats for this one because I don't have a stats page for Titan and I had the wrong account for Lapakati. So maybe I'll get that fixed for tomorrow. We'll see. Who knows? Uh, but for now, we're going to game number three. Your results so far here on the left-hand side of your screen. Joining me on voice is Chachi. Uh, what up, what up? Yep. One of the greats. One of the all-time greats, um, especially if you're talking about smiles. Oh, it's so, you know... <laughs> People are gonna people are gonna start start wondering, but I gotta say, it's just it's it's uh what you want? It's captivating, some might say. Here we go. <laughs> Game number three. And Titan pulling off the, the two point nine win. Is Royal in the CWA Cup as Sevi? I don't think so. Icing with a big I old yes. Uh Chai Town Gino up in the building. Hello all. Hey Rich, how are ya? Um Rop Lapa could have spanned earlier in three elixir. Can we get the bracket link, Rich? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, the Royal bracket, is not in it. The bracket uh, should also be in the show notes, in the in the description below. So uh, if you need to see the bracket, I believe it is in the description. And here we go. Bands are EQ and Musketeer. Just should be seeing a lot of huts. I would assume with the EQ band, you're going to see at least one building for each opponent, and you do see them with the Barb Hut and the Goblin Hut, which was both their first place. Now, if you had a preference, Rich, would you rather have Barb Hut or Goblin Hut in your deck right now? Ooh, right now? That's so interesting. Um, I think Barb Hut, um, I just like the little extra tankiness of it overall. Mm -hmm. um, in this particular situation, I don't know, but like, I'm also more experienced with Barb Hut. 
gotcha. you know, I played I played a little bit of the uh, Sieg's No Win Condition deck back in 2018. Ooh. Yeah. And I'm actually looking forward. I think it was. I'm gonna look at this. I actually took a screenshot of it. I think it was Try. I and if I'm wrong, I'll let me know. But Try the no, he, it was a Goblin Hut deck. Never mind. I believe it was Try the Coach posted a a, a deck that he was having success with today. That was a, a Goblin Hut Royal Hogs Heal Spirit deck, which I might have to give a try out. Yeah. I, I'm just super pumped for this meta because there seems to be a lot of changes coming around, uh, especially with the mini pe uh, the meta. We haven't seen a whole lot of mini P.E.K.K.A. so far today. We've seen it in a couple of Mega Knight decks here and there, but it's not as much as I would expect uh, without it getting touched in this last balance change. Well, this you know, the interesting thing is that as spawner decks rise, mini P.E.K.K.A. does uh, struggle a bit more. Right, especially you know you start seeing too many of these spear goblins on the board. So a spear go mm -hmm. if, if goblin hut is a little bit more viable, a little bit more prevalent, that just makes mini Pekka a little bit. I mean, that's not like a massive nerf, but it certainly does no. make it a little bit less, uh, a little bit less viable. Totally agree with that. Now, if you have mini Pekka and you see a barb hut, you're kind of like just licking your lips. You're like, hey, all right, all right, mini Pekka one shots all these barbs, but. You really won't expect to get through the entire bar hut if you have that. The graveyard deck comes out. GUI down for Titan. So it's graveyard versus Bates, a new bait and a semi new graveyard deck. Here we go, moving to the sudden death overtime. Not separated by much, a little under 100 hit points on this right hand side and Lapakati now pushing pretty heavy on the left and be trying to steal the win here in a moment. Ewiz nice. comes down Ewiz and takes care of both. a ton of value. And here we go, into the same lane this time. It's gonna be the Miner and the Skelly Barrel, of course. Bar Barrel should be in, oh my gosh, Ooh. mistimed Bar Barrel from Titan. That's devastating, 508 right hand side. That slight mistime of the Bar Barrel could be the difference in this game. All tied up, one and one so far. Lapakati now, keeping the pressure on. And Ewiz oh, he comes missed out the Ewiz early. too. Oh nice game. boy! Wow. And you have to imagine that's nerves more than anything else. Titan here yeah. playing against Lapakati in this big time tournament knows that there's thousands watching across multiple different languages, and uh, just ends up slipping a bit there at the end. So. A rough one there. Two missed defenses. Who knows how it would have shaken out had he hit those two defenses, but is what it is, and that's that's the, how the nerves might shake you there in some of those moments. Lapakati taking the 2-1 win, and uh, GG well played to Lapo. Uh, Chachi, any thoughts on what we just saw? That was a very interesting deck. We had two huts versing each other. Um, that graveyard deck with the battle healer didn't get as much value as normally it would because of how spaced out Lapakati's deck was with the spear gums kiting it one way and then Dark Goblin ranged out of the way. Bats, no way the battle healer can heal it uh, or attack it and get the heals down. And then that Zoom and Skelly Barrel just applying a lot of pressure, forced out that Ewiz every single time or that Bar Barrel. So really no other spell for those bats or that Dark Goblin to really take advantage of. And that's why Lapakati La won that last game. All right. So Lapo all the way through to our next round. And coming up next, So King versus Stang Sand. Stang, one of our qualifying players and uh so far having a good tournament here we are up against so king let me go ahead and check something real quick over on this side and is uh staying stand uh is he one of the qualifiers that came in that was not invited yeah he's one of the qualifying players Perfect. beat carter in the first round two to one and here he is okay. up against so king in the round of 32 thank you sebastian notorious for your subscription due to your subscription a local artist just sold their first painting for the sum total of 73 dollars in a coffee shop let's go yep wait coffee shops are closed though right now come on rich uh, social distancing no but this one is letting this one's letting in two customers at a time due to their oh. square footage for takeout only gotcha all right Jeez. that makes more sense all right all right Come I was going to say, if you coming out here saying that people are selling the coffee shops, I want to know. I, I need some coffee, man. Well, I've been drinking about two cups a day during this. Uh, Rich Slayton, how to sub to you. Aiden, here you go. There's the there's the uh, the link right there. 
hit that link and you can subscribe. And then of course, uh, ring the bell for notifications so you never miss a moment of this great Clash Royale action. Minor Loon, is it viable? Yeah, we've seen it be viable a bunch today. So there mm -hmm. you go. And look at that speedy, skelly barrel. Ewiz does come in soaking, not missing a beat on that one. I think Skelly Barrel might be the big winner of the day, guys. Yeah. Skelly Barrel and Goblin Hut definitely are the two biggest changes. Magic Archer, we've seen it once, right? Once or twice. Yeah. And he, he still seems to be pretty decent. Uh, we got a winning shot with our Magic Archer the last time uh, that it was played off on a giant Skelly. It took the tower down about 700 damage, so still definitely viable. Can Skelly Barrel push a balloon? That's an interesting question. I don't know. Pretty sure it can. That's interesting. Here we go. Pekka to the right hand side, away from the Goblin Hut. Skelly Barrel will drop, and Ewiz comes down to take care of that business. And look at that nice Mega log minion. on the right hand side to deal with the uh, Dark Goblin. Pekka being distracted all over, but tanking for this miner a whole bunch. That's a lot of damage right hand Mega side. Minion. Pekka does not Oof. do it. 395 HP on that right-hand tower. Skelly Barrel coming in on that left-hand side. We'll probably get taken out by that log. There it goes. And a poison coming down on the right-hand side. He's just going to decide to spell cycle. He's going to go minor in the front. He goes on that little weird spot where the other tower can hit. A little bit of mind games. Only 11 HP. And a zap takes it out. So King taking game number one. And there you have it. Nice work by So King. And yeah, that's the spot. It seems like that's the spot you go to when all you need is one minor connection to get you two shots, right? That weird little spot there. That's what that spot's yeah, it, for. This is definitely like the last spot. Most people will be like, oh, they're not going to play it in there because the other tower will hit it. So then it's kind of that mind game. If uh, it's a base race, most people throw it in the front. That way it, can get the, it has the most opportunity to get those hits. And, you know, if it's casual, then most people throw it in the side or the back. And there you go. Ban is minor for this next game. So we'll be seeing no minor next time around. Uh, let's see some chat here. Aiden saying that you subbed. Uh, cool. The alert should be coming in here in a moment. And then I'll do a full, a full, you know, rigmarole for it. Um, Stang saying very solid player. Yeah. Definitely showed some good level there. Even with Soaking getting the win. How do I make your show, sub show up on the screen? I don't know, Aiden. I'm confused why it hasn't. Maybe the alerts are a little bit behind when it when, when you actually sub. So um, keeping my eye out for that alert, though. Don't you worry. Um, it'll be here one day. And wait, we're waiting here for a second on this on next game. Yeah, uh, it is a free sub, but you know, Aiden, thank you for your sub, man. I appreciate it. And let's see. Uh, other questions. Who's your favorite, Morton or Surgical Goblin? Uh, you know what? I'm going to say my favorite's Chachi. How about that? How hey. about that one? Yeah. <laughs> That's my answer to your I, question. I agree with that. That's a pretty good pick. Oh, turn on notifications. Yeah, there's a bell there, guys. Ring the bell. And that way you can never miss a moment Ding. of all this. And here's a fun uh, little hint for those of you who are watching this on mobile, whether it's on your phone or your tablet. Instead of watching, if you want to just zoom in on the gameplay itself rather than see the entire thing with the overlay, switch to your browser mode, and then you can pinch to zoom on just the gameplay in portrait, and you can watch just have just the game screen on. So a little tip there for those of you who are watching on mobile if you want to make the, the game screen full size for your portrait mode. And this looks like it's going to be the Hog Giant Skeleton deck from Stang Sand. Mm-hmm. My uh, my video on Jupiter King's perfect game with this deck against Victor is going to be a little delayed because of my schedule this week. A lot of big stuff happening both here and in other casting stuff that I'm doing. So going to be just a little bit delayed, but I'm really excited about that video. You're going to see just how this deck can be powerful against a counter in the hands of an expert like Jupiter King. And here we go, Graveyard like from Graveyard Soaking. Soaking. Miner being banned, you probably won't see a lot of Balloon Cycle or any Miner Cycle decks, obviously, without the Miner. So it seems like a Graveyard deck would be pretty ideal here in this situation. Um, hey, Chachi, give yourself say something in the chat so I can mod you so you can post the links to your own stuff, too, because right now you can't post links. I just realized yeah, we should be go. able to post your, your channel and stuff like that in here and your oh, Twitter yeah. and things like that. So here we go. 
Chachi's added as a moderator, so now Chachi can post links. Um, so if you haven't yet, sub to Chachi too, man. So Chachi, go ahead and post your stuff. All right, so I people can you. people can come in there and find you too. They can all find me. Oh yeah. And you know, I actually have a special going on. If you guys sub to me right now, you know what's gonna happen, Rich? What? What? I'm so excited. A Clash Royale player will not verse E Barb's Rage for one game. Whoa! Wow. What? That's wow. worth two subs, guys. That's actually worth two <laughs> subs. So if you can sub twice to, to save two people from facing Ebar's Rage, I'd go ahead That's and do it. That's what you got to do. <laughs> so go ahead and throw that, throw, that, throw that link in there, Chachi, so they can help out. Man. Yeah, I threw my link in there, but it's not clickable. I don't know how to do it like you did. I'm not technologically advanced. Huh. I'll have to do that, like, bit link. <laughs> Ooh, that NATO bomb. Woo! Um, you know what, Chach? I'm going to go to your... Hold on. Where Are you going to do it for me and be a beast? I'm going to go to your channel. Boom. And... Let me just go ahead and... Let me just grab the link itself and throw it in here. Let's see if this works. If it does, I'll save that link. So There you go. There's Chachi's channel. Hey. Hey. Um, there should Wait be way I... more East players here. <laughs> well, Eric, there's a couple issues with that. One, CRL um, East is currently happening, so a lot of those players don't have time to participate in an event like this. Um, and secondly, the timing of this is like the middle of the night, I believe, over in uh, most parts of Asia. So. Yeah, not a. Th this this is gonna be mostly a Western event. Yeah, guys, sub up, sub up, Chachi, right now. Oh baby, we're getting those sub notifications. You guys are saving so many players right now. They're Big not time. gonna verse Ebar's Rage for it looks like six games now. That's, That's amazing. crazy. That's amazing. Guys, can wow. we save? Can we save a, an even dozen? Can we save twelve people from Ebar's Rage? Sub Chachi Open. right now. Here we go, final minute approaching of sudden death overtime. Soaking up by one, Stang Sand. Needs to hold on and do a little bit extra damage here. Oh boy, a lot coming in. Stang Sand gonna lose and the tower. That's it. Oh jeez. Soaking. So clean two oh, right? Yep, clean two oh. Soaking so good. Super duper good. There you have it. And Stang Sand moves down to the lower bracket for the duration of this tournament. And ooh, this one's going to be a fun one. Our second time seeing the Frenchman today. It's going to be Belly and Azilis. Ooh. I a believe bit that of that's going to be. Beef. Yeah, Belly and Azilis. That's going to be a fun one. Hi, guys. England versus France, a classic matchup in European history. Uh, they're oh, yeah. going to battle over the channel right now. The winner of this, their <laughs> country gets control of the channel. So whew, that's kind of a, a big deal. That's a really big deal. And um, personally, I hope that uh, they get a double loss and that Scotland gets control of the channel. That's what I say. <laughs> that's what I hope. A free Scotland. Man. All right? There you go. A free sub Scotland. here from Berlois Clement. I'm gonna give it kind of a French, a Frenchish pronunciation because uh, Azili's is playing Clash Royale right now. Here we go, Bellican sending out the right. uh, the request here. It's gonna be Belly versus Azili's. Who's pumped? I'm pumped. Who's pumped? Let's get it pumped. I'm pumped. Let's go. We're so pumped. Let's go. Have, have, We're gonna how do hundred million push-ups right now. Have we gotten those subs for Chachi, by the way? Have you hit the twelve, the even oh. dozen? I uh, we hit a little over twelve. Ooh. I think we hit the t solid twenty. Oh, Let's... now nineteen. <laughs> Guys. Nineteen. That's I said 12. Come on now. Yeah. Unsub. No. <laughs> That's pretty amazing, guys. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Give that love to our boy Chach. If you want to see the bracket, it's in the description of the of today's stream. So you can go there. Check that one out. Here we go. St. Pelican versus Azilis. It sounds cooler when you say it like that with that. Like, St. Pelican versus Azilis. Hey, got to be like that guy. Uh, does the boxing. Uh, what's his name? He's the commentator. It's like, let's get ready oh, to rumble. Michael Buffer? Yeah. Whose brother, Bruce Buffer, is does the same thing for the UFC. Ooh. 
Justin Mech saying, Rich, what's up? How's the tourney going? It is going great. Aiden Lee, is Chachi a pro? Absolutely. Uh, played season one of CRL with Complexity Esports. Very fun time. We're mm -hmm. looking to get back probably as a coaching or a, uh, a manager position, but we'll mm -hmm. see. Fun. Things all go. See how the cards lay? Ooh, that knight stayed behind that musketeer. That is a big oof from Mr. St. Belican because now his musketeer dies, and he committed a snowball all for that, and it eventually just dies the knight. So two elixir ahead plus a baby dragon healthy, and you see why Azelius would pull the trigger on graveyard and single elixir in this situation. Notice Azelius playing, uh, playing graveyard. You usually don't do a lot of GY and single elixir, but with what he had on the board and being two elixir ahead, so essentially he had almost six elixir, that was a great time to pull the trigger. You see the damage he got done there, even with St. Belican having the graveyard. So if you're thinking about becoming a graveyard player, that's one of those situations where it's a good time to pull that move. Yeah, and you can still see the elixir on the board right now with the Goblin Hunts down. He's about three and a half, four elixir still ahead. Mr. Azili's here, and those Goblin Huts are going to battle it out now at the bridge and at the roof. And here we go, Tafik asking Rich, Maro Ronaldo or JR? I prefer Maro. I've actually met Maro on many occasions back in my my Clash Royale commentary days. Um, let's see. Am I able to? Let me actually see if I can do if I can do this. I don't know how I would do it, but this one's just for those of you who follow both uh, MMA and uh, pro wrestling. <clears throat> let's see. Where are you? And that's. And I wonder if that's a. I mean that. I wonder how much that overlaps with the Clash Royale world. But let's see where this is. Um, you're somewhere on here, aren't you? Come on. Come on. Chachi, what's happening with this game in front of us? Tachi, did you pass out? Oh, my mic was muted. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. So uh, I was saying, we, we turned our game into uh, Clash Royale from Clash Royale into Goblin Hut Spam Royale. So, seen a ton of Goblin Huts in this graveyard matchup. Not a whole lot of graveyards, though. So, looks like St. Belican in a damage deficit right now. Azili's, though, this is a mere matchup situation. Has a big 1,200 damage lead. We're going to see if Mr. St. Belican can make the comeback, though. All right, here we go. Sudden death overtime. Hold Looks on. Looks like Poison Cycle is the way to go here. I really don't like St. Belican's placement of that hut because if Zillius does go in with a graveyard and he goes to defend it, he can hit the hut and the troops that are going to defend it. So, I mean, I would recommend playing in Zillius' situation or his spot or a little higher to get that value. Uh, there you go, Tafik. That is a link not only to my Instagram, but specifically to an Instagram post that I think you would enjoy as a fan overall of uh, Mara Ranallo. So there you go. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, Clasher Tim, do I think spawners will be good this season? Um, uh, we, had, we addressed that question earlier, Tim. Uh, we think that Clash that spawners will be probably seen a lot and maybe powerful in ladder, but not going to see a ton of those in competitive play. Um, let's see, other things that were up here. Sam, I saw your comment, I replied to it, and I said to go ahead and DM me on Twitter. But all good, brother, totally fine. Um, rip Joe Rogan. Uh, Joe Rogan's alive, as far as I'm aware. So, I think we're good with Joe. But yeah, I'm pretty sure he's alive, but... Here we go, graveyard right-hand side. Defensive poison for Azilis. Gonna really prevent most of that damage from getting that. On the tower, 30 seconds left. St. Belican's got to get something going on. And look at that Latian Tower is taking a beating over there. It's going to be down to 508 HP. And this game is almost all but wrapped up. But with Graveyard, anything can happen in the last couple seconds. You never know. If somebody can just get that last second tower and clean up the game. But this one looks all but over here with nine seconds left to go. There we go. Musketeers down. 455. And that's to be GG. That well played. Azili's taking game number one in this matchup between St. Belican and the Frenchman. There you go. Here's your stats. Match up. It's just, I feel like it was that Goblin Hunt placement that, um, that really just set St. Belican down for most of the game. He kept putting it in the back and allowed his 
poisons to get a lot of value from Azili's side of the field. Uh, we get a rip Khabib Nurmagomedov. Uh, yeah, I would like to see that Khabib and Tony Ferguson fight, but you know maybe we'll see it one day. Uh, Tony and and Justin's going to be uh, Gagey's going to be a fun one too, though. Here we go. Ban is graveyard from Saint Belican. Okay. Moving into game number two here in just a moment. What do we think about Sorry, triple draft in CRL? A lot of Skelly Barrel, though. That's, That's nice a big man. question. Um, Kenda, we uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, if we're going to see triple draft in CRL, I really feel like we need to be able to spectate the draft process. But uh, Chachi and I were both talking about this earlier. Most of most of us and most pros who played it agree that at the pro level, two v two is the most skillful. Uh, version of Clash Royale. It's it's really a whole different ball game. So I really want to see 2v2 back. Uh, hopefully they stick with 2v2 for CRL West, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, let's see. Can you display the average elixir cost of decks on, at stats? Uh, Kyra, uh, Kyria, uh, I I'm not in control of what the stats display. That comes directly from Stats Royale. So um, I'm not able to go ahead and do that. So, but I mean, that's an, I can ask them if they can add that in the future. That'd be a good thing to add. Um, let's see, Andrew is not the one on call. This is Chachi joining me. And if you haven't yet, um, there you go. Check out Chachi's YouTube channel. Give him a sub. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rich, do you like rap? If so, who's your favorite rapper? Right now, my favorite, um, like overall in rap is Run the Jewels, Kill a Mike and LP. Uh, waiting on Run the Jewels 4. But their first three albums are all complete fire. I've seen them in concert three times. And yeah, Run the Jewels is currently my number one in hip hop. Who it is looks better? like we're right. Skelly Barrel making an appearance from Azili's here. And a weird Lava Hound deck from Belican. Now, this feels like a clone deck from Azili's with the Night Witch, Skelly yes. Barrel, and Giant Skeleton. Use that Goblin Hut as sort of a poison bait. Yeah, there's definitely a clone in this deck. And if I am Azili's, I'm cloning here and going for the base race. Yeah, there it is. Here oh we go. Massive push. Oh, boy. This Lumberjack Night Witch could be real trouble, though. This giant Skelly Bomb, though, is going to explode and do a bunch of damage, and that should be GG's. Boom! Azili's. Quick game there. So the question, wow. would Giant Skeleton clone, uh, Skelly Barrel clone, be back or be viable at all? Well, Azili's uh, just showed us that at least it can do something, which is destroy yeah. a tower very, very quickly. So there you go. Um, not much played here. A total... A total elixir of 32 for Azili's and wow. 31 for St. Pelican. <laughs> the total number of cards played, eight on both sides. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> These are the funniest stats I've seen, I think, in Clash Royale, in a competitive Clash Royale. I don't know why. I'm tickled pink, though. Let me tell you right now. And, uh, yeah. Yeah quite pink indeed let's it's see interesting I... both players had clone but uh saint bell can never use this clone maybe he just had a bad sight yeah maybe it's that wasn't... nightwish lumberjack that would have been very scary here we go jumping into our next matchup move it quickly here dark angel versus ender uh crazy smoke saying run the jewels legend has it is too awesome dude uh even the opening track of their opening album the actual like run the jewels track is super fire so yeah if you don't listen to run the jewels uh now go ahead do it now because rtj is, in my opinion, the best in hip-hop at the moment. Uh, Pino says, I'm going to stop commenting. I'm going to watch the stream. Uh, did I miss something, Pino? Uh, Sam, I don't have Twitter. Um, well, then I'd, I'd prefer whatever you want to talk about uh, to not be like on a public chat. So that's a great way to, to do it. But if you have Instagram, you can DM me on Instagram, too. That's another way to do it. All Rich, right, is Surgical so Goblin like... playing today? I don't know if he's on the lineup for today. Are we getting halfway through the round of 32, or are we going to finish the whole round of 32 I today? think we're going to finish everything that's on the screen. Let me go ahead and bring up the, um, the schedule here for a second while you talk okay. us through the action. All right, so we got another Skelly Barrel deck from Dark Angel here. We're seeing it getting more and more popular as we go. It looks like Ender is using a Goblin Hut. This could be the uh, Goblin Hut Flying Machine deck, P.E.K.K.A., that I was talking about earlier that we saw at the 20 win challenge a couple years ago. We'll have to see what his last card is here, but it's looking likely we're going to get a ghost connection on that right hand tower. And that ghost is going to beat up that tower. I'm surprised nothing's coming out. Log finally comes out, brings that tower down to 1484. All right, Ender's right hand tower, 1381. 
We are currently on Ender versus Dark Angel. Uh, we also have today Ruben facing... Did Mini Minter or Lince win that matchup? Um, I'm pretty sure Mini Minter did. And then we have IMJP uh, versus Flash, Diego B. Uh, uh, Diego B, I think against... I can't remember if it was Michi or Surge TS won that. I think it was Surge TS. Surgical yep. Goblin will be playing today. Pompeo will be playing today. Canario, Sweep, Pedro, Bale. A lot of different... A lot of action today. Oh, geez. That tower is definitely going down here with the Bandit and Miner both on the tower. And Defensive Poison also used there on defense. Just like that, Dark Angel takes the clean 1-0 tower still 29 seconds left and it is the pekka deck that we saw a long time ago you guys are an og clash player 21 challenge you'll definitely remember this deck this deck was used so much back in that 21 challenge i believe the first or the second one that we had and only 10 seconds left not a whole lot that can be done for mr ender and that looks like that is going to be ggs gg well played dark angel taking game number one so Ender will have the option to choose a ban. Doesn't have to ban, by the way. He could uh, decide not to ban or decide to wait to do his ban until a game three if that happens. So it is his prerogative on the ban. And I really thought I had the correct account for Dark Angel here. So we're going to go ahead and switch to Ender for the stats, which I don't have stats for. How did I not have the correct Dark Angel account? Very weird. Oh, there we go. I do have the correct Dark Angel account. Boom. There we go. Um, let's see. There you go. There are your stats for this one. Um, going to the chat. I'm going to go ahead and answer a few questions in chat. Game number two is about to start here in a second. Darren saying, if you have to leave the stream, is the stream dead or um, are you banning Chachi to commentate alone? Um, I don't have to leave for another two hours. And I believe that with the pace we're going, we'll be done before then, but I could be wrong. Um, we're going really quick. But if I do have to leave, uh, we will go over to the, I'll send you guys all over to the Spanish stream so that uh, you guys can continue watching there. Um, let's see. Has Magic Archer been played today? Yes, Kenda, and it worked. It, yep. Magic Archer specifically won, won the game. Actually won the game, yeah. Um, shoe Trees, and someone else said about a setup tour would be nice. What mic do you use? Um, I have a wi I'll do a setup tour at some point. I actually have a wide variety of equipment I use for different situations. My headset right now is an Audio-Technica BPHS or SH-1. Uh, going into a Scarlet 2i2, uh, which is the interface I use between the computer and my headset. So for casting and stuff like that, this is the, the audio setup that I use. But I can do a whole tour. I have a couple of Elgato stream um, key lights in here. I'll do a, a tour one of these days. Why not? And I'm using Dark the... Uh, Angel maybe using a clone deck here. Uh, we'll have to see. Giant Skelly Fly Machine... And the Ice Spirit instead of a Heal Spirit, but look at that damage! That tower falling down, 256. Yeah, wow. Definitely feeling very... Two fast starts. I was going to say, feeling very clony. This kind of feels like a bit of a throwback here with the uh, Fly Machine mixed in. Yeah. And Night Witch just feeling more and more like a clone deck. Every card being played. And Ender playing from way behind with Bait, so... Probably a GG for Ender at this stage. Anything could happen, but be very surprising to see Ender able to get back in with a bait deck in this situation. Yeah. Have to get a really, really nice Skelly Barrel push or something to get onto that tower and do a lot of damage. It does not seem that this will be the push. He's going to allow that Cannon Cart lock on the tower, and that's going to be a lot of damage as well. Flying Machine Skelly Barrel push on that right-hand side. Ender in a whole lot of trouble here in game number two. If you haven't subscribed yet, do it right now because every single time you subscribe, a tap dancer learns a new skill to make a different sounding tap. So go ahead, Damn. subscribe to help the art of tap dancing stay relevant here in 2020. Hey, I did tap dancing for a little bit in school. You know, you know, I got to get those dance credits in. I, I, we'll, learn, we'll learn a new tap skill just for you, Rich. That's really it's, exciting. That's was that in, in high school or was that in university? Yeah, high school. <laughs> Here we go. Clone does come out. Bats do a good job of mitigating damage. Now, here is the interesting wrinkle. Is that while Dark Angel has significant damage lead and playing from behind Julio, thank you. Tap, tap, tap to you, sir. Uh, well, there is a significant damage lead right now for Dark Angel. 
no real way to create significant direct damage, and he cannot be spending that snowball on direct damage. Rich Cine Balby, tap tap to you as well, sir. A little soft shoe here with sand was just learned by somebody in Milwaukee, so very well done. Hey. Snowball should come out here, catch the Skelly Barrel. Awesome. That Dark Goblin, though, make it a couple shots here. I get off four. There we go. It's getting very scary here for Dark Angel. Not able to get really any damage on the tower. Oh, Look at those boy. skeletons, though. Why is she not quite the tower? Again, both of these towers low, but the final HP, the one HP on the tower is the only one that matters. Until that tower falls, you are safe as can be. Guys, I'm going to look at chat after this game because this is a fascinating one. Ender doesn't have a spell either to damage the tower. This is a really interesting game. Although Dark Angel does have a snowball, if he needs a last second little bit of damage, he has to be holding it on for this Goblin Barrel. Otherwise, that Goblin Barrel will get a ton of damage. Goblin Barrel and Skelly Barrel. And this time, some skeletons do slide on through. 625 right hand side. Dark Angel still currently in the lead as we go into the final minute of Sudden Death Overtime. But... It's a tenuous lead at best. And luckily for Ender, that bomb bomb Ooh. tower does its job and keeps the cannon cart out of range. Skelly Barrel in. Fly machine, Skelly Barrel, Snowball. Oh, it's going to hit the Skellies and the Goblin Barrel. Well played right there. You got to wonder if, if there's a stage at which Ender goes for a Juke Barrel with that Goblin Barrel, maybe trying to throw a little bit of a wrench in the engine on the timing here. Yeah. But he's gone Very to the good. back with that goblin barrel multiple times, trying to stretch out that snowball, keep it thin, get damage on either the front or back end. We'll see what happens. He's probably with the same move one more time. Here. And this time goblin it goes barrel. to the outside. Oh, oh my no, word. 119. Oh my goodness, 100 HP. 119. Still anybody's game. 20 seconds left. He needs to get something in that tower. Here comes the clone, though. Here comes make a, a super ton of mega clone. Snowball in, trying to make some room. 200 HP on the right-hand side. 10 seconds remaining. 119. Don't forget that princess going to town on the left-hand side as well. Clone comes in. 200 HP wow. on the right-hand side. That's going to be it. Dark Angel not going to be able to do oh. enough. It's Ender taking game number two from way behind. Wow. What an interesting, interesting fight that was. Wow. Ender evens things up. It looked like it was all over, but that's the thing about this clone deck is you cannot rely on it sometimes in late stages of the game. Ender able to do just enough to squeak on by and take the win. GG, well played, and we're going to game number three. Yeah, that was insane how much of a comeback that was. He thought he was all but over in the first minute. And he came back, had to squeeze out all the way, all the way down to that five-minute mark. The game ends, and the tie trade will not be allowed with that update. Brings the tower down all the way to zero. Whoever has the highest single tower HP wins. And in that case, it was Mr. Ender. And guys, welcome to the chat. One of my good friends, one of the Spanish casters for CRL West. Been with the game for a very long time and a good buddy of mine, Koji-san, in the chat. He did not call me today like he was supposed to. And I am honestly, like, I'm a little upset about it. I'm hurt emotionally, <laughs> but I'll forgive him one day. Here we go, game number three of Ender and Dark Angel. It's been a fun battle back and forth. We'll get that one going in just one moment. Uh, let's see, chat question from the chat. Thunder asking, what do you use to get your phone script to your computer to stream? Uh, well, since I'm Mac on Mac, it's my iPad just plugs right in with the normal connector to my computer, and I do a, it, it's my video capture device in my OBS. So pretty easy for me, actually. No real difficulty here. The sound was the challenge, and actually to get around an issue with the sound, I open up QuickTime and do a set up an audio recording that's not recording audio, and that pilots the game sounds into the actual stream. Speaking of which, are the game sounds at a good level, by the way? I don't know if you guys, how, uh, you guys tell me on the stream if you think the game sounds are at a good level. And ooh, very interesting. Looks like Ender going back to bait of some sort. Maybe the exact same deck one more time. Yeah, Princess being banned here would be very interesting to see some sort of bait. So we'll probably see Dark Goblin in exchange for the Princess. Heal Spirit, all right, interesting. It's gonna heal up basically nothing there because everything was full HP, but Skellies do get on that tower and it seems like those Skelly Barrel Skeletons are always on the tower no matter what 
anybody uses to defend it, seemingly is always on that tower. And those Wahlbreakers are going to take care of that bomb tower. And a miner coming in the back, going to get caught by that Goblin Gang. Wallbreaker might actually have one of the coolest gold animate like gold skins. I agree. <laughs> that and the giant skelly is pretty beasty as well with the gunpowder in the back, um, as well as his dark little fists. Here we go, cycling the heel spear up high. It will leap, it will help the goblin barrel, and there you go. Nice use of the heel spirit. Ender out to the lead here as we reach the midway point of regulation time. Guys, by the way, yeah, that'll be one of those interesting interactions. See, like heel spirit goblin barrel, because if you snowball it and the heel spirit tanks and it heals up the all the goblins, then they're back to full HP. And it's, there's going to be a lot of interactions most people aren't used to, and it's going to change the way people have to defend. Right. And there's a sub there from Yonatan. Yonatan, Mashlam Ha, but Uh Yonatan with a nice little sub there, and because of that subscription, a tap dancer just switched to uh, hip hop and R&B dancing and Let's suddenly go. gained a lot more muscles in their upper body. I'm really liking the deck from uh, Ender here. It's very different. Obviously new with the heal spirit. Most people haven't been running heal spirit and princess being banned, you wouldn't expect bait. And maybe that was Dark Angel's hypothesis and that's why he went with this Mega Knight bait wall breaker himself. Right now in a little bit of a damage deficit. So we'll have to see if he can come back. If you haven't yet, sub Chachi. There's a link in the stream. Let's go. There's a new discount sale on if you guys subscribe to Chachi. CWA will automatically bring somebody on the channel that you want. That is guaranteed. Oh my gosh. That's an amazing, that's an amazing offer. Yeah. So if you wanted your mom on the channel then yep your mom will be on there next week guaranteed here we go minor to the back on the right hand side musketeer high tanking for the minor for the moment bats now getting into the mix this is going to be a significant damage chunk here on the left hand side for dark angel 12 11 but now ender putting pressure on that left hand lane as well goblin barrel going to go for the front end no full surround and a little early with the mega knight gets the barrel of one gets one barrel but not the other but now a big time push minor wall breakers and big mega knight all going the opposite direction and it looks like that mega knight is going to be able to make it by with the help of the snowball going to clobber on that tower bringing it down the help of the bats down to 732 and Dark Angel clawing his way back into this game, but that Skelly Barrel Goblin Barrel push is very scary every time it heads that tower. That Ooh. Skelly Barrel's doing damage just like that. Ender, gotta pick up the game. Number one just subscribed, uh, and I believe that was an homage to the win that Ender just did. That was a perfectly timed sub with the win. There you go. Here are your stats from our friends at Stats Royale, and there you go. Ender moving on. Dark Angel now following into the low bracket. Bracket link, please. Jeet, the bracket is linked in the description below. Um, so the bracket is linked in there, so you can find it right there. Um, I should have put up, I should set up commands here, like a command bracket. Uh, Donnie's saying, is Kelly married with Hitch? No, Kelly's just a mod. Um, my wife, Mrs. Slayton, is currently somewhere else in the house. But Kelly is very, very nice. <laughs> here we go. Ender with the clutch, yep, absolutely. Um... Why is LCOP not participating? Be uh, because LCOP is busy with CRL East. And here we go, moving on to our next matchup. Here's a big one, Ruben and Mini Minter. This will be fun, Peru versus Spain. And Ruben, of course, one of the greats. One of the greats all over. So very excited to see Ruben in the mix in this tournament. There we go, a couple skeletons on the tower there. Arrow is gonna be a nice counter for Firecracker throughout this game. We'll have to see if Mini Minter's got any other sort of uh, bait-ish cards to bait out those arrows? To force Ruben to choose if he wants to arrow that firecracker or something else. So, what do you think? What I mean is, we are we're, we're pretty significantly through today's matches here. Chachi is mm -hmm. the big winner of the day. I mean, is it Skeleton Barrel over Heel Spirit? I think it is. <laughs> It has been all over the place, been getting damaged just about every time. Even the skeletons don't get on the tower. The skeleton barrel does that death damage every single time. So it's doing about a hundred and something damage every time. And it gets that tower almost every time, unless they have something to kite it like a bomb tower or something ooh, else. But ooh, with the fast cycles, oof, 
this tower of feeling the pain, and that will be already tower number one. Many mentor with Seems a... like these Skelly Braille decks are really just taking the tower in the first like couple like minute or so, and then it's already gone. Now their opponent has to play from behind. Yeah, that's a big one there. Mini Minter now one tower up on Ruben. Already took out Lince earlier today, so in a good position here if he can get this win against Ruben. Still about half of our regulation period yet to be played, so things are not done yet. But Mini Minter out to an early lead, of course. Those bats making their case to keep Ruben in the mix. And of course, if there's anybody who can come back in a game like this one, you're looking at him, Ruben, the star of Arena Casito back in Super League of Orange, or I guess might have been might have been officially Team Queso there. I don't know if they what banner they played under. And of course now on Team Queso in CRL West. And went, Mini Pekka just took that tower down from 2,000 all the way down to 348 HP. Oh my goodness. That is not good if you are a fan of Ruben. Nerds, thank you very much for hanging out, and uh, I appreciate that. Here we go, a little damage on the left-hand side, but that muskie, because of the death damage, that's a big change there. If the spear goblins didn't spawn on death of that tower, that musketeer would have shot that left-hand tower for a big, big hit. So that's a massive shift there because of that rework on the, on the goblin hunt. Uh, oh, Mega Knight's going to hit those Skeletons, which means the Mini Pekka is going to fry up that Miner. He's going to also damage out that, and there's not a whole lot of time. Eight seconds left. Can he get enough tower damage? Doesn't seem like it's going to matter because the second tower is going to fall for Ruben. And that is going to be GG's. Nice work. Mini Men are putting on a show today with the wins he's and been Mr. putting down. Mr. Rich Slayton, I think that's going to do it for me today. I have to go pick up one of my friends from work. Well, I you're appreciate a good you man. having me on, my hey. good sir. Hey, everyone in the chat, give some love to Chachi for coming here, um, giving some great insight, helping me save my voice a bit, because this is going to hurt a lot less end of the stream. And, uh, of course, I just linked his channel right there. If you haven't yet, go sub to Chachi right now. Give him some love. Thank him so much for being a part of today's stream. And, uh, yeah, Chachi, thank you. Dude, thank you for joining. It's always fun to chat and have you here and... Hopefully, uh, yeah, I hope that your your coaching, managing uh, exploits for, for CROS do work out. Yeah, me too. Hopefully I'll be able to see you on the scene once all this coronavirus stuff is all in the past. But stay safe out there, and I will catch you in the next one. There we go. Later, Chachi. Let's move on to game number two, Ruben and Miniminter. Sub the Chachi, stop e -bar Rage. There you go. Poison in on the Goblin Hut. Guys, now it's just me. All by myself. What will I ever do? Talk about absolutely nothing? Probably. Make inane comments? Most surely. Discuss what we're seeing in front of us? Most likely. It's so different now, not having Chachi in my ear. I feel so lonely, man. Here we go, Miner to the left-hand side. Graveyard in, Poison in response. And Cannon Cart stops there at the bridge. First minute away. And guys, I'm just enjoying the silence now, living in my own thoughts. Thank you, Sam. I will check that later today. He is down in response to the Skelly Barrel. I, I We'll see what happens with it, but I, I am excited to see Skeleton Barrel in the mix. We've seen some different things. Will it be as oppressively annoying as Wall Breakers over time? I don't know. I think we might see more double small spell decks because of it. We might see more snowball, snowball bar barrel, snowball log, that sort of thing. Um, but so far, at least I'm, I'm curious. I'm interested. Thunder was saying I'm very good at talking about nothing. I think you're right. I think you're right. If you want to hear me talk about nothing more, subscribe to my channel. And I will talk about all sorts of nothing. Bar barrel, perfectly timed to that skelly right now with a 50 seconds left in regulation time. Mini Minter up on Ruben. 
So many Mickert men are making a run for the top 16. Oh, Donnie, yeah, Neptune was Basoto, who is making a case for being, making a strong case. And tell me if you guys think that uh, someone is uh, someone else that deserves this. Right now, Basoto is making a strong case for uh, a run at one of the best ladder players of all time. Who do you think is the best ladder player of all time? I, Basoto certainly now is starting to make that case. That's for sure. Here we go. Miner to the back, left-hand side. Ewiz comes high to deal with the Scully Barrel. Igor and Moogie both being listed by other people. Certainly a chance. Yeah, Igor definitely in that conversation. Mini Minter. Holding on to the lead, but not by much. Barb Barrel takes care of the Dark Goblin. Skelly Barrel. Man, that speed is so fascinating. Ewiz comes in. Doesn't prevent all the damage, though. 1080 left-hand side. So now it's Ruben in the lead with 90 seconds left in Sudden Death. Some people saying Igor. Some people saying Pompeo. I see one. b Rad from Andrew Long. And there you go. Miner to the back. Taken care of by the Ice Golem and then to Iwiz. Mini Minter up by 28 HP if you look crosswise. Skelly Barrel down, and that Dark Goblin doing a good job of getting rid of the Goblin Hut, but not quite in time. Not quite in time. Poison probably would have stopped that damage either way, but here we go. Miner just chipping away. Mini Minter deciding to eat that Miner damage, it looks like, and instead try to set up for the right-hand side. Not going to work out. That exchange right there might be the one that wins the game for Ruben. He was in. 38 seconds left. Cannon Cart getting aggressive here on the left-hand side, trying to push into the same side. Two Ewiz is down. Ice Golem does a good job picking up the Miner in the back. Will it be enough? Mega Minion trying to stop some more of that damage. Cannon Cart dying high works out well for Mini Minter. And now Cannon Cart does not quite get across. Where will the next Graveyard come in? Can he get a Graveyard down? Ewiz, oh, didn't go with the Hover. Instead went with the Prediction. And 184 now, left-hand side. That's going to be GG. Well played. Ruben. Getting one back in game number two, evening things up with a very solid performance. And there you have it. Going to go to a game three here between Ruben and Mini Minter. We go ahead and get those stats for you here in Uno Momento, por favor. Where you where are you where are you at stats? You know what? While I'm waiting for those, I'll go ahead and give you guys the global view so you can see me, see the results we've seen so far today. Hi everybody, I'm Rich Slayton. Have you subbed yet? Well then go ahead and do that because every time that you sub, a grandmother gets a call from her grandson. Oh, doesn't that warm the heart? I know it does for me. Here we go, taking a look at the stats, courtesy of our friends over at Stats Royale. Uh, let me go take a look at the uh, at what's going on with the chat here for a moment while we wait for our game number three to come on in. Uh, let's see. Bands are Mini Pekka and Goblin Hut. So that game will be coming at you just a second. Um, let's see. Lots of goblins. Still some ladder discussion. Buffaretti. Yeah, Buffaretti is probably... He's undefeated, so he must be the best ladder player of all time. Maybe Buffaretti is Igor and Samuel Posoto. And those guys are just, you know, they're fakes. They're at, he's actually the one who's playing both of their accounts. How about that? That must explain it. Um, do you think top serial guys don't push ladder, start pushing top ladder, they'll be able to get a good season? Um, some of them. Ladder's a very specific skill. Um, what else here in the chat? Buffaretti's wife, yeah, she actually might, she might be the best player in the game. That's a good point. A dabber owner, pepper owner, you know? What happened to Immortals? Uh, the Immortals esports organization withdrew from a number of esports competitions to consolidate their where they're spending their money. They're focusing on driving their money towards fewer revenue, fewer different streams at the moment, or fewer positions. All right. 
And thank you, Maritime, for the sub. Someone's Nana just said, hello? And she was like, oh my gosh, Michael, thank you for calling. Did you get the card I sent you for your birthday? So thank you, Maritime. You just made that Nana's day. Game number three, all tied up. Ruben and Mini Mentor. Um, Zane, I would say that Surgical Goblin is the GOAT. Um, and I would also say that I think Morton is the best competitive player right now. I would give Morton probably the overall, if he takes uh, Clash, Clash Royale League for three seasons in the West, I would give Mo uh, Morton the overall MVP of the last three seasons, but I think Surge is the GOAT. Joel. Joel, that's rude. Throwing in someone else's tag on my stream. Here we go. Very interesting with the Dark Prince and the... This is a, such an interesting bait deck. I've been seeing this one a little bit lately. And a lot of damage right-hand side. Mini Minter untouched, putting a heap of trouble in Ruben's right-hand lane. Exactly. That princess just hung out on the board for a while. Heading into a double elixir time, and this is exactly where... Oh, that's some nice poison value coming out from Ruben. Very nice poison value, getting essentially five and a half, maybe six out of that. Nice work for the Spanish player. Um, Sam asking, is that a thing yet? Oh, Code Rich. Um, not quite yet, but hopefully soon. Hopefully very soon. A lot of damage coming in from Mini Minter. Ruben has not popped a GY yet. Had to play a lot of defense thus far. Snowball comes in to make a bit more room. Mini Minter getting very aggressive on the right-hand lane. 613. Rich for UK Prime Minister. Well, I'm uh, I'm for Scotsit. Not Brexit, but Scotsit. So I don't know if that's good for the UK, but that's what I'll go for. Oh my word. Oh my word. I look at chat for half a second. Ruben comes out and just storms past the defenses of Mini Minter. I was like, cool, we're good here for a second. I I look at someone nominating me for UK Prime Minister, and what happens? Ruben Rubens, and just comes out, wow. That deserves a full-length Rich Slayton. Wow. Good job, Ruben. Mini Minter might have just broken his phone in half over that one. Super duper wow. GG. Well played. Ruben. Just say graveyard is the same symbols as GY. GY is easier. Uh, well, Donnie, not if you spell my name with a Y. Because there's no Y in my name. There you go. That was bananas. That was bananas. Koji stopped the Mufa is what... Uh, <laughs> yeah, Koji-san is out. Is Koji-san out there giving some, uh, some, some curses? As he does. Oh man, yeah. I guess I'm getting there's a lot of lot of, lot of uh, uh, comments comments in chat here within the clan about Koji maybe cursing that one. So we'll see. I don't know what was going on. Yeah, Rich Slayton with no Y, sir. What are your thoughts on Mortar Bait deck after the Magic Archer nerf? Uh, beat down, make me strong all the time. What should I do? I, I don't play Mortar Bait, so I couldn't really give you a clear uh, clear answer on that one. And I believe we are going into our next matchup, Flash versus IMJP. So here we go. Keeping the pace on fire today. IMJP making his return to CRL West. You can see the Team Queso uniform. And Flash in his dig clothes. So wonder if that's telling us clearly that Flash is back on Dignitas for this upcoming season. Out comes down in response to the Skelly Barrel. With how popular Graveyard and now Skeleton Barrel are, wondering if we'll see much more Valk these days. Let's see. Stop trying to figure out what webcam he uses. Oh, yeah, I am I use the Logitech Brio 4K. That's my webcam. 
I'll do a full-on uh, setup tour one of these days, but I use the Logitech Brio 4K as my webcam. Icewing, welcome back. Um, how do you get involved in the CRL scene? Uh, be super duper great at Clash Royale and get people to, to no notice how good you are. Uh, the easiest way is to, or the most direct way is to have a couple great seasons on ladder, like super top. Oh, CWA, Clash with Ash with a $50 donation. $50 from your friend and mine, CWA. Uh, Ash, thank you very much, as always. Uh, taken aback by your overall generosity. And I promise, I promise you that I will spend at least some of that money on pizza. I promise you that. With beef pepperoni, because uh, even though I eat meat and milk together, my wife and I do not eat pork in the home. So, there you go. Thank you very, very much. Oh, yeah, putting in my hours for sure, dude. It's a lot of fun hanging out with lots of cool people. That $50? No, my son only learns the alphabet from subs, oddly enough. But uh, he did finish the letter Q. So uh, we're on to R, which I'm excited about, being that's the first letter of my first name and Mrs. Slayton's first name. Final minute of regulation time. And Rocket Cycles from JP. So fascinating to see when someone does that, right? Just cycling a rocket on a three elixir troop like that. But sometimes that's the right call. Knowing when to make that call can be so difficult. And look at the way that defense worked out perfectly. Ice, Ice Wiz, NATO, so strong. Ice Wiz, NATO, Bomb Tower together. Maybe stronger than the Ice Wiz, NATO, Tombstone of the, of the old days. And look at the timing, but no connection. Wow, thought those wall breakers were going to be all over that. Here we go, Skelly Barrel, right-hand lane. Into the bomb tower. We are in sudden death over time. And yeah, everyone's saying hi to Ash. Well, good. Because Ash is a good dude with a great channel. Have you heard of Clash with Ash? It's a channel for Clash Royale if you're not familiar with it. Here we go. Up by 379. Easy math for me. Thank you, Flash, for making that such an easy cast to do. No longer, though. Miner gets on tower, and suddenly, I am JP. Getting closer and closer to that rocket cycle range. Now that we're in triple elixir, might expect to see him begin to do that. Maybe get one more Miner down. Yeah, he's going to get one more shot with the Miner. And look at that, NATO. Look at that nasty NATO from IMJP. And now we are truly in rocket range here in Triple Elixir. And there goes the first one. Number one down, so number two coming. That's a good game from Flash. Going to be a pretty quick cycle there. Miner goes in. Maybe even get, might get it done here with the Miner. Wallbreakers will not connect. Flash has to be careful. Tornado does come in. And there you go. Rocket number two. JP has to be careful, I mean. And there you go. IMJP gets the triple, cycles some rockets, gets the job done. That was a fun one. I am JP, such a heavy hitter. I've said this about him a lot, but I am JP. The way he the, the the way he plays, he takes big shots and big moments, and I love watching it. Happy to see him back in CRL West. Very happy indeed. Give me a second here, fellas. Uh, oh no, that's not where I wanted to go with that. I wanted to go here. And do, 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 do. one second. Here we go. One moment. Just taking care of some business here. And JP asking for one minute. The ban is minor from Peepa. So we'll see what happens there. Guys, if you haven't yet, please go ahead and sub. By the way, if you still see that in the chat, Ash is $50. Which, again, I promise some of it will go on pizza. I won't. The, the money won't be on the pizza. You know what I mean? I'm not going to eat, like, uh, pizza with dollar toppings. But some of it will go towards pizza. I promise that entirely. No questions. 
JP and Flash. JP up one. And there'll be more chances even. Yep, there'll be there'll be more of this stuff happening in the future, don't you worry. Hmm, let me go ahead and do this over here instead. All right, so it's going to be Hog Mini Pekka Princess throwback from IMJP here in game number two. Flash pressing with this Dark Prince. Sushi pizza, please. Sure. Um, Zade, I think that they invite like the biggest names for the actual invite players and everybody else uh, qualifies. So um, I don't think the other big name French players, you know, like... Uh, Donkey Kong or Lupangi are really still in the game. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I believe Viper tried to qualify. I don't know if he was, how far along he got. But a lot of players did qualify. Nerf Mini Pekka, please. Done. I just nerfed it right now. Just did it right now. Isn't that crazy? You asked for it, and I did it. Super excited about it. So here we go. We have not seen that. This might be our first Ram Rider of the day. Does not connect. JP up again and enjoying that rocket. He's certainly loving it. Viper lost on final twice. Okay, there you go. Well, Viper had, had a good look then. Lots of pressure right now from Flash, but Rocket comes out. Kabam. JP firmly in control as we enter the final 30 seconds of regulation time. And immediate, you see Pekka in the back. Hog, Ice Golem go the opposite direction. Mini Pekka behind with the log to clear out that way just a little bit. JP playing loose right now. Playing super loose. This Ram Rider, though, going to be interesting. On the right-hand side, chooses to eat the Dark Prince to give the Rocket time to get both of those together. Good min-max there from JP. Not able to get the full kite here. Asked it off the mini P.E.K.K.A. right into the mix. But a partial kite going to be more than enough. Although, Flash now starting to catch up a bit here as we enter Sudden Death Overtime. Things not looking quite as rosy as they were at one point for JP here in game number two. Continuing to put pressure on. This time, P.E.K.K.A. at the bridge with the Dark Prince Express behind it. But again, Ice Golem comes in for the kite, and look at that Hog Rider with the Mini Pekka behind. And that Hog's gonna get a couple of good time, big time shots here. Dark Prince has to come down defensively. Not gonna be quite enough to finish it off, but now in Rocket Range, or almost, there you go. There he comes, Rocket Range. GG, well played, JP gets it done. Tim, thanks for the sub. You just made sure that a flautist, that's a person who plays the flute, gets a compliment from a neighbor for practicing during the daytime. And that's going to make that flautist feel really, really good about him or herself. So thank you so much. Moving along to our stats. JP running rocket in both games and doing a great job of knowing when to cycle and getting good value. You saw both offensively and defensively. Solid value from the rocket play off of, uh, off of IMJP. So there you go. Let's go ahead and take a look at the global view for a second. Get ready for our next match, which will be Diego B and Michifu. Coming up in just a moment, but here are your results thus far. As you can see on this side of the screen now, Surgical Goblin and Tommy coming up. Pompeo and Tico, Canario and Anthony. Uh, Anthony getting past uh, the, the attempted meme by his friend Benny Hu in uh, their last match. So that was a fun one if you were here for the, for the spam chat. By the, by the pro players. We all enjoyed it. And let's see how long till Surgical Goblin plays. He should be next. Flautist, Earthworm, Dylan. Yeah. I support all of them. I support both Flautists and Earthworms. That's the kind of man I am. Not everyone has that in them. But I do. Because I love. In general. That's what I do. Guys, if you haven't yet, 
Smash that sub button. Ring the bell for notifications. Don't miss a video. Don't miss a stream. Don't miss you know, a little comment that I type. Don't miss a thing. Because what you need more in your life is me. You need more me in your life. I can tell you that right now. I can see that you right now need a prescription. And that's more me. That's what I'll say. Waiting on our next matchup. Michi Fu and Diego B both here. But for some reason, slightly delayed in starting that one. You is Buddhist, ain't ya? No. Hebrew all the way, son. From day one to now. Hold on. Let's go ahead and get it. Let's go get it. Boom. Let's go ahead. You know what? Boom. That's what's up. This stream just got lit. All the way lit. Here we go. Diego B and Michifu. Let's jump right into the action. Last Phage asking if my son plays Clash Royale. No, he is too young for this game. Whenever he holds a phone, it's dangerous. Why do I have a Satanist hat? It's Jewish. <laughs> silly, silly man. Here we go. Michifu, Diego B. Diego B. Maybe running Musk GY, potentially. We'll see what happens. Michifu also looking very graveyard-ish. Maybe it goes that direction. Maybe it doesn't. Let me go ahead and prep the stats for these fellers. My commentator should be Rich Slayson. Ooh, I like it. Um, Garrett, I agree. Thank you very much. Uh, Hail Slayton is uh, an idea for a hat or t-shirt that a friend of mine came up with years ago. Might be time to do it one of these days. Is KFC still alive? I think so. Let's see. How about Faust? He won yesterday. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see Faust today. I believe he lost to RF in an off-stream matchup. I could be wrong. Uh, the bracket is in the description of this of this stream, so you can go check all the results there because some of the matches are happening off stream, uh, so that they're for for pacing purposes. And it's going to be graveyard from Michifu, as we suspected. Why do all content creators ignore me? What am I ignoring there, Jorgen? Ask your question again. As there's there's so many there's so much chatting happening. Did I watch Brave vs. Cena? No, I don't really watch uh, WWE anymore. I haven't really watched since the, the uh, whatchamacallit, the Attitude Era of the late 90s. Uh, Serge the second best player after Mrs. Booth Ready. That's off. That's that's accurate. Uh, Dylan, how dare you? Where'd your co-commentator go? Uh, he went to pick up a friend, a friend from work. KSI or Logan Paul? Uh, neither. Neither. I, I reject the premise of that question. How about that? Here we go. Graveyard for Graveyard. And Diego B. Trying to put some hurt on, but the Goblin Hut and the Archer is going to give a, an, an, as the combination. You know, we saw this similar matchup earlier, and I think that we'd, I'd rather be Michifu than Diego in the situation, but the Archer's given a little bit more support defensively against Graveyards. Let's see. Uh, what else? What up, Rich? Joshua, what's up, man? How are you? 100, 100. Like it, too. Yeah, CWA, the dono is still on there. That's how dope it is. Here we go. Graveyard again from Michifu. Poison as well. I'm getting good value, both on supporting the graveyard and some G-Hut. Final 90 seconds of sudden death overtime. Michifu firmly in the lead for the moment. Graveyard down again for Diego B. Starting to put the pressure on, trying to make sure that he's playing offense more than his opponent. And this is a that's a good bit of value, but not enough. Log comes in. Michifu finishes things off in game number one. Here you go with your stats. Now let me go take a look at the chat while they're getting ready for game number two. Uh, what was the chance? Was that ch was that Chachi? Chachi was on here earlier. 
he is no longer around. Mrs. Buffaretti should be commentator. You're absolutely right. Uh, oh, well, Jorgen, you know, just, you know, be you. Just be you with less of it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry for being late. Uh, I had to rewind this whole thing and watch. Just wanted to say what's up. Have a good rest of the stream. Thank you, Joshua. Thanks for enjoying. And CWA saying 100 to Icewing. I don't know what Icewing said. Something fair enough. Uh, I don't know what, what's going on. Oh, yeah. I just said, yeah, I said neither. That was my my answer. Uh, is it true, Michifu? Uh, I don't know. I don't know anything about anything. I know nothing. I know nothing here, fellas. Let's move on to game number two. Diego B versus Michifu. Game two. Can the Floridian come back and win game number two, or will the Spaniard, Michifu, hold him off for an overall match win? We'll find out right now here on Rich Slayton YouTube. Rich and Asher, OP dads. Oh, thank you very much, man. If Buford becomes a mod, is Buford already here? I haven't seen him in chat at all. Do I think the heal spirit will take place in a classic dex? I think more likely in Hog than in Expo. Doesn't get with the two buildings, it gets very little value in Expo. Guys, it is just day one of the new meta. It'll take about a week for it to settle. Everyone's going super with the skelly barrels. I don't mind the skelly barrels. We've seen a lot of different. We've seen variation in the skelly barrel decks too, which is which is fun. Honestly, right now, I'd rather see more Skelly Barrel than Minor Wall Breaker. I'm kind of tired of Minor Wall Breaker. So, happy to see at least something shift. Legends say Rich will face Ash in the finals. And then we'll look at each other, and we'll do that thing where Spider-Man goes, you, 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 and then we'll just walk away. Go get a steak. There we go. So much clone. Yeah. Clone is fun. Am I going to get flame for that one in the chat? Haven't seen clone's been out for a minute. Titan play. A Titan, I believe, is playing fairly. S oh, no. Titan lost to Lapicati earlier today. Titan lost 2 1 to Lapo. And Titan really should have won that match, too. He had, he had a couple big mistakes in two games in a row. Uh. But Lopakati goes through, Titan goes down to the loser's bracket. Yeah, those wall breakers did their job for sure. Michifu extending the lead here at the minor on the right hand side. Musketeer cycled in the back for Michi. Mega Knight high. Maybe see a clone here on defense potentially. There we go. There it comes. And still pretty healthy going the opposite direction. Maybe back to a clone here. I think he's one card away from a clone again. Decides not to. Doesn't get much offense out of it, but does his job defensively and keeps him in a decent spot elixir-wise. Diego B now. Maybe able to start putting some pressure on now that we're getting into that double elixir time. Mini Pekka to the left-hand side demands the response out of that Lumberjack. And perfect timing with the clone against the clone from that Mega Knight. And Log comes out to clean that up, but just like that, Diego B back in the mix. And here we go. Wallbreakers sliding on in. These ones will both connect. 831 right hand side. And that mini P.E.K.K.A. might get a shot in too. And it, oh, last second Lumberjack saves the day for Diego B. That would have been a match ender. Miner to the back this time. Mini P.E.K.K.A. behind. Wallbreakers as well. Zap high. Mini P.E.K.K.A. trying to get that off the board. Does not do it. Diego B, not enough to really set up a big, big, big push here. Does get that fast Skelly Barrel in, though. Well-timed log out of Michifu. 
but having to play a lot of defense right now, this is starting to build up might be too much here for the Spaniard. Skelly Barrel just making a beeline, the clone behind. This was a good log again, but that's not going to be enough. That's going to be GG. Back to a zap for Diego B, and that's going to be the win. Big time wow for Diego. Zaps in. We're all tied up. That was fascinating there at the end, folks. Let's see, going over the chat here. Watch out, Ash is an E-Barb Rage coach. Yeah, and he's the best one in the game. If you need to learn E-Barb's Rage, no one will teach that as well as Ash. I won't hold it against him. He has other qualities that I guess are th that offset that. Um, Try saying Bait already is trying to be strong in this meta. Uh, settles quickest, only, not only is Goblin Hut strong now, Skeleton Barrel as well, not to mention Wall Breakers. Yeah, lots of different things. Bands will be Graveyard and Skelly Barrel. Those are both banned for this one. So if you don't like those two, they are gone. That was a nice kite. Coach Try, hey, Rich called that defensive clone perfectly. Thanks, man. I've, I've, I've learned some things in my time commentating Clash Royale. Mark Littlewood uh, saying Surge versus Tommy, most enticing match of the round. That will be very exciting indeed. Here we go into our next game. Uh, do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Guys, that's right, Luke. Luke supporting the Penguins. What do I think of the community MVP for No Tilt? Zade, who won it? Was it was it Azili's who won it? I don't remember who got the most votes. And it's Expo for Michi. Is he going Ice Bow? So is this Hog EQ? Oh boy, Diego B going. Hey, I might have just I might have just ruined your day here. If this is Hog EQ. Yeah, it's a kissing night witch, and it is Ice Bow from Michifu. Hog Mini Pekka Princess with Earthquake? Or just Hog Mini Pekka Princess? If there's no EQ in this, could get interesting. Uh, Creation says, Rich, do you usually wear a Keepa? Uh, I did when I was younger. When I was, uh, you know, uh, like 12, 13, up until around then, I did. But uh, I stopped before high school. But I do for, you know, special religious occasions. Uh, Zade saying, I think it should be Nacho. Uh, it, dude, Nacho, Nacho was super duper impressive. But that's why it's a community MVP, because it's, you know, getting the most votes. Yeah, it's Rocket. That's interesting, though. Rocket makes it interesting, too. That's for sure. Knight does not get to tower. Oh no, does get one shot in the end. Jorgen says, am I Jewish? Yep, very much so. My whole life, in fact. From when I was born to now. And look at that, just immediate trading rocket cycles from Michi and Diego B. And as soon as that rocket comes out, Expo down for Michifu. Princess down behind, trying to get some help with that chip damage. And a nice NATO from Michi. Hog Rider, though, picks up the aggro and takes the Expo off the board. Will it get a shot? King Tower activated means no. Tesla high. Bats trying to help that clear. Tornado work from Michifu, been on point. High Princess. And now Rockets traded every time. And you'll see that Expo come down from Michifu most likely here pretty soon. Maybe deciding just to Rocket Cycle with Michifu. Nope, Expo does come down. Solid log here, good NATO in response. Mini P.E.K.K.A. down low to stay away from the Tesla and pick up that Expo. Ice Spirit does get a little bit of a reset there, saves enough time for the Ice Golem to get in, but Rocket comes down for Michifu and Diego B now in a bit of trouble here. The log does get the Tesla out of the way. Michifu back to another Tesla, and I think at this point, 
Ichifu might have this thing sewn up. Expo down. And Ice Golem with, wow, a, a big load coming in. Mini P.E.K.K.A. stays alive, forced the log out as well. A lot of expenditure for Michifu there. And you see Diego B. just trying to find some way to break through with the Hog Rider, but I don't know if that's going to happen at this stage. Leather log in. Michifu getting dangerously close with that finish. And yeah, have forced to cycle his rocket as Diego B. And that's going to be it. Michifu with the ice bow, taking game three. Very well played by Diego. In the end, though, Michifu's ice bow work too strong. And there are your stats. Let's go back, take a look at the chat here for a minute. Um, people saying stay hydrated. Yes, very important. Very, very important indeed. Took a little, little drink of water. Some of you watching in game. Yeah, some of these guys know some people in the game, that's for sure. Goblin Hut meta. Yeah, it's it's been today. Do you have any Hebrew ethnicity? How did you become Jewish? I've been Jewish my whole life since I was born. My parents are Jewish. That's how it often works. I know I look I know I'm blonde haired, blue eyed, I look I know I look <laughs> I look like the opposite, but no, nope, Jewish my whole life. There you go. Raised it and everything. Yeah, give you a full look at me. Jews look like all types of people, including me. But yeah. This isn't a Saint this is not a Satanist hat. It's it's a it's a gangster Jewish hat. That's what's up. That's what's up right there. Let's go. Do you, man? Coach your whole life? Well done. Best qu quarantine is the best we can watch this all day. Pino, jump on in, son. Oh, here we go. This is a good one. Surgical Goblin and Tommy, who's ready? Who's ready for it? I am so pumped for this one. Uh, Dan Soy saying, Slayton, you're in a cult. Eh, I'm in a religion. If you think all religions are cults, cool. But I do a thing. I don't care what you a thing you do. If you do a different thing, do a different thing. Just be cool to each other. I don't care if you join my thing. I don't care if you have a different thing. If you're cool to people, you're good with me. And there you go. So if my cult says, hey, be cool to people and do you, it's a pretty good cult. I'll go with that one. I'm all about it. Surge is not online and not in, ch in clan. What? I thought he was here a minute ago. Hmm. Hold on. I'm waiting for the appropriate information. Uh, we might be moving on to a different match for the moment. We'll see what happens. Um, let's see. I believe war battles with same team power level should be matched, not random, because it's pretty unfair. Uh, I I think it's kind of annoying that in war battles, some modes are at uh, tournament standard and some are at, uh, at whatever your card levels are. But, you know, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> so, I guess we might be going... Oh, man, trying to find the next match. This is... this. You know, someone not being here at the moment to get their match done. So they're going to they're gonna go ahead and try to find the people and get them all sorted out. Here are your results so far all over the place. Uh, so they're going to go, they're going ahead and trying to get the next one going. Uh, we might be moving on to Anthony and Canario, potentially. Because people are in, in clan right now. On behalf of all Dutch people in chat, Matthias and myself, good luck to Frank, a.k.a. Surgical Goblin. Uh, well, awesome. Let's see. Let's go into the, into the chat here. What's your opinion on Triple Draft and CRL East so far? The inspector reviewing cards problem. Um, I haven't watched enough of it yet. I've only watched one or two games. I, haven't, I have to, because of my schedule, I have to like, oh, here we go. Surge on his way. Um, so we get in that game at you for you in a second. Because of my schedule, I haven't been able to watch all of CRL East yet. I'm going to watch it before the weekend. Um, but I have to watch it on VOD because I can't be up at two in the morning to watch it live. So I'll, I'll know more when it happens. Do you think Expo needs a rework? Shorter lifetime, but drastically in increased DPS? Ooh, I don't know. That's an interesting question. Um, the, the buff they gave it of a plus 4 percentage in HP, 
I think it wouldn't be bad for it to go down by two, by half of that, by two of that percent. So we'll see. Here we go. Not skipping anything. Surgical Goblin and Tommy. Let's go ahead and queue up the stats for that one as well. Interesting. Hopefully that's the correct account. We'll see. Surge is here, and here we go. Surgical Goblin bottom of your screen, Tommy at the top, and Surge going with Skelly Barrel and Goblin Barrel together. Tommy going with a variant of Hog Cycle. Dance away, sorry to hear that. My family would prefer that I stay Jewish, but, you know, if I wasn't, it wouldn't be that bad. Rich, are you a fan of Surge? Uh, yeah, of course. How old are you? I'm 35. Um, do I eat kosher strictly? Tofik, no, I do not. Um, my wife is stricter, is more strict than I am, but no, I do not keep strict kosher. It's late in the Yes, it is. Here we go. Hog Rider in. Right hand side. Inferno Tower not in cycle, so there you go. A little connection there from the hog on the right hand line, on the right hand side. If I were to add my own new game mode, what would you add? I would add GCs. I mean, what I would add is either GCs or ladder for 2v2. Um, a full-on game mode? I don't know. I don't think about that. That's a that's a valuable question. So Hog Mini Pekka Princess. This is I mean this is so funny to see this combination back. But it is. Uh, let's see, Mini Pekka does not connect. Ooh, Bats saved the day by just a hair. An arrow is being used to take that princess off the board. Surgical Goblin, way behind on Elixir. And forced to play that Inferno Tower very low. It does work out well, though, in combination with the Ice Spirit. But still, pretty significantly behind. Tommy trying to keep the pressure on. And now Surge going hard left-hand lane. Log for the first. What does Tommy have for the second? Bats, we're going to give a lot of damage away. So Tommy just cannot seem to take advantage of any of these elixir moments. Surgical Goblin doing a great job controlling defensively and spreading him thin offensively. Bats down with the Ice Spirit. Log not in cycle there. And here we go. I mean, this is so interesting. Tommy has been ahead on Elixir. And not just because of, you know, expenditure, but look at it overall. Oh, an attempted prediction, and that's going to be GG. Wow. Wow. The prediction rocket to nothing, and that's going to be GG. Surgical Goblin winning game number one. Tommy going for the big move. Can't get it done. And there you have it. There you have it. Let's go ahead and throw the stats up. I'll take a look at chat here for a moment. And Tommy will have his ban in just a moment. Let's see. Um, let's see. Ba -ba -da -da -ba. Uh, incognito mode next update. Is that for real tactical talent? I haven't heard about that, but that would be awesome. Um, I would love incognito mode because I would love to be able to play without my well, people spectating me. Um, Rich, you a fan of Surge? Absolutely. Um, oh, I've already seen some of this stuff. Uh... Um, Ice Wing, no, there's also a loser's bracket, so there you go. Um, no one, I don't think any of them are actually out yet. Uh, not kosher. Eh, come on, Croatian man. Um, proud of my name and country, mate. Yeah, go for you, Frank. Um, oh, my eyes are burning. Must have rubbed them too much. Let's see what else here in the chat. Rich, did you eat avocado off a sword last night? You were supposed to do that. I didn't do it. I thought you were going to. If you didn't do it, I'll do it tonight to make sure it gets done. Don't you worry. When people have passed right out, at least five free entries to a classic or grand challenge. Um, I think they should make some, try to populate the classic and grand challenges some more. Uh, how, do, how much stronger do you think Skeleton Barrel is post rework? It seems really much, it seems a lot stronger right now. Of course, this isn't a great sample. But it definitely seems stronger right now, for sure. No worries, Croatian man. Just, you know, this... Uh, if it were you and me hanging out, I wouldn't mind the comment. But, you know, it's a family-friendly stream. 
If you think that's the worst I've heard, you should see here, my friends, when we're alone. But for a family-friendly stream, we'll keep it clean. You know what I'm saying? Um, is 3M viable competitively? Yashika, maybe. We see it. We see, I haven't seen a lot of 3M today, but I'm very curious to see how 3M vi um, how 3M functions with Heal Spirit in the mix. Heal Spirit to, you know, they poison your three Musketeers or fireball your three Musketeers on one side, and you Heal Spirit those. I'm really curious to see what that looks like over time. Surge up by one and currently up on damage as well. Miner picks up the Goblin Gang high. You ate two avocados off of two swords? That's bananas, dude. Is CRL West coming yet? Kevin Chen, CRL West will be coming in May. In mid in mid May, I believe, is what we're, what we're aiming for at the moment. Did you have that butter chicken pizza? We, we, we cooked it home last night, Dylan. We didn't have the, the pizza yet. But when we order pizza, which will be very soon, I promise you, very soon, butter chicken pizza. I'm going to order that and eat it very, very aggressively. Oh, boy. That's Tower Down, right-hand side. Surgical Goblin pitching a shutout almost right now. Mini Pekka and M Mat uh, Mega Knight, right-hand side. Bats behind. This could be Tower Down on the left-hand side here. And not quite, oh, there we go. So Tommy able to even things up in one big swing. Here we go with 30 seconds left in regulation time. Tommy and Surge in single tower situations. Positivity, are you a fan of mine? Well, I love positivity overall, so probably a fan of you as well. Skeleton Barrel going left-hand side. Nothing to stop that damage. Tommy has struggled with that the entire day. Mega Knight going leap, leap, leap. Play a leap frog, but not all the way to the tower. It dies before it goes down. Poison onto the left hand tower. Musketeer going to get a lot of poison damage as well. Bats might stick it for an extra second. Will the musketeer go all the way down? And she does. Minor to the middle of two goblin huts on the right hand side. Those G huts making things annoying for her, uh, for Tommy here in the later stages of this game. Mini Pekka making a beeline for that left hand tower, though not going to get all the way there. Dies before it goes down. Minor to the back. Poison onto both towers and the musketeer. Wall breakers to pick up the skeletons. Still, Tommy way behind as we go into the final 90 seconds of sudden death overtime. Mini Pekka going all the way to the tower, it looks like. Oh my word, Miner is there just a little bit late, but able to stop that Mini Pekka swing. One more gets in, 172. Oh my gosh, a Miner could end this thing. Tommy in a chance here to pick up a win from way behind, and Miner Zap will do it. Tommy gets the win. Surgical Goblin gives the GG. Really, really well played from behind by Tommy, and we are going to a game number three in this big time matchup. Here you go on your stats. Let me take a look at the chat as you, st well, stat and chat at the same time. That's how we do it. And Surgical Goblin now gets a ban. Uh, people with Pass Royale. Yeah, uh, I've seen people talk about this Pass Royale thing a few times. I think something like that is good. They should find some way to populate the Classic and Grand Challenges more, whether it's due to Pass Royale or whether it's due to uh, reduction in the cost of Grand and, Grand and Challenges and Classic Challenges, whether it's Challenge Entry Tokens. There, I think there needs to be a way, something that populates those challenges more, um, both for to decrease wait times and to increase the player pool, because right now I think both of those challenges are a bit harder than they should be because it's a small player pool. Would you rather have Surge in your team or Ash as your coach? Ooh, that's a good question. Hmm. That's a very good question. Well, what's Ash coaching me on? Coaching me on how to wear excellent tank tops? Then definitely I want to have Ash as my coach. Coaching me on Ebarb's Rage? Well, there's no question. I want to have Ash as my coach. Coaching me on how to build and maintain an excellent YouTube channel? Ash is my coach. Uh, what kind of team? If we're playing Clash Royale, I'd rather have Surge on my team. If we're playing basketball, I don't know, man. Ash can ball. So, you know, the, the question is very broad there, Matthias. I don't know if I can answer it correctly. Um, let's keep on going to the chat here. Do I commentate FIFA? I have not. But you are, uh, to answer your question, Mr. Bake, Mr. Bake, uh, I am the reigning, defending, back-to-back, two-time Comedy Store FIFA Tournament champion. And uh, I've beat some of the best at the Comedy Store, including I beat Bobby Lee of Mad TV so bad that he left the, he left, the, he not, not, didn't just quit the game in the 60th minute. He quit the game, got in his car, and left the Comedy Store. He drove away. That's how bad I beat him uh, on the way to my second 
FIFA Comedy Store Tournament Championship. Back to back, reigning defending. Mine on the right hand side. All tied up one and one. Do I play Brawl Stars? I used to play a lot more Brawl Stars, but I don't know what it is. For some reason, on even though I have an iPhone 11, when I play specifically from my house, house I have no trouble with Clash Royale. I lag a lot with Brawl Stars. So I don't know what that's about. Um, but, you know, until I... And I have good Wi-Fi. I have like 200 plus down and like 15, 20 up. So for some reason, Brawl Stars lags at my house, so I don't play it as much as I'd like to. Do I think Jihad is busted? Yes. Uh, maybe. Salvatore, do I know Adam Egret? Yeah. I was a door guy at the comedy store for four years. So I know Adam Egret pretty well. Adam hired me as a door guy after seeing me at the roast battle in the belly room. Here we go. Right hand side. He whiz down. Early level burn here. Surgical Goblin going minor lava. Pass Royale is the best deal in the game. Worth the money? Yeah, I get Pass Royale on my main account every season. Uh, Icewing, I already answered that one. Here we go, Inferno Dragon burning off that Valkyrie. That poison might have been a half step early here. We'll see. No, poison timing does end up working out for Tommy. Minor to the back. Dark Prince has to make the long road around. 1050. Inferno Dragon gets some good burn, though, on the right hand side. 607 at the end of the final 90 seconds of sudden death overtime. <laughs> Surgical Goblin building up lava from the back. And Tommy just goes hard, minor poison this time. Even he can probably cycle back one more time. I don't know if he'll have it, though. And that Ice Spirit trying to reset. That's going to be it. GG, well played. Surgical Goblin beats Tommy in a bit of a nail biter. The Dutchman takes to the air and takes the game. Here you go. Taking a look at your stats. <laughs> and up next, Pompeo versus Tico. And here are your results for the day. Hi, guys. I'm Rich Slayton. I'm your friend, your caster. Your confidant, if you don't want to share something emotional, subscribe to me. Every single time that you subscribe, a teacher has a classroom of kids who pay attention. What? Yeah. You not only help the teacher, but you also help the students every time you subscribe. So hit that, hit that sub button, hit that bell, and make sure you hang out with me to make sure the education functions correctly. Here we go. Tico versus Pompeo. Game number one. Danny Amendola, thank you very much. I am your friend. Burry says, good night, dear. Sweet dreams, honey. Goatblin, yep, I do see that one. When do you think the next big update is? Uh, right now, it's happening at this exact moment. And let's see. Uh, you have a giant delay? I don't know what to do about that, buddy. Please eat a tomato off a spear live. A tomato off a spear. Oof. Really taking my life into my own hands, huh? So it's going to be GY Muskie for Pompeo up against Minor Loon for Tico. Oh, by the way, here's my Twitter if you want to know where it is. Uh, Jasper, what was your question, man? I don't see everything because I'm trying to cast and direct this stream, you know, with all the different graphics and things and uh, read comments best I can. So, Jasper, why don't you re-ask your question, and I will answer it. But I just don't respond to everything on time, because I'm doing a lot. But no disrespect meant. Unless you feel like fighting, then let's let's have a, ooh, let's have a Muay Thai fight. I weigh like 235, so I don't know if we're in the same weight class. And I kick like a truck. I don't punch that hard. But my left kick... That's right. I'm like Mirko Krokop. Right leg... Urgent care, not quite a hospital. Left leg, uh, you know, take a break for a while. Uh, I love Texas saying, go tribe. Nothing, just want to see if you get a response. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, weird. Oh, the internet, can, the internet confuses me sometimes. 
I'm at, a, I'm at an age where I remember when the internet began. You know what I'm saying? I had an AOL. Here we go, Lava Hound for Tico. Uh, Matias, watching your vids for a while, I wonder why you didn't reach a million subs yet. Because I'm new. But you know what? If you guys hit that sub button right now, you can help me get help me on my way. Going for 5,000, that's the first big one. I don't know where I'm at right now. I think I'm pretty close to 5K, though. I feel like I'm pretty close. Here we go, Poison down, trying to make some room. G-Hut. Remember the last Goblin Hut buff was designed specifically to be the anti-Lava Hound. That's how it was billed by Seth when he uh, made the announcement. We'll see if this new Goblin Hut is even more anti-Lava Hound. Sloppy Joe's is meta. Uh, Matthew's saying we should, get we should have Sloppy Joe's. Yeah, dude, I'm in. I love a good Sloppy Joe. Salvatore, you're doing a great job dealing with chat and coming at the same time, to be honest. Thank you very much, sir. I do appreciate that. Trying to just have some fun, guys. If this, if this were CRL, I, of course, wouldn't look at chat because I'd be all the way dialed in doing the job. You know, hi, I'm Rich Slate. Welcome to Clash Royale League. This is my friend Andrew Guy doing that whole jazz. But this is a little bit more casual, having some fun, hanging out with you guys on my channel. This is my channel. So we do what's up. Um, wow, left-hand side, a lot of trouble here for Tico. Pompeo in the lead at the moment. Now running G-wise. And it's minor mini P.E.K.K.A. Mini P.E.K.K.A. in the pocket. That might be it. That might be it. Tico steals it. Woo! Nice work, Tico. Tico gets a nice little, nice little steal there. Oh, I just realized I don't have uh, these guys up here. Let's go ahead and maybe... I think I, think I have Tico's, right? Let's see. Boom, there we go. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stats. You look at stats while we do. I look at chats. Here we go. You can get a creator code when you reach 5K. Um, I'm already in the creator program, Josh, but I'm just waiting on them delivering my creator code. They're still processing that whole situation. Um, fight like KSI versus Logan Paul. No, my fight may be better than that, Icewing. Um, I, have better, I have better Muay Thai. My kicks are devastating. And uh, my jujitsu is probably better than both of theirs. Pompeo versus Tico, game number two. Rich, how would you rank waffles, pancakes, and French toast? Ooh. Uh, well, uh, Mark, I have a waffle maker right now. So right now it goes waffles, French toast, pancakes, unless it's my wife making the French toast. She makes challah French toast on Saturday mornings after we have challah on Friday nights. So if it's challah French toast, uh, that suddenly jumps up to number one. Almost there, Rich, about 300 more subs to 5K. Ooh, what? 300? What? I was much closer to... Unless I lost a bunch of subs today. Um, Jack Munder saying episode 90% of these are won because of Mini P.E.K.K.A. Maybe. Bonsoir to you, Emmanuel Macron. Um, je m'appelle Richard. Comment allez-vous? Je voudrais ouf de mayonnaise. Code Rich or Slate. In case it is, the code is going to be Rich, all capital letters. R-I-C-H, all capital letters. Matthias, have I, ever, have I ever visited Belgium? I have not. I have been close, but I have not been to Belgium yet. It's on the list. One day, I'll be there. Um, who's the best player for me? You are, uh, K2310. Right. Ooh, Sheriff Shams just subscribed. Sheriff, that deserves a me looking you in the camera. Sheriff Shams, thank you, not just for subscribing, but for keeping the entire Sham community protected. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sheriff. Moving on. Game number two, Pompeo and Tico. Mark Littlewood with the five-pound dono. This is the best possible live entertainment for isolation in the UK. I have a slice of pizza or two on me, Rich. Great job again. You know what? I'm going to have a fish supper on you. I'm going to get some I'm gonna get some fish and chips with brown sauce. I do it Edinburgh style. You know what I'm saying, son? But thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate it. Uh, does the code work on if I spend on any Supercell game? Um, I don't know, actually, Salvatore. I don't. The code isn't active yet, I don't believe. Unless I have to check my... I can, I can check to see if it's actually active or not. Um, but I, yeah, I guess so. So, yeah, go ahead and use that on Heyday, bro. Give me that Heyday money. That's what's up. Here we go. Pompeo down one. And look at that rocket cycle. Oh, another sub. David Loya just subscribed. And uh, David Loya, uh, it's actually not his last name. It's He's a lawyer, but he's uh, he's from the, the general New Jersey region. So it's David Loya. So that's actually what that is. Damon Chow. Uh, also subscribed, thank you very much. Damon Chow is a competitive eater. 
and uh, currently holds the record for eating the most cupcakes in one sitting. Thank you very much, Damon Chow. K2310 BC, uh, from all the way from 2,000 years uh, into before the Common Era. So thank you very much for time traveling here to join us for this event, and I really am excited to have you here as well. Rich, have you paid, played Heyday Pop yet? I have not played it. Um, I'm very, very busy. How many cupcakes? Ron Swallow? It was 275 in one sitting. They had to pump him full of insulin, but it was worth it. Here we go. Miner to the right-hand side. Picked up by the Mini P.E.K.K.A. Global Maxis. Uh, oddly enough, has never traveled outside of his town of 172 people. Weird name for a guy with Global, but there you go. Thank you very much for your subscription as well. Adam Gasarowski. Uh, can't ski, but is really, really excellent at ice skating, oddly enough. Here we go. Minor wall breakers to the right-hand side. Mini P.E.K.K.A. again. The pickups by Tico have been phenomenal. But again, that minor wall breaker can be so frustrating because those wall breakers do connect. And it's Tico going with a pretty classic, or not classic, but pretty uh, previous meta deck. Maybe something he knows very, very well. And here you go. <laughs> Give me that hate hey, money, LOL. Oh, yeah. Dylan, that one made me giggle, too. Sometimes I, sometimes I make myself laugh with these funnies, you know? Here we go. Mini Pekka cycled in the back. Pompeo trying to kind of wait in the cut here and hoping to get some counters. But so far, Tico's pressure has been a little bit too much for him. You see a couple minor chip shots there down to 760 right-hand lane. Pompeo would love to get some rocket cycle. Not going to happen. Ali Mohammed, not a boxer but certainly a very, very fine dancer. So very well done. Thank you, Ali Muhammad, for your sub. It means a whole lot. And was that a donation that just came in? Salvatore. Whoa, Salvatore. Is it, do, I, do, I, do you want Salvatore? Do you want to have the accent? Or is it a Salvatore like you're from New Jersey? Which one is it? Either one, Salvatore. Salvatore, thank you so much for that big time dono. You just changed the world. Uh, really do appreciate that. Love in the commentary, Damian um, Evans. Thank you so much here. GG from Tico. 160 right hand side. Poison going to come down and take care of business. Tico about to take out Pompeo. So check this out. A qualified player now moving all the way to the round of 16. Loving what I'm seeing. Loving how we're playing. Pompeo goes down to the lower bracket. Tico moves on to the round of 16. Very well done. There are, nope, those are not the stats for this one. Let me go ahead and re, come on. Come on, stats. Come on, stats. You gotta wait for the server to populate sometimes. Because I know that's not the deck we were seeing. Well, you know what? We'll wait for that. We'll just come out and pop out to me here and say, hi, everybody. How you doing? Tico just took out Pompeo. Uh, we're in the last, this is going to be the last half hour because at 3 o'clock I am done to help out ba Mrs. Slayton with Baby Boy Slayton, a.k.a. Toddler Slayton a.k.a. the greatest toddler of all time. And I've verified I've met every toddler. He's the greatest one. Sorry, other toddlers. But for now, we're moving on. Canario versus Anthony. Anthony coming off of winning against the right. Fimo just subscribed. Fimo. Wow. I, get the, I mean, get the list taken care of. Um, but I do appreciate it, though. Nice work, Fimo. Way to come in and join the, and join the team. Uh, Anthony, uh, uh, Benny, who tried to meme on him. Anthony beat the meme and then beat him in game number three, resulting in one of the greatest spams of emotes I've ever seen. Canario, of course, one of the greatest players in competitive Clash Royale. Uh, Canario, the giant slayer, as we dubbed him in season one of CROEU playing for G2, and that's the wrong place to go. Here we are, jumping into Anthony versus Canario. And let me go ahead and prep, prep the stats for this one, get them all ready. And let's go ahead. Uh, does lower bracket mean you can't win the tournament? No, global. Lower bracket just means that you are, uh, this is a double elimination tournament. Upper bracket, you have not yet had an elimination. Lower bracket means you have been. You have had one elimination, so. Uh, let's see. David Loya from California, Los Angeles. Whoa, David Loya, what's up, brother? I'm also from California, Los Angeles. Rich, are you from America? Yep, born and raised in Sacramento, California, the 916. What's up, son? Kings fan. A lifetime of basketball heartbreak. There you go. McDonald's or Burger King? McDonald's because of the fries, bro. The fries are the it. Matthews, what's the best way to have syrup directly from the bottle? Just drink it. Um, how many cupcakes? I already answered that question. Thanks, Ron. Hey, good to see you again, by the way. We want to see you in real life one of these days soon. Ron's a buddy of mine. Um, if I were in an eating contest, what food would it be? Ooh, that's an interesting one. I'd have to say it would probably be... Uh, Ooh, man.
Man, that's tough. Uh, what could I win? That's the real question. What contest could I win? Um, it would be chicken shawarma. I'd be in a chicken shawarma eating contest. I'd crush some people. Uh, Rich loves burritos. Absolutely, Matthew. I do love burritos of all of all shapes and sizes. Primarily, though, the Al Pastor breakfast burrito. A breakfast burrito with Al Pastor mixed in. Anthony saying GG uh, because he's taking some beatings from Canario right now. Canario, one of the best players at min maxing, right? Canario, one of the best players at giving up a little to take a lot. Awesome channel. This is awesome clash play. David, thanks so much, man. Glad you're here. Uh, epic funny. Uh, ep epic spelling on that one as well. Tico's in beast mode. Yep. Wish you 100K. Ali, thank you so much. We are on the way. Hey, Slate, who's your favorite YouTube clash creator channel? Uh, I'm going to say Clash with Ash. He's my boy. Shout out 916 representing. That's what's up, Matthew. I grew up uh, near Arden Eastern, if you know that part of town at all. Spent a bunch of time on the river. Went to Rio Americano High School. Used to get in trouble at Century at the Century Movie Theater. Hang at Arden Fair. You know, do the whole thing. Right hand lane for Anthony. Putting a little pressure on with this Dark Goblin. And of course that left hand lane damage to 905. Anthony currently in the lead. But now Canario's turn to pressure. Does the poison come down for the bats? No, Snowball does. And again, good decision making from Canario. That's what he might be best at. If we're talking about what makes Canario one of the greats in the game, it's decision making. You rarely, rarely see Canario make the wrong choice. And if like, you're talking about consistency and high level gameplay, Oh, this is going to be a loss right here. As I'm singing his praises, Anthony takes the win in game number one. But I'm going to stick by what I said. You rarely see Canario make the wrong choice. That's one of the things that makes him a great player. In this case, Anthony just had him, caught him, and Anthony right now, one win away from moving on to the round of 16. So GG's to Anthony. Um, do I have the right stats page for Canario? We'll see. I think I have the right one for Anthony, though. Let's try that one instead. I pre-programmed all this stuff. There you go. Here's Anthony's stats. There you go. Uh, Canario, a.k.a. the Executioner. Never heard that one. We called him the Giant Slayer in Clash Royale League. And we're all back to normal. Yep, Swallow for sure, brother. Waiting on Canario's ban. Um, 408, San Jose. I have been to San Jose many times, dude. Used to do some, I did some stand-up in San Jose a couple years ago. Um, and ban is Skeleton Barrel. Not available for this game. Uh, the 408, yeah, I talked about that one already. 502, I don't. Where is the 502? But good job, 502. Bye, Rich. Have a great stream. Bye, Icewing. Thanks for stopping by. It's been a lot of fun. Um. Yeah, Canario doesn't do it. Doesn't push a ton of ladder. He mostly focuses on competitive. Uh, I love text. Do I think Mini Pekka needs a nerf? I think so. I think the, I think that the range increase when they standardized ranges m gave him more of a nerf. Uh, gave the Mini Pekka more of a nerf than we thought. Maple syrup or golden syrup? Oh, I don't know about golden syrup, so I can't even answer that question. Am I tired? Jorgen, of course I'm tired. I've been casting for three and a half hours, three hours and 36 minutes. I am exhausted, but I'm having fun. But this stream is going to end in 25 minutes no matter what, just so you guys know. Uh, I'm going to go out and help Mrs. Slayton. So if that if we do end before all we get through all the matches, I will post the link to the Spanish stream and send you guys there to join the rest of the viewers over on Spanish. And I'll be back again tomorrow for day three of this tournament. Ooh, thank you, Dylan. Yeah, this is a different style. Uh, when I'm doing CRL, it's a little more professional and buttoned up. But hanging out here, just having fun. This is my channel. I get the thing. I almost hit 5K, hit the sub thing. Guys, will there be another No Tilt Worlds coming? There is more No Tilt stuff coming very, very soon, in fact. Um, they've been teasing it on their Twitter. But uh, No Tilt Worlds, that's going to be not happening immediately. Something else is happening soon. Anthony going graveyard early. Early graveyard. Gonna get some decent damage from it, though. Good call by Anthony. Got a little big chunk out of there. Generation X, great job casting. Great job commenting, dude. Thank you. First minute away. Anthony out to a pretty big lead. This would be a, a nice little bit of upset work from Anthony. Let's see, what was Anthony's last match? Anthony, uh, oh yeah, the, the Benny who won. I talked about it already. Canario beating Air Surfer 2 to 1. Winner of this goes on to face Tico, who just swept Pompeo. Guys, if you want to see the bracket, by the way, it is in the, the, sh the description of this stream. 
So go to the description, you can find the bracket there, and you'll see all the info that you need, man. It's all right there, man. Canario, back to the wall, goes with uh, Easy Golem. So we'll see what happens here. There you go. Crossing the bridge. EQ down. Second E golem behind. Now it's Canario's turn to take a big chunk out of that right hand tower. Whose channel is the Spanish stream? I believe that it's gonna be um, I believe that's gonna be that's on Revel's channel. It could be Koji's right now, but I think it's Revel's. I'm not entirely sure. I will check before I send you somewhere and figure out where we're going. I'll link that in the chat when we, if, and that's good. We might get through all of this before we hit the end, before we hit 3 o'clock in California time, but if we don't, uh, I will make sure you go to, I'll send you guys to the correct channel. <clears throat> so, Ron Swallow asking, so when they're playing, do they see each other's cards like we are doing now, or is this normal? It's just like normal play. They don't see each other's cards. This is the spectator view um, for people who are viewing. They see, a norm they see the normal thing. Uh, it's, it is Revel. Okay, cool. So I'll, I'll make sure to link that. Here we go. Canario looks like he's going to get this game back in EQ range. Might not even need it. GG comes out from Anthony. Second E golem down. And where's that EQ? Not needing it. Canario wins game number two. Here we go on to a game number three. Hold your breath, folks. It's going to be a good one. And stats taking a moment, so let's come back out here. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Do I look tired? Because I feel it. I feel it for sure. Um, why is that not? Oh, there we go. Boom. Here are your, here are your stats. There you go. You stats while I chat. Anthony getting his band ready. Um, we need an English streamer. I think we'll be done before... Uh, I think we're gonna be able to get through the rest of this before we do have to before I have to go. But um, let's see. We are on yeah, next up is Pedro Sweep and then Bale Puddin. We might be able to get through this in time. If it's close, close, I can go a couple extra minutes, but I just can't go for five hours like I did yesterday. That's not fair to that's not fair to Mrs. Slayton. Bands are skeleton barrel and barb hut. Interesting. Um do I think people are playing, having people a friend Elixir account for them? I mean, if they're doing that, they might even just be on a second, have a second device open to do that. For the spectation. How does double elimination work? If you lose one best of three, you go down to a lower bracket? Yep, it's exactly. Yeah, someone in a lower bracket can win, Josh, but that's how it works. Um, Sessa, mini pet is not OP, and other tanks might be weak. Do you agree? Other anti tanks. I don't know, maybe. That might actually, that might be a good way to put it. I'd have to think about that one. I did see him say that today. I have to think about that. And lots of cryings from Anthony. Near match, maybe? Um, let's see. I Love Texas. What part of Texas are you from, I Love Texas, by the way? Mrs. Slayton is from Austin. My And, Miss, and my dad, the original Mr. Slayton, is from Dallas. And uh, I spent a lot of time in Texas. And I'm a huge Longhorn. Like, my how, like my family kind of lives or dies by Longhorn football. North Texas. Anywhere specific? Or, like, are you, like, on the border? Are you basically in Oklahoma? Are you almost in Oklahoma? Like, can you smell Oklahoma from where you are? That's the real question. It smells like cheating. That's what it smells like. And if you don't understand that joke, then you're not from Texas or Oklahoma. Tarrant? Cool. Cool. All right, here we go. First minute away, and these decks looking awfully similar. The county right next to Dallas. Got it. Oh, you're just north of Dallas. Okay. Here we go. Where's Ash from? I believe he's in the uh, in the Boston region. I'm in a South Fork. I have not. Go Tigers. Hook 'em horns. Hook 'em horns, man. All the way. 
90 seconds done, or almost almost 100 seconds here, guys. Almost a full 100 seconds. If you haven't yet, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Every time you subscribe, a collegiate mascot gets some air freshener in his outfit so he can stand being inside that mascot just a little bit longer. Oh, you're west of Dallas. West of Dallas, got it. Where the West begins, nice. All right, Eagle him down for Anthony. Got a big push behind it. Canario, what happened with Canario? Was that a lag? Or did he make a mistake? I looked at chat for half a second. Did Canario just overspend and he was out? Wow. I looked away for a second. Maybe at the exact wrong moment. I don't know. I didn't see if that was a lag or if Canario overspent. He lagged. Well, let's see if let's see if they decide to do it, go for a replay there. We'll obviously find out in a minute. For now, here's what was happening. And uh, Canario. Canario, maybe Rotina fizzle lag conversation here. Um, Anthony calling for a rematch, so here we go. Anthony saying they're going to rematch. Um, will it be same decks? We'll find out. Barbara on the Baby Dragon lagged and he leaked a lot. Okay, cool. I wasn't looking for that for a second. Who's the judge? They have they have some people in the so they have uh there's no the rule here does not allow um replays from a from a league ops perspective. The player who won can grant a replay if they want. But it's a fair play thing. It's there because we can't verify lags. So it's up to the players to do something. Oh, thank you very much for the sub min. Uh min, bank, because of min sub and you know, I'm excited to make this announcement right here. Because of Min Sub, someone who had never walked before has walked for the first time. Now, is it a child who took their first step? Is it someone who believed their legs didn't work now walking? I don't know. But because of Min Sub, someone is walking for the first time. So thank you very much for bringing the gift of mobility to a human being. Anyone saying Canario is a bad player is silly. I'll say that right now. I'll call you out on that one. Canario is fire at this game. Rich, do you think you should get mob keys? I don't know what that is. It's a th uh, oh, a three like a cat took in his first steps. Whoa. All right, can we go ahead and thank you for all the everyone saying respect in the chat. Can we actually get the game going because it's two forty five? All right. All right. Thank you, Nathaniel Bellas. 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 Nathaniel, thank you for your subscription. And because of your subscription, a hangnail just went away. And you know how frustrating hangnails can be. They hurt. Sometimes they're hard to get off. A hangnail just magically disappeared because of your subscription. Thank you so much. Really believe it. Yeah, Canario is next level. Why are you watching it at 6 in the morning? Because what else would you be doing? I think you grow a 1,000 subs in a day. Maybe. I don't know what I'm at. I'm not, really, I'm not actually looking. I have not checked in a while. By the way, here I am. Oh, forget me. Here's the game. And here we are. Game number three. All right. All right. Aris and Ar Aris Hernandez just subscribed. Eris, thank you so much for supporting not just the stream, but supporting the entire New Zealand official kazoo marching band. A lot of people don't like a kazoo marching band. I think it's kind of a, a waste of both marching and kazoos. But because of you, they have enough funding to afford new kazoo filters and will bzz, bzz, bzz for much longer. Thank you very much, Eris. You are fire. And Dalian Uribe. Ooh, thank you much, Dalian. Dalian Uribe. Sir Uribe, or Madam Uribe, uh, dear Sir or Madam Uribe, I am pleased to receive your subscription, 
and am and am even more pleased to inform you that due to your kindness and generosity, that three people who like to skip rope now just received brand new jump ropes that have those little plastic things that make a tic-tac sound when they hit on cement. So thank you very much for supporting both prof pr uh, professional and casual jumping rope. Hey Slate, how many screens looking at? I have three screens open right now, David Loya. Three screens, my compu my, the computer I'm streaming from, the laptop I'm reading chat from, and my iPad with the gameplay. So all of those. Uh, I was not 376 yesterday. I think I was I think I was 4.7 yesterday. Yeah, what Jack says. All right. Oh, 3 R 1 K. Is that Oh, Eric. I see what you did there. Eric, because of you Leet Speak is now going to return not just to the to the internet, but overall more books will be written in Leet Speak. So Harry Potter uh, now is going to include a bunch of numbers in the title. It's going to be difficult at first for some people, but it's going to change the world, really. So thank you very much, Eric, for bringing LeetSpeak back to the world. What editing app do you use? I edit all of my videos on Final Cut Pro. Canario in the lead. <laughs> 23 seconds left in regulation time. Eagle to the left-hand side. Canario ahead, but can change on a moment's notice. All right. Thank you, Joe's. Is that is it Joe's, or is it like Hoes? You know, I'm gonna say Teme or Tem. Hey, JT, JT. Thank you for your subscription. Because of that subscription, more people are gonna go by abbreviations and making it easier for everyone else on the planet. And at the same time, more people learn to pronounce names they don't know how to pronounce. So thank you, JT, for helping people on both sides of the board with names and pronunciations. Appreciate it. Final 90 seconds of sudden death overtime. Canario trying to put the pedal to the metal here. Going to get a little bit more damage, but two E-drags down. Oh, boy, is that going to be an EQ range? Not, not quite. So two E-drags down, and the second E-drag does get the reset on the Baby Dragon. This is a big-time push for Anthony. The NATO here trying to stop this, but Canario very, very low on Elixir. And he might be down for a second Eagle in here at the bridge, potentially. No, going Battle Healer instead is Anthony. And that Eagle in goes all the way down. And that's a $25 dono from Eric. Eric, oh my word. Uh, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. $25, that is a big time donation, and more importantly, a big time change to the world of NetSpeak because now symbols have been added. So not just letters, but also symbols as well. If you have an A in your name, go ahead, use that at sign. If you have an S, use that dollar sign. And right now, Canario trying to get more of them dollars within cycle range now. Not gonna need the cycle. Those troops will finish off that tower. Thank you very much to Anthony for honoring the uh, the lag there. I People are questioning Canario uh, Canario's uh, call there. I doubt it. I really do. Canario's an honorable guy. These guys are friends. So uh, thank you, Anthony, for honoring that tough break there with uh, Canario taking the taking the win from you on the back end. But there you have it. Kana getting the win in game number three. We'll be moving on uh, as Anthony drops down into the, uh, into the lower bracket. Yeah, a little frustrating. Oh, I hit 5K? Whoa! Thanks, Kelly. Hey, Kelly, everyone give a please a little, little thank you for Kelly for moderating today. She's been phenomenal in helping keep things going. We have two more matches, I believe, trying to trying to get that sorted out. Um, Pedro and Sweep coming up next, so we'll see if that's a quick one or takes a while. Again, Eric, thank you for the dono. means a lot. Oh, it's S-E-K. I actually don't know what that is, so it's not $25. It's $25, whatever S-E-Ks are, but um, thanks for that, too. Appreciate it. Let's see. I'm uh, going to go ahead and take a look at chat here for a minute. Here's the here's the global view, so you can see all the results so far today. We have two more matches left, Pedro and Sweep and Bale and Puddin. Um, we'll see if Pedro and Sweep are here and can get going pretty quickly. I think they can. David, nice job commenting in chat. Oh, yeah, wow, wow, thank you very much. Now let's go for 10K. I hit 5K, guys. Thank you so much. Hey, that does mean a lot. I really appreciate right. it. Guy Diamond just subscribed. Uh, and you know what? Because of your subscription, Guy Diamond, Blood diamonds no longer a thing. You can now buy diamonds without feeling guilt. 
So congratulations. Thank you, Bi Guy Diamond. Now you can buy diamonds. And Henry Re uh, Rivera, Henry Rivera, now because of you people who go by Henry, can now choose Henry or Hank. You think they could have beforehand, but really it was against the law. That law has been abolished. Now you can be Henry Rivera or Hank Rivera, and no questions asked. Here we go, spectating, jumping into Pedro versus Sweep. Game number one, Equis Pedro. We'll see if he ends up in CRL this season. Has, of course, had trouble getting into the U.S. Uh, because of immigration issues with Venezuela, but uh, was supposed to play in CRL East, but then the current situation prevented that from happening. So we'll see if Pedro gets picked up somewhere for the online season. Sweep on the other side of things, playing out of Canada, has had some big time moments and ho hoping to use this tournament as a chance to really put his stamp on the competitive scene overall. Let's continue along uh, in the chat. Ooh, Sweep going Golden Night Witch. Those are Swedish Krona, Rich. Oh, cool. I don't know what Swedish Krona, like, I mean, I know what Sweden is, but I don't really know the exchange rate, but, you know, every dono is super appreciated, so thank you for the Swedish Krona. I'm excited to learn about them. What's my NFL team? Uh, if I have to pick one, it's the Raiders, but I'm not really, like, big on the NFL. Um, it's like one cent. Oh, man. Well, I'll take it. One penny is more than pennies that I had. I just thought that was like, I thought I was like 25. Wow, that's insane. And now I know that it's not insane, but still pleasant. So thank you very much. Who would I take, Surge, Surgical Goblin or Canario? Um, I, I, you can't really make a decision there. That's, it depends on the situation. Those guys are both ace, S tier players. Um, yeah, some of the matches are off stream, Wolfie, because of uh, time constraints. Did Canario win? Uh, yes, he did. Pedro's very good. Yes, I know. Uh, uh, Henri? He didn't appear. Well, I'm sorry, man. Hey, how are you? Thanks for the sub, man. It's $2.50. That's actually, dude, that's, that's enough to me to get a bottle of the imported Mexican Coca-Cola to eat with my burrito. So, uh, Eric, hi, ESL. Hi, everybody. Eric. Thank you very much for now donating not one, but two bottles of imported Coca-Cola, which I will enjoy immensely alongside my burrito. And that's going to be uh, tower in poison range, left-hand side for Pedro. Sweep in a whole lot of trouble. It's been four hours. Yeah, we're about to hit the end. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send a text here and see if I can extend for just a little bit longer, but um, I might have to end the stream here in a few minutes. We'll finish out this match itself. We'll see if we can go do the second match, uh, the match after that one. So I'll, I'll check things here. But, you know, balancing balancing baby boy Slayton duties between myself and Mrs. Slayton at the moment. Here we go. G-Hut high. Poison to come in, finish things off. In just a moment after he deals with this. There you go, Poison. Pedro taking game number one. Sweep making it closer than you might think. Sweep keeping it close, but Pedro getting that dub. Rich, how many matches are left? I believe there's one more match after this. I believe there's one more after this. I'm gonna go ahead and check in the uh, in the in the uh, tournament Discord here. Give me one second. Uh, let me go ahead and throw you guys over to the stats view. One moment. Uh, let's go to Equis Pedro. Boom, boom, boom. There's your stats. Um, let me go here. At everyone, um, uh, is there one more match after this or more? Let me go ahead and throw that into the Discord chat. Ban is graveyard for this next one. Um,. Yeah, Enrique, uh, Enrique, I, Enrique, Enrique, Enrique. Um, I, yeah, just my my wife and I are both working from home right now, and uh, she's been kind enough to <laughs> let me dominate four hours in the middle of the day for these streams. But got to take over and uh, hang out with Baby Boy Slayton so that my wife can get some work done. Oh, here we go, back in the game, number two, Pedro up one. Uh, Donnie, I answered that question already. If I have to pick one, it's the Oakland Raiders, but I'm not that big in the NFL. 
Uh, Matthias, I believe the entire tournament will take place between today and Friday. I am not casting um, on Thursday and Friday because of prior commitments. So there will be a different English caster for Thursday and Friday. But I will be casting tomorrow's competition. So a bridge spam variation from sweep? No, it's minor control with the uh, flying machine. All right. Do you love us? Of course I love you. I love you guys so much. So minor pack of control here from sweep. But balloon connects in the opposite direction. Minor musk loon from Pedro. I, I'm not sure. I think it's the same. The uh, what's her name? She did the one of the qualifiers last weekend. I don't have the name, her name top of my head, unfortunately. But I believe she'll be on Twitch rather than on YouTube. Pedro in pretty good control here. Does have damage in both lanes. So Sweep could put on some pressure. Please get Chimpanzee, Rich. That would be cool. Like, like you want me to get a Chimpanzee as a, as a pet? To, like, hang out here? Or, like, be on the stream? I don't really understand the question, but cool, man. I, you know what? I'll, I'll look into it. I'm sure that having a Chimpanzee and a two-year-old, an almost two-year-old, would be manageable. Seems like a reasonable request. Minor to the right-hand side. Minor Loon in the pocket with the Ice Golem. Jiha Ewiz to stop this balloon this time around. It's going to be hard for Sweep to really get enough damage in this time period. 45 seconds left. He's going to have to find... He's going to have to make Pedro make some bad choices. Or make Pedro make difficult choices, maybe is the better way to put it. Down to under 700. Left-hand side going to be under 600. Now Miner goes into that musky. But look at that. The the Oh, the, a little dance here. The P.E.K.K.A. going to go down, but now under 200 HP. That Miner not quite going to get to get it off the board. Oh, boy. But that's going to be it. E is not going to be able to stop that drop from the Balloon. Balloon comes in. Lots of tower damage here. Things are a bit closer than we think, though. 400 HP on the left-hand side for Sweep. And uh, it looks like it's going to be... There you go. Tower down. Miner in, and that's going to be enough, I believe. Tower at 92 HP, so Log Snowball will be enough to finish that thing off. Miner might be the choice that he goes with. Um, Sweep going to have to do something fancy here to finish this thing off. Not going to happen. He knows it's done. GG, WP, Pedro takes the win. Sweep put up a good fight there at the end, but it was Ekis Pedro taking care of Biz Nass. And I believe we have one more match. Let me see if I can find out. Uh, trying to find someone in the chat here. Um, let me at somebody real quick. At Apache Maria. Yeah, let me do this in the chat here real quick. Is this last match? Here we go. If this is the last one, I think I can extend. Let me just double check that. If it is, I think I can stay around long enough for this one. If there's more after this one, I'll have to call it, though. So give me one second, everybody. Just double checking on things. Un momento, por favor. I know. Is this the... Oh, yes. Uh, yes, last match. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Cool. Let me just tell my wife. I believe we will be able to stay, stick around for this one. Let me come here and jump back over to the chat. Did Lady Slayton respond? Uh, let's see. Please get a chimpanzee. Buy a chimpanzee have it on stream. Okay, cool, Matthews. I'll get that. Get a baby dragon? Dude, I have a baby dragon. Where'd my baby dragon go? Yeah. You know what? I'll, I'll bring the baby dragon out next time I'm on camera. But I have a baby dragon. Um, get a chimpanzee and a baby D. Dude, that's crazy. Bale versus Puddin. Puddin, a qualified player. Uh, Bale from Orange Crown League, from CCS. I believe he played in CCS. Um, was, was expected to be in CRL this season, but that didn't end up happening. 
last minute change of the roster he was meant to be on. Um, let's see. Thanks for the stream. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Thanks for hanging out, guys. If you haven't yet, throw me a last minute sub. Throw me a last minute sub so that I can get to 6,000 right now. I believe we hit 5,000 today, which is freaking crazy. I didn't start really doing this channel heavily until January, so it's been a nice bit of growth. Thank you to everybody who's been involved in that. Um, Hasham, you had to depth of this game as I'm watching proper sports. Amazing commentary and sense of humor. Keep it going. Thank you very much, Hasham. I appreciate it. I try to bring that style. I come from a more traditional sports background. I guess, you know, mixed martial arts is technically more traditional sports, but... Um, any idea what stats right now, how stats right now works as far as seeing getting, uh, what you all have there? Um... We all get a thanks Rick in the chat. That's hilarious. Everyone sub deserves thanks you. Thanks you. Um, yeah, it's a special it's a special like setup that they have for the stats for tournaments and stuff like that. If you're organizing something, um, give me a yeah, hit me up. But it's uh, specifically for competitive events. I can put you in touch. I'll be happy to put you in touch if you're running an event with the Stats Royale people. Putin in the lead for the moment. Skelly Barrel. That's Skelly Barrel's the big winner of the day, guys. If anything has happened, if anything has been shown today, it's that Skelly Barrel is going to be central meta, at least for the next month. Clash team should be added to the CRL. Uh, Q-Lash, as I'm going to call them, because I, I refuse to call them just Clash, because there's a Q there. Uh, it's about the org. You know, does the org have the infrastructure to support a professional team? It's expensive to run a true professional team in CRL between the salaries you're required to pay, because there are minimum salaries, and uh, housing, a bunch of different stuff. So um, CRL is not an, is, uh, you know, you have to be a pretty well, uh, well supported, well structured org to be in CRL. Um, I don't know Clash's overall infrastructure, but I know that they are really solid in the Spanish community. Uh, let's see. No much to me on Twitter. Cool. Thanks, Just. Sounds good. Here we go, Mini Pekka with a pile of Spear Goblins behind. Here we are, Sudden Death Overtime. Putting holding on nicely, currently in the lead. Miner on the inside. Down to under 900 HP, under 800 HP. 778 right-hand side for Bale in the final 90 seconds of Sudden Death Overtime. Miner to the opposite direction with the Skelly Barrel for Bale, trying to spread his opponent a little bit more thin, keep this battle from taking place on the right-hand side where you know Puddin wants to play. And now just loading up is Puddin. Tons at the bridge, Miner to the back. Snowball comes in, but still damage done. 500 HP on the right-hand side. And that poison going to take most of that off the board here. Good job splitting the Spear Goblins. That will take care of the Inferno Dragon. Log to stop those Skellies, but 956 to the right-hand side. Now 284. Uh, coming down on the right-hand side. Miner does hit. That's going to be it. GG, well played. Putin taking game number one over Bale. Nice work there. Let's see. Do I have the correct stuff for these guys? I think so. Let's go t check this out. And there we go. Let's go ahead and jump, jump in our stats. Don Donnie saying I'm a chill guy. Thanks, dude. You're a chill viewer. Um, shame we can't sub twice the same account. Not sure about Skelly Barrel, but Log's going to be meta. I don't know, man. Skelly Barrel is looking pretty meta right now. That that speedy barrel. And there's we've seen so many different looks today, too. We've seen it in, in a wide variety of decks. We've seen it in... Goblin Barrel, Skelly Barrel. We've seen it in this Mega Knight deck that's, that was already around. We've seen a lot of different variations. Minor banned by Bale. So here we go. Minor banned by Bale. And Bale about to request. Who's the next English caster? Uh, I forget her name, uh, but it will be in the Twitters. If you follow me on Twitter, I'll make sure that the information gets there. You can also go check out uh, Revel on Twitter and CWA on Twitter and get all your information. Here we go. Bale versus Puddin, game number two. Can Puddin close this thing out? Uh, 
Uh, 2.9 maybe for Putin. That'd be interesting. We have not seen a lot of Expo today. Mix of Chaos with an X. That's right. Interesting. So going to be Graveyard. We've seen this today. This Graveyard deck in particular. We've seen different variants on it. Archers in the back. And Puddin keeping the archers alive. Nice work with the skeletons. Realizing he could spend one elixir to save two. Or to save three. So a two elixir move there. Wallbreaker's down for Bash. For, for Bash, for Bale. And a nice connection. Lots of Croatians hanging out in Clash Royale. Sweet. I'm a big fan of uh, Mirko Krokop. Mirko Filipovic. Filipovic? The heavyweight mixed martial arts fighter. Right leg hospital, left leg cemetery. He's a Croatian cop and a highly touted mixed martial artist. Mega Knight to the right hand side. So far, game number two has been all bail. Can Skelly Barrel push Balloon is the question. We're not sure, but we think so. Dark Goblin and Princess in the back trying to do some cleanup work, make some room. That G-Hut staying on the board for a while. Let's go, says the princess. So two on the board now. Goblin barrel high, left-hand side. Double princess value for that log to Puddin. What do I think of MMA going to a private island? It's fascinating. It is fascinating. Dana White will either be proven to be an absolute genius or an absolute madman. Maybe a bit of both. We'll see. If this results in, a, in, an, out, in an outbreak because of what he's doing, that's going to be a big problem for him. Uh, if it doesn't, and it just results in him having the only, the UFC having the only true live sports available for the next couple of weeks, um, it's going to be a brilliant move on his part. So we'll see. But I'm certainly fascinated. Uh, Alper saying that it does push the balloon. Cool. Good to know. My favorite weight class. Uh, historically, light heavyweight. Um, but, but probably right now, uh, I mean, middleweight's nasty right now, lightweight's nasty, well, welterweight's crazy right now. But historically, probably light heavyweight. Final 90 seconds. Bale currently in a pretty solid lead. Favorite food? Al Pastor burritos, probably. The, a breakfast burrito with Al Pastor. All right, here we go. Final minute. Log working on the right-hand side. Dark Goblin down. Final 60 seconds. Thomas Postma, happy to answer, bud. Best of, I'll answer the best I can, whenever I can. I missed some things, but... Here we go. Graveyard and Poison. Log on the Skelly Barrel. Mega Knight goes high. 45 seconds left. Putin needs to get a little tight in here. Bale putting the pressure. The log a bit late there. Under 700 on both sides here for Puddin. Interesting choice of going graveyard into the side that has the Goblin Hut. He goes poison opposite side. Should be back to a log here. Yes, does deal with that barrel. 15 seconds left. Does Puddin just sell out here knowing there's not really any other choice? Poison does come down a little bit too late though. That's going to be it. Big leap. Bale finishes things off with a bang, and we're going to game number three, folks. The final game of the day. There's your stats from Stats Royale. Hut Royale for sure, yeah. The big winner, in my opinion, today has been uh, uh, the, the Skelly Barrel. 
the Goblin Hut I'm not super stoked about right now. I have to admit. Oh, yeah, by the way, you guys want to talk about Baby Dragon? You said get a Baby Dragon? Look right there. There's a Baby Dragon. There's one right there. I already got one. Got a log, too, dude. And some mugs and some cool little... The, 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 the limited edition gold princess from CRL World Finals 2018. That's a Japanese newspaper article about the uh, about CRL World Finals. Um, there's some other cool stuff back there. Boom. Some miners, some patches from World Cyber Games right over here. There's some fun stuff. Here we go. Miner and Princess Band, the last game of the day. Five minutes to decide who goes on into the round of 16. Will it be Bale? Will it be Puddin'? Let's get going. Start the game. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Do that TikTok dance, the knock. Heh, heh, heh. I think they dabbed somewhere in there. I don't know, man. I saw the meme. I don't TikTok. But I know there's a punch and then like a bunch of this stuff. Here we go. Last game of the day. Put in bail. Where'd I get the CRL hat and mug, Coach Try? Um, from casting Clash Royale League is where I got it from. What do you think? Yeah, Texas, I do agree that these these uh, these huts are looking looking rough right now for the meta. We'll see what happens. MMA on a private item reminds me of Mortal Kombat. Well, if, if Scorpion appears, I'm going to bet on him. Get over here. One lone skeleton gets on tower for a shot. First 40 seconds, Bale slightly ahead. That's all huts all day. All huts all day. Emergency nerf to Goblin Hut. Where's the big bad wolf when you need him? Blow these down. Um, I think the round of 16 is BO5's mark. I think it'll be BO3's in the lower bracket and BO5's in the upper bracket from now on. Here we go. Clone comes in. Doesn't do a whole lot, though. Well defended by Puddin. Have I ever had pineapple pizza? I think so. I think I have. I think so. Interesting question. Have I ever had it? I think I have. That's my best answer. Here we go. Knight to the left-hand side. Goblin Hut that same side as well. Now Puddin knows the, knows the rhythm. Knows what Bale's going for. Um, Fernando. I don't know how many trophies I have right now because the reset just happened, so I'm guessing around 5,000. Um, uh, and I don't really have a deck yet because it's the brand new season. So I'll have to take some time to figure out what the meta is and decide. I'll probably play either... Probably play a balloon deck this season, I'm thinking. That's my that's my guess. I'll play some sort of balloon cycle. Maybe the loon, loon, Lumber Loon cycle with, uh, with Heal Spirit instead of Ice Spirit. I'll try that out for a little bit. Um, I, I set a new personal best last season at 6.3 and then tilted down to like 600 to 6,000 something. What is this? Four to five thousand, right? Look, man, with this with this buff to Skelly Barrel, this is an interesting time to try out this, these clone decks. We've seen it. We've seen it work today. Where am I from? Originally Sacramento, California. Now I live in Los Angeles, California. Lived in California all my life except for one year where I lived in, S in Edinburgh, Scotland. Final 15 seconds of regulation. Skelly Barrel goes right-hand side. Log easily meets it. Another graveyard in for Puddin. Muskie at the bridge taken care of by that snowball and light witch combination. Nice work on both on defense, both low and high from Bale. And he's got to be liking that that Lumberjack is taking the long way around. The Lumberjack kind of hung out for a minute rather than got right across into enemy territory. Log takes care of the right-hand side again. And now a high giant skeleton, knowing that can do a lot of cleanup work up here. Bomb does nothing, though. You're from Glasgow, Stuart? I spent some time in Glasgow. Couldn't understand a single person there. Get onto a bus and it's like talking to someone with marbles in their mouths. The other black sounds kind of easy though because it's so anglicized. Here we go. Lumberjack drops on that backside to help with defense. 1246 left hand side.
Bale in trouble. Graveyard's been giving him fits. And this time, not going to need the, the the log on that left, on that right hand side, letting the baby dragon do its job. Uh, I've been to Amsterdam, Thomas. That's where I've been. I know it's the it's the place everyone goes, but I've been there. Traveled there when I was a student still. And now, opposite lane here. This could be dangerous. The poison working on those on those clones, but a lot of damage in. Suddenly, Bale in the lead. And just like that, Bale flips the script. Puddin does have poison, does have log. Able to create more direct damage than Bale can. But this will be interesting here. Snowball in, Skelly Barrel down. The log perfectly timed, but oh no! Oh no! Oh no! The log stops the skeletons, but doesn't get damage on the opposite side. Bale takes the win with the high, stinky cheese. Bale, oh my gosh. There you go. There's your stats. Take a look at that. It was the, the, the clones in the back end. Wow, wow, wow. Take a look at me. Here I am. Wow, wow, wow. Guys, Bale moves on. Uh, rough one for Puddin. Felt like he had that one. Two, pu one big push and one little push. Steal that win for Bale. Guys, that's been crazy. I gotta end this stream. I gotta go take care of my baby boy. Help out Mrs. Slayton. It's been a whole lot of fun. Let me smash, hit that sub button one more time. Right. Follow me here. Thank you for the sub, Claudio. Go ahead, follow me on Twitter as well. I'm gonna end this stream right now. We'll be back again tomorrow with more Clash Royale action here in the CWA Cup. Thanks to Ash for making the making this thing possible. Thanks to Revel for making this possible. Thanks most importantly to you for making this possible. I'm Rich Slayton. I'll see you next time. Peace. Love ya.